Chapter 9, Wave Mission Part 3 Uzumaki Naruto was busy taking a seat by the clearing close to Tazuna's house while he observed the other five Janan going about their respective tree walking training. Well, six if you count Akamaru. Naruto had given Team 7 a quick explanation about chakra control and the exercise they would be performing. Sakura offered her own two cents about the more theoretical applications of chakra and even went as far as to supply her teammates with an explanation about the usage of chakra in ninjutsu and genjutsu. Hinata and Shikamaru had already began this training before and Sasuke looked to be more in tune with the exercise concept, though he even used a Sharingan to copy Naruto's demonstration. Of course, that alone wouldn't help Sasuke much, considering that Naruto had way more chakra than him. Once the explanations were over, Naruto asked everyone to pick a tree and mark their progress with a kunai. As such, he took a nice relaxing seat by the clearing as he heard the continuous sounds of an angered Kiba falling on his butt followed by his dog. Sasuke and Shikamaru, amongst the male Janan, were still due to reach significant heights and Naruto could see that the stubborn Uchiha was still using a Sharingan. Doing so would deplete his reserves at a much faster rate, rendering the exercise useless. Though, differently from Kiba, at least Sasuke would flip his body as soon as his feet lost contact with the tree and he would land on his feet. As far as Shikamaru was concerned, Naruto understood that the genius Nara had a unique way of learning a technique. He would go about understanding the functionality of his own chakra flowing through his own tenketsu, instead of simply attempting numerous times until he was successful. Also, unlike Naruto's own attempts under Naidime's guidance, Shikamaru wasn't in any hurry to accomplish this exercise. Well, this was easy, Naruto. And you made it sound hard. The Janan in question turned to Sakura's tree and saw the pink-haired Janan boast about her accomplishment. Kiba snarled at his companion reaching the top before he did. Hinata was next to Sakura's tree and was also on the verge of reaching the top. Hinata, Sakura, excellent job. Sakura, from what I can see, your chakra control is the best because of your small chakra reserves. The pink-haired Janan frowned at the jab but kept listening. You could go up and down the tree using chakra until you run out, that is a fine way to increase your chakra capacity. Sakura released a sigh at that, before doing as commanded. She turned to see Sasuke noticing her improvement and that alone gave an inspiration and drive for her to try harder. Naruto, then, turned to Hinata, who had scratched the tree quite high, before flipping her body and landing on the ground safely. She was about to go once more when Naruto approached her. Hinata, a moment please. The Hyuga heir nodded as she waited for her Janan commander. As I understand, the Hyuga clan is famous for its knowledge in chakra and how it flows through the Tenkatsus. I would imagine you would have beat Sakura in this exercise, even if your chakra capacity is much higher than hers. Is there something wrong? Hinata, though, merely looked down in slight shame at the question. That gesture alone answered his question and Naruto silently slammed his face for such thoughtlessness. Of course, her feelings of insecurity got in the way. I'm sorry, Naruto-kun, I'll try to improve. The Hayuga flinched at feeling his hand on her shoulder. Upon looking up, though, she only saw a gentle smile at her. While it was not that full-out smile that illuminated her world in the past, it still managed to relax her posture. There is no need to improve something you already know, Hinata. You just need to show more conviction, that's all. I want you to try again and this time, do not think if you can do it, you know you can. Hinata looked in awe for a while, before holding her kunai more firmly and accepting Naruto's advice. This time, Hinata activated her Byakugan and took some distance before running towards the tree and placed the first step. As soon as she did so, Naruto smiled upon sensing the correct amount. The girl then climbed her tree like a pro, only looking at her destination. The rest of the Janan all stopped their own work as they saw the Hayuga Janan climb her own tree with as much expertise as Naruto himself. When Hinata managed to reach the top of her tree, she was surprised at herself while looking at the view from up there. Way to go Hinata. Congratulations. The Hayuga blushed at the praise, but her facial expression showed contentment at her own achievement. She managed to do it in the end and that brought great joy. Shikamaru, what are you doing, just standing there, you're still half up the tree. Hinata couldn't help but smile in elation at the other member from their team complaining as she got back down and got close to Naruto. Ah Naruto-kun, is there something else I can do, while the rest finish their exercise? Naruto then turned to the smiling Hayuga and nodded. Sure, why don't you rest a bit and then I'll teach you how to do water walking. Actually, I believe that Sakura could join us as well. 
Naruto then went to the male Janan team while Hinata took a seat at her tree. Sasuke was still struggling somewhat, Kiba was barely doing so and Shikamaru had called it quits for today, much to Naruto's complaint. Well, Shikamaru would learn at his own pace and if he wanted help, he could ask either Naruto or Asuma. Naruto, then, turned to Sasuke as the Uchiha kept on looking at the tree, almost like he was looking at Itachi. It was quite visible what his problem is. Ha, huh, you can't be angry like this Sasuke. The Uchiha turned to Naruto. You need to focus on the exercise, focus on your chakra and feel how it flows through your tenketsu. You will tire up if you keep like this, you too Kiba. Oi, who do you think you are, Naruto sighed and then turned to Sasuke with a smile. Well, you can look at your teammate and do the opposite. The blonde then turned to Hinata and Sakura. Hinata, Sakura, I think I saw a small lake nearby, the next step of chakra control is water walking and you two are more advanced in that regard. Follow me. The two girls nodded and followed the blonde Janan, leaving the male Janan alone in the clearing, with Shikamaru on the ground taking a nap, while Kiba and Sasuke used their stamina to finish the exercise. Equals 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 back in Tazana's house equals equals equals. It was already nighttime when the teams gathered at the table for dinner. Tazana, Asuma, Kakashi, Naruto and Shikamaru were gathered at the table, while Tsunami had the help of Hinata and Sakura. The woman was enjoying herself, preparing dinner while talking with the two teenage Kunoichi. It made her remember the times when she was Hinata and Sakura's age in Wave Country. She would smile upon seeing Sakura swoon over the boy called Sasuke. The way that Hinata was blushing when asked about the subject, Tsunami wanted nothing but to hug the cute little Janan Kunoichi. Back at the table, Kakashi was still having trouble moving and his chakra was in complete disarray. Asuma's injuries were already healed and as such, he took command over the mission. Naruto, where is Sasuke and Kiba? The Janan looked at Kakashi in annoyance. Still outside trying to finish the exercise. Sakura tried talking to them, but they are quite stubborn, though I don't know if each one is trying to outdo the other at this point. Kakashi released a sigh at that and scratched his head. Yes, I believe they are, having a rivalry is fine and all, but not on a mission. I do wonder why you thought it was wise to teach water walking to Hinata and Sakura. I did recall Asuma asking you to focus only on tree walking. Kakashi's remark lacked any tone of reprimand, so Naruto casually explained. Seeing as they finished tree walking in record time, I figured that water walking would benefit them, plus Sakura needs to increase her chakra capacity. Naruto was highly impressed by both women's knowledge of both the theoretical and practical applications of chakra up to the point that they had managed to not sink in their first attempt. By the end of the day, both had already managed to stand on top of the water by dully regulating their chakra. By his estimate, it would take two more days for them to finish. I see, well, next time, please run by either me or Asuma before teaching them anything this advanced. Naruto merely nodded, before accepting a bowl from Hinata. Once everyone took a seat, Asuma cleared his throat to gather everyone's attention. Well, I was hoping that Kiba and Sasuke were here to hear this, but they will hear later. It appears that you're right Shikamaru. The Nara Janan mumbled at that as Asuma continued. We have reason to believe that Zabuza is still alive. The news came as a punch in the gut for Tazana and Tsunami as well as Hinata and Sakura. At this point, Naruto learned never to question Shikamaru. But Sensei, how is that possible? Kakashi Sensei did check him for a pulse. Sakura questioned as she took a seat close to Hinata. This time, Kakashi took over the explanation. Yes, Sakura I did and there was no pulse. However, considering the ability of the Hunter Nin and the weapon of choice, it's safe to assume that the Hunter Nin managed to place Zabuza in a death-like state. Hunter Nin are qualified as the elite of the elite. As such, they possess enough knowledge about the human anatomy and which weapons are best suited for their purpose. Also, a Hunter Nin's job is to dispose of the target's body right away. However, he instead took Zabuza's body away. The explanation made everyone's mood shift negatively, especially Tazana and Tsunami who were specifically targeted by the business magnate Gato. Everyone was surprised when the door opened abruptly as a beaten Kiba and Sasuke walked inside. In no time, both Shinan ran towards their respective seats and ravaged their respective bowls. I take it the two of you managed to finish the exercise. Kiba and Sasuke had their mouths full but both managed to nod at Kakashi's question. Sasuke and Kiba were then briefed on the news, before Asuma surmised their mission onward. Okay, 
Now Kakashi and I have talked about it and we shall remain here to protect Tazana as he finishes his bridge. The old man and his daughter visibly relaxed and appreciated Konoha for their effort. However, Kakashi is still in need of recovery, so he will take over the Jinan's training while me and Naruto will accompany Tazana. Zabuza will not attack us right now. You can't simply recover from a death-like state, the body needs time to recover, but we'll have to face him once more as well as the hunter Nin, not to mention the possibility of Zabuza gathering more to the cause. The information made everyone quite tense. The thought of facing others like Zabuza was quite terrifying, indeed. Equals 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 next day equals equals equals. Next day, while Naruto and Asuma followed Tazana to the bridge construction, Kakashi had approached the rest of the Janan with his directive for the day. Okay, seeing that Hinata and Sakura are already training in water walking, you two are to continue. I understand that the boys are still due to finish, even if Sasuke and Kiba claim to have already finished. So, you three shall keep on doing tree walking until I can attest the completion. Hinata and Sakura were already heading towards the lake where Naruto last took them yesterday. Sasuke, Kiba and Shikamaru stood side by side and it was clear to Kakashi that both his Janan subordinates looked irate at his command. Hey sensei, we already finished yesterday. Teach us something useful, like a cool jutsu. Kakashi's eyes never changed from plain boredom, however. Kiba, I do believe that Naruto had explained to you all the importance of chakra control, but I can repeat it. The scarecrow Jounin stopped talking once the Inuzuka complained once more. Yeah, a good chakra control is adamant for using ninjutsu and stuff, blah blah, but we did finish. The Jounin sighed, half hoping that Sasuke wasn't of the same mind as Kiba. Debatable, considering that your chakra reserves were almost depleted last night, having almost none to control isn't the same as finishing the chakra control exercise. Now, continue. True to Kakashi's theory, Kiba attempted to show off and run towards one of the trees and then go all the way towards the top, until his feet slipped and the Inuzuka at least managed to flip in midair and land on his feet. Sasuke for his part cursed having to perform this kami-forsaken exercise one more day. Shikamaru, for his part, looked at his tree with both hands inside his pocket, before he began his own climb, placing one foot after the other, only this time he was able to walk all the way to the top. Kakashi couldn't help but sweat drop at the lazy display. The kid could really put more effort into it, but then Shikamaru wouldn't be called Inara. Well, nice job Shikamaru, it looks like you mastered it. Feel free to practice your family's ninjutsu if you wish. I also understand from Asuma that you're studying genjutsu. If you want any help, please ask. The Nara genius nodded and took a seat by the tree, before picking up the genjutsu scroll that Asuma gave him. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. While the Janan were training, Asuma and Naruto were at the construction site, while they observed Tazana and his crew at work. Along the way, Naruto saw the condition of the country and frowned in concern. After seeing it, his respect for the old man rose. Tazana may have lied to Konoha about the mission, but he at least had good intentions in mind. While he was observing, Asuma was busy taking a seat on a bench nearby. He was relaxing himself while taking a smoke. His eyes then landed on his blonde Janan charge. Hey Naruto, come here for a second. Naruto looked at his Jounin sensei and saw him picking a leaf from the ground. What is it sensei? Asuma was busy twirling the leaf, before giving it to Naruto. I gather that you managed this exercise already, but show me. The Janan understood and grabbed the leaf before placing it in between his hands, before focusing wind chakra. It didn't take five seconds for him to show a leaf sliced in two, to which Asuma smiled in recognition. I figured, in your fight against Zabuza, you even used a wind technique and did so perfectly. Naruto briefly wondered if the man had a question in mind, but when none came, he just nodded in enthusiasm. Your scroll helped a lot Asuma-sensei, I have been practicing the two techniques constantly until I got the hang of it. The Jounin finished his smoke and then threw it away. So, you're also practicing the Daytapa, great breakthrough? To Naruto's nod, Asuma urged him for a demonstration. Show me then, try clearing this mist so that we can help the workers. The Janan then got into position and performed a considerable sequence of hand seals, while molding wind chakra through his tenkatsus, before gathering air inside his lungs. As soon as he released the pent-up air, Asuma's eyes widened at the torrential blast of wind that erupted from Naruto's mouth, ridding the area of the heavy mist for a while. The workers all thought it was a weird natural phenomenon, but continued their work as if nothing happened. The Jounin simply whistled in approval. 
How is that? The Jounin looked down at Naruto and hummed in appreciation. Good, better than I thought, though you took a bit longer on that hand seal sequence. Keep on practicing. It will be easier once you finish the second wind chakra exercise, but that will have to wait for a while. The Jinan nodded not bothering to point out that he had already finished the second exercise and performed the techniques a couple more times, while Asuma turned to watch the crew at work. Equals 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 Tazana's house equals equals equals. At the end of the day, Naruto and Asuma walked inside the house, only to hear the ramblings of a child directed at the members from Konoha. Why are you all trying so hard, in the end, Gato will murder you all. Tazana saw his grandson Inari screaming at the shinobi from Konoha and ushered him to stop antagonizing them. What's the point Gigi, in the end, everyone who tries to stand against Gato, dies. The boy visibly complained once Tsunami scolded him and sent the boy to his room. Tazana looked at the boy's back in sadness. I apologize for his behavior everyone, Inari was such a sweet boy, very energetic. Tsunami looked down as she had no more tears left in her eyes because of what happened. It all changed after he witnessed his father being killed by Gato's goons. The bridge I am building represents the hope of Wave Country. Without it, our county has no connection to the mainland. And Gato controls the ports and harbor in the area, not to mention connections in the Water Lord's office. This bridge is our only chance to save this country. After that, no word offering was needed and Tsunami went back into the kitchen to fix dinner. Naruto was then seen walking through the house corridor, before he heard the noise of a child crying. He looked inside the door to see the kid Inari sitting on a table and crying his heart out while looking at the picture of a man. Excuse me, can I come inside? The kid Inari grabbed the picture and held it close to his chest as he looked towards Naruto in anger. The Jinan showed his hands up in peace. Sorry to intrude, I just wanted to talk, if that's okay. Inari then wiped the tears from his face and turned into a cold exterior. I have nothing more to say. Naruto smiled in sadness as Inari diverted his eyes to the ground. The Jinan took a seat by his side as he looked at the ocean from Inari's room window. This picture is from your father, right? Tazana told us about what happened to him. Inari flinched for a second, as tears threatened to come back, but he held it in. Like I tried telling you all, Tosan also tried standing against Gato. He was killed right in front of me. Tosan was stupid like you all are. Naruto's face was passive as he heard Inari vent. Hinata was passing by the very same hallway and looked inside Inari's room to see Naruto talking to the kid. She stood there, observing the two boys talking. Her eyes almost watered as she heard the next words coming from Naruto's mouth. Also, those deep blue eyes of his still held the same amount of confidence. Well, I don't know about us, but in my eyes, your father was a hero. Inari looked up at the blonde Janan in surprise and Hinata smiled at the scene. The fact that your father faced the adversity of this Gato with nothing but his bare arms, that showed courage above all else. It showed that he stood for what's right in the end. Inari fought hard and all, but he was still a six-year-old kid that missed his father. And Naruto's words made him remember his old man's words. Naruto only smiled, though, as he held Inari in a hug as the kid cried in his chest. You know, I grew up an orphan so I never met my parents. Inari looked up in surprise as Naruto smiled at him. I would have liked to hear that my father was a hero just like your father was. As a matter of fact, I somehow know in my heart that he was. Hinata looked quite saddened at Naruto's testimony and it made her remember her mother, who died giving birth to Hinata's sister. Still, Hinata could see that Inari had stopped crying and was paying close attention to Naruto's words. You really think my father was a hero? There was hope in his voice as he waited for Naruto's response. Is there any doubt, Inari? The kid then smiled and nodded. Now, I need to do some training, but any time you want someone to talk to, I'm here okay. The kid nodded happily, and Naruto turned towards the door to leave the room. By this time, Hinata was already downstairs with a content smile on her face as she remembered the look on Naruto's face. It was times like these that she still remembered the old Naruto, the one who would brighten her world the one who gave her confidence to march forward. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After talking to Inari, a quieter Naruto went downstairs and said to Asuma that he would do some training before dinner. As he left the house and walked towards a more secluded clearing, Naruto pondered about his parents. Naruto was speaking from the heart when he said that his father was a hero, though every time he asked the Sandaime about it, the man would say that he didn't know. Though, 
Naruto already knew that Sarutobi Hiruzen hid the information about the Kyubi from him, so it stood to reason that the pattern would be the same regarding his parents. It was the only explanation, considering the boy's status as a Jinchuriki. Being a person of interest to Konoha, there was simply no way the San Daime wouldn't know everything about him. A long sigh was released from his mouth as he found a nice enough clearing covered by a heavy mist. Once he stood in the middle of the clearing, Naruto closed his eyes and focused on the ram seal to train his water manipulation training. Focusing on the Nidime's words and the feeling of water through his tenkatsus, Naruto's senses extended to the molecules in the air around him. This land had a high concentration of humidity, being close to the sea, so Naruto's capabilities doubled. In this place, he realized that he needed less time to mold the necessary chakra for his techniques. So engrossed was he in his training, that a person wearing a pink kimono with long straight hair approached the clearing with Naruto none the wiser. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't know that someone was here. Naruto's eyes opened fast as he relinquished control from his jutsu immediately. When he looked at the source of the voice, he saw what appeared to be a teenage girl holding a basket. Naruto went into high alert, considering that he didn't sense this person approaching, though he could barely feel a chakra network, so it could be a civilian. Who are you? And what are you doing here? The pink kimono user merely smiled and showed the basket to Naruto. Oh my name is Haku, I'm just here to gather medicinal herbs. Naruto approached what appeared to be a girl and looked inside the basket to see slices of plants. I see, so, you're a healer, then. Haku merely smiled at that. Yes, something like that, sure. I'm collecting these herbs for someone very special to me. Naruto found his control smoothing in this person's presence. He couldn't feel any animosity or killing intent whatsoever. Well, do you need any help or are you finished collecting? Haku merely smiled in appreciation. I appreciate it, but I got everything I needed. The blonde nodded and was about to turn and leave, when Haku noticed the headband. Say, are you a shinobi? I recognize the headband. I am, name's Naruto. Nice to meet you Haku. A pleasure to meet you as well Naruto-kun. So, what are you doing here if I may ask? Naruto debated on what to say at first, but answered. Training, that's all. I need to become stronger after all. Haku looked doubtful at that as he casually observed. Why, you already look strong enough. Is there a reason you need to become stronger? The Konoha Janan looked startled at the question, never once debating with himself the reason for it. Getting recognition, being one step closer to becoming Hokage, those would be the answers he would have given before meeting with the Nidaim Hokage and getting trained under him. The man was ruthless in all the lessons he passed on to Naruto, but one of them really stuck to the Janan, which actually was the last words he had spoken, before vanishing. Naruto, use the skills I taught you and the ones you will learn to protect Kanahagakur. The Janan then looked at Haku with enough confidence to state the same thing. I need to be stronger in order to protect my village and everyone in it. Haku looked surprised at his answer, before smiling back at Naruto. Oh, then you are indeed strong, Naruto-kun. When a person has something precious they want to protect, that's when they can truly become strong. Naruto looked deeply at Haku's eyes and found himself thinking about the words of wisdom he had just heard. Haku, then, got up from the ground with the basket in his arms and walked away, leaving the pensive Naruto in the middle of the clearing. Naruto then turned to see Haku leaving and couldn't help but smile deeply at those words that were now recorded in his mind. The blonde was so far engrossed in his thinking that he didn't see Sasuke approach right after Haku left, saying it was time for dinner. Equals 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 next day equals equals equals. As soon as Kakashi was fully healed, the team stood in front of Tazana's house together with Inari and Tsunami. The time it took for Kakashi to heal was the exact time it would take for Zabuza, give or take, so it stood to reason that the hidden mist missing Nin could attack Tazana at any time now. After saying their goodbyes to Tsunami and Inari, the teams walked towards the bridge. Inari looked much better than before, thanks to the talk he had with Naruto yesterday. And Tsunami and Tazana were thrilled to see the livelier look coming from the kid. Once the teams from Konoha left, Inari even offered to help his mother with some chores, earning a deep smile from Tsunami. Inari then went inside the house to go to the bathroom. The kid was on the tip of his feet washing his hands, when he heard the frantic scream from his mother. Quickly running to check what happened, Inari fell on the floor in pure fright as he saw his mother on the ground panicking and two men standing there with swords, one with an eye patch and tattoos all over his body and the other wearing a blue jacket. Both were looking at his mother, while their hands reached for their swords hilts. 
Ka-san. Tsunami's heart clenched as she heard her son scream as Gato's goons both turned their swords to the little kid. So, what do we have here, huh? The man with the eye patch approached the frantic boy, who couldn't stop shaking. Gato only ordered us to capture one hostage, so I can test my blade on you kid. The other goon simply huffed as he was watching the mother's terrified look at the threat made upon her son. Stop, if you dare to even touch him, I'll bite my tongue and kill myself. You want a hostage, don't you? The one with the blue jacket simply smirked at that and then turned to the crying Inari. Thank your mom, kid. She had just saved your life. As such, Inari could only whimper on the ground as he saw his mother being tied by a rope and then taken away as a hostage. He just stood there crying and he couldn't help it, he was powerless to stop and couldn't protect his mother from these goons. He just stood there doing nothing. Inari felt like he had disappointed everyone, he was just a little boy and couldn't do anything about it. His body was shaking, and tears were freely falling from his eyes. The boy then looked up when he remembered the words. For the things I truly hold dear to myself, I will protect them until the end with both these arms, even if it looks like I might lose my life. Tochan. The fact that your father faced the adversity of this gato with nothing but his bare arms, that showed courage above all else. It showed that he stood for what's right in the end. Naruto Niiken. You really think my dad was a hero? Is there any doubt, Inari? As the kid wiped the tears from his face, he looked up and wondered if he could be strong like his father. Outside the house, the two goons were escorting a fuming tsunami as she heard the one with the tattoos pass his hand over her skin, threatening to give her some cuts from his sword. Wait. You can't take my mother away. Inari suddenly appeared from behind them, much to Tsunami's protest, begging him to go back home. She would have screamed even further, but she received a slap on her neck and was unconscious. The kid saw Red at this point and charged at them with reckless abandon as the goons stood ready to skewer him with their swords. Despite the odds against him, the kid was beyond driven at this point to save his mother. When it became apparent that the kid would be slashed in half by these goons, they were surprised at the sudden noise of a projectile rain of shuriken and kunai stucking on their backs. Inari's eyes widened as he saw the shocked looks on their faces, before both had fallen on the ground, dead. Inari was surprised for a while and then he looked at the end of the dock that led to his house. There, Naruto stood with his hands in a throwing motion, indicating that he was responsible for the projectiles. Naruto Niiken the Janan smiled at his name being addressed and approached Inari and the downed tsunami. A couple minutes ago, the real Naruto had received the information from the tags he had placed around the house, that intruders had breached the perimeter and quickly sent a cage bunshine to come back and deal with them. Good job Inari, your father would be proud of you. Naruto said as he caressed the kid's hair for a while and then moved to check on tsunami. Quickly passing some chakra through her to awaken her, Naruto saw as the woman slowly opened her eyes to see what happened. When her eyes jerked open in surprise to see what happened to her son, her heart and shoulders were relaxed as she saw Inari there safe and sound with Naruto next to him, smiling down at her. Naruto, but I thought you had left, did something happen to Tosan? Nothing happened, I had just placed a security measure to warn me in case of someone trying to invade. Thanks to Inari here who stalled those goons, I was able to take care of them. Tsunami then saw Inari's happy face and quickly embraced her son for dear life. Thank you Naruto-kun. Naruto merely nodded and then stood up. No need to thank me. Now, L don't know if more will come, is there anywhere you two can hide? Tsunami got up with Inari's help and then turned to the Janan. Yes, I have a friend in town who will provide us shelter, we'll go there right away. Naruto then acknowledged it and gave Inari a thumbs up, before vanishing in a puff of smoke, leaving mom and son alone wondering where he went all of a sudden. Let's go Inari equals 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 at the bridge equals equals equals. As the teams approached the place where the bridge was being constructed, the original Naruto received the news from the cage bunshine and reported to Asuma and the others. Tazuna no doubt got spooked that Gato targeted his family once more, but relaxed when he heard that they were okay now. The real thing, though, was that Naruto had to review something that neither Jounin knew he knew about it. Both the cage bunshine and the rudimentary use of fuel and jutsu tags. He had no choice as Tsunami and Inari would no doubt tell them what happened. The Fun tags, despite being advanced stuff, could be excused as Naruto could have had access to them through the library. However, the Cage Bunshine was a Jounin level technique and a highly dangerous one to use. In the end, he had invented the history of him breaking into the library a couple years ago and finding the technique. 
while it wasn't the best cover story in the world, it's not like either Jounin would bother to follow up on it, since he wasn't a shinobi yet when it happened and his actions weren't under the Hokaye's jurisdiction. As soon as they stepped foot on top of the bridge, Tazana's eyes widened at the workers on the ground, dead. The heavy mist had immediately surrounded them all as the Jinan surrounded the client while the two Jounin stood in front of the group, waiting for Zabuza to approach. Their eyes widened as they heard footsteps approaching. In their right mind, Zabuza would come at least with the hunter Nin that helped him escape before. However, neither were prepared to hear three sets of footsteps followed by many others as well. When the mist cleared, the Jounin's eyes widened at the sight as there was Zabuza, the hunter Nin and another former member of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, Kurosuki Raiga. And right behind the three shinobi, there was a group of at least ten goons bearing swords, making it clear that Gato was not saving expenses to get rid of Tazana for good. Kakashi and Asuma all tensed at the sight of not one but two members of the Seven Swordsmen. This mission rapidly bumped to at least a ranked. What do you think Kakashi? The silver-haired Jounin looked straight ahead at the army in front of them. Each one of us will have to face one of the swordsmen, Asuma. Naruto and Sasuke shall have to handle the hunter Nin and the rest shall cover the client and deal with the goons. Asuma released a sigh in dismay at the thin odds right now. As he looked back, he at least got comfort in knowing that Sasuke and Naruto could work well together in dealing with the hunter Nin. Now, he needed to assign a third chain of command for the other Janan as they will be quite occupied. Hinata and Shikamaru, you two shall coordinate Tazana's defense with Kiba and Sakura. The rest of the Janan nodded and immediately formed the Manji formation around Tazana. Zabuza and Raiga, for their part, were busy conversing with each other. Oi Zabuza, what's the deal here? Zabuza looked at his comrade in arms and hummed in annoyance. The copycat Sharingan no Kakashi is mine, you can deal with Sarutobi Asuma. Raiga showed his full smirk, before releasing his Kiba swords and charged them with electricity. Within seconds, the Jounin level shinobi all got into their respective battles. The goons had charged straight at the client and met resistance from the other Jinan, leaving the hunter Nin to face Naruto and Sasuke in the middle of the bridge. The two Jinan stood side by side and Naruto noticed that Sasuke already had his Sharingan on as he observed the hunter Nin. Sasuke was eager to fight, that much Naruto could tell by the feeling of the Uchiha's chakra. The blonde surprised Sasuke as he crossed his arms. I can see you're eager to face him, so I shall act as your support, Sasuke. The person in question nodded with a smile, before vanishing towards the hunter Nin with superior agility and two kunai in each hand. Sasuke reached the hunter Nin in less than a second and attacked him with one of the kunai, only for the hunter Nin to stop it with a senbone. Sasuke kept on attacking using extreme agility with his kunai, but every move he made was parried by a senbone. When the hunter Nin was about to expertly divert Sasuke's kunai and counterattack, the hunter Nin had to evade a barrage of shuriken from Naruto. That move allowed Sasuke to keep on pressing the attack, only this time Naruto kept on attacking from long distance, using shuriken and kunai as well. The hunter Nin as soon as he parried Sasuke's kunai, began a sequence of one-handed hand seals, taking both Naruto and Sasuke by surprise. He then kicked the puddle of water on the bridge, before finishing the seals for his ninjutsu. Haijutsu, Senshatsu Suzu, Hidden Technique, Thousand Flying Water Needles of Death. The water that the hunter kicked then turned into water scene bonds and circled around Sasuke, before charging straight at him. However, Sasuke managed to jump and evade the attack, before using a quick shunshine and appearing behind the hunter ninja. He landed a powerful kick, forcing the enemy to skid a long distance, before looking back at Sasuke, Naruto now being forgotten. Sasuke for his part looked smug at the enemy, who just stood there watching him. That look turned sour when the hunter ninja flared his chakra to its maximum, showing that, so far, he was just toying with the Uchiha. Both Naruto and Sasuke felt the sudden shift in the air temperature, before the hunter ninja did a sequence of hand seals. Haijutsu, Makyo Hayoshu, Hidden Technique, Demonic Crystal Ice Mirrors Technique. Naruto was in surprise as a group of ice-made mirrors formed around Sasuke. The blonde Janan saw no other way of helping Sasuke and used his agility to step close to the Uchiha, seconds before the mirrors closed around them. The hunter ninja then appeared to be getting inside one of the mirrors, before his reflection appeared in all of the mirrors. Naruto and Sasuke then stood back to back as they observed the technique. Naruto could feel both types of elemental ninjutsu water and wind at the same time, wondering if this was the case of an elemental Kekai Genkai. 
Sasuke's Sharingan looked around the many numbers of the hunter ninja just as Naruto unleashed his sword. So, shall we begin, allow me to show you my real speed. Naruto and Sasuke were both being bombarded left and right with Senbone. Though, their agility and Sasuke's Sharingan allowed them to either block or dodge. Because of this, the hunter shinobi increased the speed of the Senbone, this time drawing first blood from the Janan. Sasuke took advantage of Naruto being targeted and used his fireball technique to melt the ice mirrors, but to no avail. You would need a stronger technique to do that, Uchiha. Now, I'm afraid I can't waste time with you. Zabuza-sama needs me. The hunter shinobi then targeted Sasuke treating him like a pincushion, however Naruto increased his speed and parried most of the projectiles. Sasuke took the opportunity granted by Naruto's defense and attacked the hunter ninja with fire-based ninjutsu. The hunter saw the attack coming and increased his speed, before getting back inside the protection of the mirrors. The same pattern kept on going. Haku would attack Sasuke and Naruto blocked the Senbone allowing Sasuke's Sharingan to pinpoint Haku's position to use a fire attack in retaliation. One fireball even managed to singe the hunter Nin's leg and Sasuke kept on the offensive, counting on Naruto's protection as well as his own agility. Because of this, the hunter decided to use other attacks as well while keeping the mirrors active. Using his Hyotan based ability, the hunter would create ice scene bonds around Sasuke's location, flipping the game a little bit. This made the Janan from Konoha work double in awareness because now they had to worry about not only real Senbone but ice Senbone as well. The hunter ninja observed his opponents with a keen eye, noticing that they worked really well together, though he saw that the Uchiha was the one to beat first. Sasuke, for his part, was unaware that his eyes had evolved to the two Tomoe Sharingan. As such, he began to see the opponent moving at slower speeds, which made him move even faster to anticipate his movements. The problem was that he couldn't see the ice senbone behind his back, but Naruto managed to cover his six with enough accuracy that made Sasuke's combat drive even more pronounced. He was even able to grab the opponent's arms in mid-flight and managed to land a fierce kick on his chest. The hunter was sent straight towards one of the mirrors and slammed his back, forcing some blood to fall from the mask. The hunter ninja then climbed inside the mirrors as he observed the Uchiha more closely. Now, I know how fearsome it is facing the Sharingan. Sasuke smirked at that notion, feeling the pride of being a part of the clan. I can see your pattern, now you won't be able to land another hit on me. The hunter ninja, though, merely snorted at that and snapped his fingers. Naruto was the one who noticed an infinite number of ice scene bonds surrounding Sasuke. Sasuke, look out. The warning came in time and the Uchiha saw Naruto moving with his sword to reflect the surprise attack. The Uchiha used his agility to follow the ones that Naruto couldn't reach in time. However, neither Sasuke nor Naruto noticed that the hunter ninja took advantage of the water on the bridge to make more ice scene bonds that came from the floor. Naruto noticed it too late and tried increasing his speed and even focused wind chakra on his sword to slash the projectiles. A couple of them ricocheted, however, from his protection and ended up piercing Sasuke's neck earning a violent scream and pain from the Uchiha, before he succumbed to it and fell on the ground. Naruto was still parrying the needles coming his way, before looking at the downed Uchiha. Naruto, then, went close to Sasuke and checked him up for a while. He is dead, there is no need to mourn him, because you will be next. The blonde could feel, though, Sasuke's chakra circling through his tenketsu. I'd gather you did the same as you did with Zabuza, placing Sasuke in a death-like state. The hunter ninja then looked at Naruto more seriously, who cracked his knuckles and neck. I guess I can let myself loose with you, now. Equals 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 Asuma x Raiga equals equals equals. Kakashi and Zabuza both met in the middle with Zabuza's sword and Kakashi's kunai battling for dominance. The Sharingan made it impossible for Zabuza to focus on ninjutsu, so he battled against Kakashi in close range. While Kakashi was able to anticipate Zabuza's movements, the swordsman was taking advantage of the heavy mist. He was more used to this terrain than the Konoha Jounin, so the fight was more even. Also, Asuma and Raiga danced with each other as Asuma's wind chakra knives battled against Raiga's lightning kiba swords in a show of sparks. When Zabuza told me about facing you, Asuma Sarutobi, I was quite eager. The bearded Jounin grunted as he managed to get behind Raiga's guard and swing his right hand knife laced with wind chakra, but Raiga evaded. When I kill you, I will receive a suitable bounty and then I shall give you a proper burial. Raiga said, before lifting both swords above his shoulder and cross them, 
before focusing lightning chakra and gathering a ball of lightning to be hurled at the Jounin. Asuma, though, merely evaded the attack and charged, keeping the fight in close range. The two Jounin shinobi clashed weapons once more, but Asuma had the superior element and negated Raiga's lightning kiba, before landing a fierce kick at Raiga's stomach, sending the swordsman skidding backwards. Asuma wasted no time and made hand seals, while his twin knives spinned in front of him. Cat and haste issue, fire release, ash pile burning technique. Asuma then unleashed from his mouth a cloud of smoke towards Raiga. As soon as the ash smoke enveloped the enemy, Asuma clicked his teeth, igniting the smoke, which then turned into a torrential blast. Raiga, however, used a simple water barrier around his body and emerged from the blast to attack Asuma. The bearded Jounin was surprised, when Raiga used lightning jutsu and enveloped himself in the energy. Asuma, then, focused more wind chakra and his knives extended to become close to a sword's length in wind chakra to block Raiga's attack. Once more, the element one and Asuma managed to nullify Raiga's lightning armor. As a result, Raiga received a couple of slashes on his arms and torso. You can't win this fight with lightning, Raiga. The swordsman cursed and used Kirigakura no Jutsu to use the mist in his favor. Asuma frowned as Raiga vanished just like Zabuza. I guess you're right, Sarutobi Asuma. Then, I shall change strategy. His voice echoed in the clearing and Asuma stood with his knives laced in wind chakra waiting for an attack. He extended his chakra in order to feel where the attack would come, when the bearded Jounin's eyes widened. He looked backwards at the Janan facing Gato's goons while protecting Tazana and saw Raiga appear behind the client. Working fast, Asuma placed his knives inside the kunai holster and made a sequence of hand seals, before placing both hands close to his mouth horizontally. This technique needed to be aimed properly or else he would accidentally hit the client instead. Fuuten Fuujin no Jutsu, Wind Release, Dust Cloud Technique From Asuma's mouth, a high-velocity wind surged, containing dust particles. Raiga had only one second to try and place his Kiba swords in front of him to protect himself from the blast. The hit caused great pain in Raiga, because his element was lightning, thus weak against wind-based techniques. Asuma kept on the offensive, taking the opportunity and picked up his knives once more and laced it with wind chakra, before piercing Raiga's chest. Asuma looked at the enemy bleeding from his mouth and it appeared to be the killing blow, before Raiga smiled and turned into water. Asuma cursed seeing that he must have replaced himself with a water bunshine at the last moment. Asuma, then, blocked Raiga's kiba swords that came from his back. Yes, indeed, you don't disappoint Sarutobi Asuma. I shall give you my strongest technique now. Asuma cursed and once more slashed Raiga's body who was another water bunshine. He then felt a strong surge of chakra close to him and saw Raiga lift his kiba swords up in the sky and received lightning from the dark clouds, before his body once more was enveloped in a lightning armor. Raiga then began to spin his body fast. The element began to grow in a vortex of wind upward. Asuma's eyes widened as he saw the vortex of wind shift into a dragon's head, heading straight to the bearded Jounin. The result was like Asuma was hit by a lightning bolt that came from the sky. Raiga then approached the place where the Jounin was hit and he smirked upon seeing the down Jounin on the ground. Raiga was sure to finish the bearded Jounin when he flinched and looked down to see a wind chakra sword piercing his back and emerging at his chest. Raiga had barely enough time in his life to turn and see Asuma behind him, while the one on the ground vanished in a cloud of smoke. Cage Bunshine. Asuma just smirked with a nod at Raiga's guess. That was a rather nasty technique, if I was hit by that, it would hurt like hell. Raiga then fell on the ground, dead. Equals 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 Naruto x Haku equals equals equals. So, you were waiting for your partner to get taken care of, before showing your true skills. Haku was still inside the mirrors as he eyed the Janan. For a minute, the hunter ninja actually thought that he had seen a kindred spirit in Naruto. Naruto stood with a fighting pose. Though, his thoughts actually drifted towards what the hunter ninja was implying. No actually, seeing the pattern of your senbone, I was protecting it from reaching his vitals. Sasuke here is actually quite stubborn and would be a pain in the ass if he saw me taking the initiative. Now, I can feel this technique of yours taking a lot of chakra from you, I bet it takes too much chakra to maintain, doesn't it? The hunter said nothing in reply and used his superior agility to attack Naruto from presumably all over the place. The hunter was surprised when Naruto's speed doubled, allowing him to block all the senbone from reaching him. I see that you're indeed faster than before, but it won't be enough to stop me. 
Naruto flinched as his eyes followed the hunter leaving one mirror and landing on the other using speeds even superior to his own. The Senbone had even increased in speed, making it difficult to block them all. He needed to use his own agility, to avoid the projectiles. For a while, then, it became a game of cat and mouse as the hunter shinobi used his agility and senbone to attack and Naruto to block and evade. It soon became clear to the blonde shinobi that there was a pattern in the movements being unleashed at him, though he couldn't shift from defensive to offensive. These were the times when he remembered the teachings from the Naidaim Hokage. No matter the overwhelming odds he had right now against him, all it took was one carefully applied move to shift the game in Naruto's favor. That being said, when Naruto landed in the middle of the ice field, he saw scene bonds, normal and ice made, charging at him from all possible directions. He couldn't escape them nor could he block them all. Then, molding water chakra inside his tenketsu, Naruto made a small sequence of hand seals, gathering water from the area. Suit and suijin heki, water release, water encampment wall technique. The hunter became surprised when a typhoon of water surged around Naruto, just as his scene bonds were about to pierce his body from head to toe. Naruto's attack wasn't finished as he made more hand seals. Suten Han Ryu, water release, tearing torrent technique. The typhoon of water that circled Naruto shifted and turned to target all of the Hunter Nin's mirrors at the same time, hitting the Hunter Nin dead on. Still, the attack while managing to take him away from the mirrors wasn't enough to seriously injure him, so the Hunter moved fast to climb inside the mirrors once more, however he had to dodge as soon as Naruto appeared in front of him with his sword surrounded by wind chakra. Naruto swung the sword close to the Hunter Nin's face and cut the mask in half. The attack was enough to not only carve a great dent at the Hunter's face as well as his right bicep, earning a scream of pain from the enemy. Naruto was about to finish the enemy off with a second sword slash when the mask fell off and he took a look at the downed enemy he had encountered before. Haku, Chapter 10, Wave Mission Final Part Naruto just stood there staring at the downed Hunter Nin on the ground. His sword was still held in a way that if Haku tried something, Naruto would be ready for it. Though, now, Naruto realized that the drop of blood that hailed from the steel he held was from the very same boy that he had met just the other day. The very same boy who had instilled in him a lifetime lesson. However, that was before the very same boy revealed to be the enemy that aided Zabuza in escaping. Why? Haku never kept his eyes away from Naruto, before hearing that simple word in question. While it was simple, it allowed a great many sets of memories in Haku's mind as he stood up with great difficulty. Why indeed, Naruto-kun. The bloodline that fell from his mouth did little to stop the smile on his face, but Naruto instinctively knew the emptiness it portrayed. The eyes did so as well. Why are you siding with a man like Zabuza, after that nonsense you spoke about being strong and protecting? Haku stood silent as Naruto vented. The number of people he had murdered, the atrocities he had committed. Haku looked like he couldn't care less, however. Aren't you going to kill me, Naruto-kun, I am after all the enemy, right? Why bother talking about it? Naruto snarled and then used a shunshine right in front of Haku, surprising the hunter ninja at the speed of it, before he saw Naruto's fist slam at his side cheek, sending Haku towards the ground in even more pain now than before. Haku could certainly feel the boy's anger in that punch and he realized that he had indeed struck a nerve. The Konoha Janan, for his part, was indeed furious at this point. But then he calmed himself, remembering the Naidime's teaching about letting out emotion in the middle of a mission no less. Haku was busy massaging his jaw, wondering if Naruto had broken it, based on the pain. You would need more than that to kill me, Naruto-kun, or is it possible you're feeling pity for me, or is it possible that you have yet to kill someone? No, he had taken a life before when he saved Inari but his hesitation to finish the mission was more in terms of getting to know the reason than him freezing up at the doing the final deed. Learning to breathe easily, Naruto then lowers his sword, an act that seems to invite Haku to strike him, but the constant flaring of his chakra dared Haku not to move an inch or else Naruto would indeed finish him. That alone displayed to the hunter ninja that he was completely wrong in his assumption of the Konoha Janan. I have killed before, Haku. Rest assured that I won't hesitate in doing so to finish the mission, I still wonder why. Why would you of all people associate with someone like Zabuza? That's easy, I owe him my life. Haku understood the look of skepticism that Naruto showed in response. Do you know how it feels Naruto, to not be needed by anyone? To live day to day without a dream, the pain of it all. What's that got to do with anything? Naruto couldn't hide it from Haku, though. 
I can see in your eyes that you do understand what I'm saying Naruto-kun, you can't hide it from me. Naruto snarled, but looked down briefly. The memories of his ill treatment from the village and how ignored he was by everyone as if he didn't even exist in the first place. If it weren't for the Naidaim Hokage deciding to at least give some of the answers he sought, he would remain oblivious to the reason to this day. Nowadays, Naruto has a drive, to follow in the Naidaim's legacy, to protect Konoha and its citizens, whether everyone acknowledges him or not. I do remember you saying how strong you are when you have someone to protect, but why him, he can't be the only one special in your life to protect. A long time ago, I had other people special to me, my parents. Naruto's glare softened at the mention and his mind couldn't help but draw parallels with Haku's life, except that whereas Haku had his parents, Naruto was born without his. Still, as he looked in Haku's eyes, Naruto could see deep pain in them, despite Haku's facial expression appearing stoic. I was born in the land of water, in a village constantly punished by snow. My parents worked on a small farm. We didn't have much, but my parents seemed to be satisfied with it, a simple life. I was really happy at the time to have such loving parents. Naruto tisked at the mention of having loving parents, but he couldn't help himself. I'm glad one of us got to meet them, at least. Haku looked up and crossed eyes with the blonde for a while, already understanding a bit of Naruto's sob story, through his tone alone. Everyone had one, after all. Yes, but it all changed once I got old enough to understand some things. This time, Naruto looked at something else he didn't recognize in Haku's eyes. He saw hollow eyes looking back at him. Undeterred, the hunter ninja continued. My blood, I realized, is both a gift and a curse in the land I was born. After the bloody civil war that happened in Kirigakur, those with Keke Genkai became feared, my mother had the same ability as I do, but fearing for her own life as well as mine, she hid her own abilities. One time, I managed to awaken mine and I showed it to her. I was so happy back then, but my mother wasn't. She tried to hide it from others, especially my father, but he ended up seeing it. What did he do? It was a question that Naruto dreaded the answer to, but he said it before he even realized it. My father killed my mother, and he tried to kill me as well. Naruto's eyes widened at that as Haku remembered the scene quite vividly in his mind, well not all of it at the time, but afterward. He remembered being inside their house and backed into a corner while his own father, in tears, lifted a knife to kill him. Then, a tiny black-haired child slowly walks outside the snow in a catatonic state of mind, before falling on the deep snow. The house where they lived was filled with gigantic ice stakes that killed everyone inside, including his own father. He described it just as he remembered to Naruto, who stood there transfixed, not able to mutter a single word in reply. When I came to, I realized that I had killed my own father. It was right there that I realized the most painful thing, that my existence didn't matter to anyone else in the world. Naruto's chest clenched right there at the familiar feeling of being forgotten in his home village. Zabuza-sama was the one who gave me a purpose, even if he only needed me to be a weapon for his ambitions. This time, Naruto was even more unsettled by the sudden smile in Haku's face. And so, I became a weapon for him, it gave me a purpose, a reason to live. But all changed once more, Naruto-kun, because of you, because of you, I can no longer become a weapon for Zabuza-sama, you have rid me of my purpose, Naruto-kun, so all there is left is for you to kill me. Naruto tensed as Haku walked towards him as he positioned his sword in preparation for the final deed. Naruto moved in for the kill and Haku would have let him do it, if not for the feeling he felt that his master needed his last drop of chakra right now. Equals 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 with Kakashi and Zabuza equals equals equals. Hatake Kakashi had yet to land a hit on the elusive swordsman Shinobi and right now, he was staring at the bloody mist that managed to hide Zabuza's location and quite frankly, he was getting sick of the hit and run tactic. Because of the heavy mist, he couldn't see if his students were okay. Asuma could very well be battling Raiga and Sasuke and Naruto were busy with the hunter ninja. Kakashi was under the clock right now and the thought of losing one of his teammates made him tremble inside. What do you say we finish this with one last move, Zabuza? Kakashi had grabbed a scroll from his kunai pouch and danced with it for a while, before positioning it in between his fingers as he made hand seals. Ninpa Kushios, Doten Suiga no Jutsu, Ninja Art Summoning, Earth Release, Tracking Fang Technique. When he slammed the scroll on the ground, various streams of kanji letters came out from the scroll towards the bridge floor, but nothing else happened. And Zabuza, despite being hidden by the mist, managed to see Kakashi's moves. Despite being ready for anything, Zabuza was aware that Kakashi didn't know of his location, 
so it would be impossible for whatever technique Kakashi attempted to reach him, let alone become threatening enough. Deep within the mist, Zabuza stood with the ram signal with his eyes closed, all but ready to make his move that would finally kill the Sharangan user. Zabuza, though, was surprised when he felt the bridge floor tremble, before a bunch of Ninkan emerged and sank their teeth on him in many parts of his body, untrapping him. Kakashi then walked towards the location of his dogs, before seeing Zabuza held at bay by his dogs. This is the summoning jutsu specialized for pursuit, I deliberately shed my own blood to stop your attacks for this. Your weapon has a thick scent of my blood on them, so my Ninkan took care of the rest. Despite being trapped, Zabuza kept the bluff going. I have had enough of your bluffs, Kakashi. You can stop acting tough, you are trapped right now. I don't know why you wrongly believe that I only got by because of the Sharingan. So, I shall kill you with a jutsu of my own creation. Doing a short sequence of hand seals, Kakashi then focused both on chakra shape manipulation and chakra element manipulation. As he positioned his right hand upward, Zabuza's eyes widened at the sudden dance of lightning chakra around the Sharingan warrior. He couldn't believe his eyes as he could see Kakashi's hand overflowing with chakra. It was such a daunting image of Kakashi controlling pure lightning with his hand. Still, Zabuza stood proudly, despite knowing he was about to get skewered by that assassination technique. You are too dangerous to be left alive, Zabuza. Your future is death. Kakashi then charged with his lightning-infused hand and stopped inches from Zabuza's position as he attacked the man, only for his eyes to widen. Kakashi was surprised when the hunter ninja appeared in front of Zabuza, taking the brunt of his reikiri. The look of pure shock from the hunter ninja was forever memorized in Kakashi's mind because of the Sharingan, just like the image of what happened to his teammate a long time ago. It was so similar that Kakashi froze in time, while the Ninkan released Zabuza. Kakashi's eyes were trembling at the trauma of his past, while Zabuza smirked in triumph at Haku from protecting him. He was about to finish Kakashi with his sword when Asuma approached and cut Zabuza's arm off with his wind chakra knife. Asuma saw everything, just as the mist subsided somewhat. The bearded Jounin managed to reach Kakashi's position in time, after sealing the body of Raiga and the Kiba blades. Kakashi was awakened from his nightmare as soon as he heard Zabuza screaming in pain at losing his arm off. Haku by this point just fell on the ground, dead, after being pierced by Kakashi's technique. When the mist subsided, the consequences of the battles were clear to the Jounin as he looked to see Naruto look at their direction with a snarl on his face and Sasuke on the ground looking like a pincushion. However, Naruto didn't appear to be concerned about Sasuke, so it could mean that the Uchiha was only unconscious. Kakashi then looked at Asuma who was facing the irate Zabuza. At this point, Zabuza couldn't hope to become much of a threat now with one arm and without Kubi Kirabocho. Still, he still stood there, flaring his chakra while Asuma and Kakashi at his every move. Equals 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 with Sakura and the others equals equals equals. The rest of the Janan had managed to beat the thugs and then tied them up so that none of them could offer a threat anymore. When the mist finally subsided, the tension also subsided as Shikamaru and Kiba looked around for the other fights. Hinata and Sakura both looked at Sasuke and Naruto's direction and Sakura gasped at seeing the Uchiha on the ground, filled with senbone all over his body. Sakura right there and then abandoned the mission as she ran towards the down Sasuke, before Hinata could stop her. Go with her, Hinata, we can protect Tazuna. She turned to Shikamaru and nodded, before following the pink-haired Janan. The bridge builder could only release a sigh and relaxation as he could feel his heart beating once more. He really wondered if he would die of a heart attack before any of Gato's goons managed to kill him. Naruto was eyeing the downed Haku on the ground, before turning to see Sakura attending Sasuke on the ground, which made him turn at attention to see about the unconscious Uchiha. Naruto, what happened to him, is he? He offered a resigned smile at Sakura just as Hinata arrived after her. Relax Sakura, he is only unconscious. The news was met with happiness by the pink-haired Janan as she stood next to the Uchiha, waiting for him to wake up. Naruto then turned to focus on Haku with a far-off look on his face. Hinata then approached him and placed a comforting pair of hands on his bleeding arm, making Naruto turn to her now, remembering that Haku's metal and ice senbone managed to draw blood from him as well. Offering a smile at the Hayuga in reassurance, the timid girl was glad that he was alright, though something else was amiss, as Naruto was still eyeing the downed hunter ninja with a far-off look on his face. The look unsettled her greatly. Naruto was her son, and to see him saddened with a lost look in his eyes, she couldn't help but ask, trying to reach out to him, just like he would do for her. Are you alright, Naruto-kun? 
The blonde Janan merely glanced at Hinata, before looking at Haku once more. Hinata found the lack of answer troubling until Naruto turned his attention solely to her. No, I'm not alright, Hinata, but I will be, thank you. He may no longer have the same smile on his face, but she stood at ease, knowing that whatever is going through his mind right now, he will be able to overcome it. It is what he is best at and it only serves to inspire her even more. Back with the Jounin and Zabuza, the Kiri Nin was already considering his plans to escape. With Haku now dead and facing two Jounin with only one arm, his odds were less than zero of surviving. Plus, he needed to close the wound right away or else he would bleed to death. Even now, he could barely hold his own consciousness at the great pain inflicted by a clean cut of wind chakra. As such, Zabuza was about to use the heavy mist for his escape when he heard the all too familiar cane echoing throughout the bridge floor. Well, well, so it seems you failed yet again Zabuza. Looking to the side, a rather short bald guy with glasses wearing a black business suit appeared in front of a group of mercenaries as his bodyguards. Even when you asked me for more money to hire yet another missing nin, you still failed, pitiful, quite pitiful indeed. Gato, the owner of Gato Industries only smirked at the look he was receiving from Zabuza at this point. It got worse as the midget was standing close to Haku's body and the businessman remembered the pain he felt when Haku broke his arm. Zabuza couldn't help but snarl as Gato started kicking the dead hunter Nin, in a pitiful attempt of revenge. If Zabuza wasn't facing two Jounin at the moment, he would simply murder Gato right there for his actions. Everyone got surprised when a kunai traveled fast and precisely towards Gato's shoulder, earning a scream of pain from the midget businessmen. Zabuza as well as Asuma and Kakashi turned to see who threw it, only to see Naruto with his arm extended and with a complete deranged look on his face. Gato, despite the heavy pain, got up haphazardly from the ground, snarling bloody murder at the blonde Janan for his actions. The Miss Nin, though, kept looking at Naruto for longer than the both Jounin. Zabuza could see in Naruto's eyes a similarity to the kid that offered himself to be his tool a long time ago. And Zabuza remembered that this Janan and the Uchiha fought against Haku. In his right mind, Zabuza started looking at Naruto more seriously as he could see the battle wounds on his body, as well as the wounds from Haku's. So this brat managed to beat Haku in battle. I don't know who the hell you are but kick him one more time and the next kunai will be lodged in your forehead. Who the hell do you think you are you punk, huh? Naruto took a step forward and even took out his sword in preparation for a second battle. The thugs from behind Gato all prepared to fight as well. I said it before and I will say it again, kick him again and I will kill you. Haku may have been my enemy, but he has fought me to the very end, holding on to his beliefs. Naruto didn't care that everyone was looking at his back right now as he remembered the hunter ninja both when they fought and when they met before as Naruto helped him collect some herbs for Zabuza. Even if the bastard Zabuza didn't deserve it, Haku fought for him. He gave his life for a purpose and that's to be respected. Hinata, being close to him, could see his arms trembling, could see his teeth grinding in complete anger at the unfairness of what happened to Haku. Her chest clenched at the feeling of Naruto's despair. Naruto, for his part, knew about the Naidime's teachings at this point to control his emotions while on a mission. But, right now, he whispered a silent apology to his mentor for not following up with his teachings temporarily, as he remembered Haku's suffering and the injustice of what happened to him. In the end, he threw his life away, but he did so because he believed he was doing the right thing. Zabuza, Asuma and Kakashi pretty much stopped as he eyed the kid rant. Especially, Zabuza as he then looked at the body of Haku, wondering how the hunter ninja felt facing the blonde kid in battle. The Miss Nin always knew that despite Haku's skills, he would never be a killer. He was far too gentle for that. Despite the blonde Janan being skilled enough to hold his own against Haku, Zabuza knew that Haku didn't have in him to fight for the kill. Zabuza at this point abandoned any hopes of surviving past this day. He was bleeding profusely, and his opposition wouldn't allow him to leave. Still, he at least could do something that would provide him some sort of closure in his life. Kakashi, Asuma, I am no longer your enemy. The two Jounin observed as Zabuza ripped the binds off of his mouth, before his entire face was visible. Though, would you please supply me with a kunai for one final deed? The two Jounin noticed that Zabuza was now observing Gato and his goons and certainly focusing as much killing intent as he could muster with the low chakra he now had. Kakashi released a sigh and acknowledged the request, before throwing one kunai up in the air. Zabuza gave the scarecrow Jounin a brief nod in appreciation, before he turned to Naruto who was now observing him intently. Zabuza could see that the kid's anger was directed at him as well for what he did to Haku. Gaki, 
I was glad that he got to face you until the end, I can see that you and he hold many resemblances. Now, farewell everyone. It's been fun. Gato, despite it all, felt pretty confident in his odds, until Zabuza ran towards him and his goons with reckless abandon. The entire scene was brutal. The goons all tried desperately to attack Zabuza, but right now Zabuza couldn't care less about evading them or even protecting his body. He slaughtered them all with but a kunai. One by one, the goons were falling on the ground, dead and the ninja from Konoha stood by and watched, transfixed at the scene. Sakura and Hinata were having trouble watching it, but one look at Naruto and it gave them both the courage needed to keep on watching the scene. It was after all a scene of vindication. A scene that all shinobi and kunoichi must bear witness to. The last steps of a fighter. Zabuza allowed Gato to be the last man standing, before he sliced the midget's jugular. By this point, Zabuza's back was impaled by no less than seven swords and with the amount of blood he lost, he could feel no pain anymore. All he could feel was the pull of his spirit to wherever location he will go at this point. While watching his former employer gag on the ground before succumbing to death, Zabuza then looked back to Haku's corpse and wished that he would get to go to the same place. Equals 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 a week later equals equals equals. Now that Gata was gone, the land of waves was free to move on with their lives and the atmosphere was certainly much more serene at this point. It took an entire week for everyone involved in the battle to recover their health and chakra capacity. Also, Sasuke needed this time to get adjusted to his body once more, after being put in a death-like state by Haku. The Uchiha was at first pissed that Naruto managed to defeat the hunter ninja, but when he recalled the fight with his now-evolved two Tomoe Sharingan, Sasuke realized how much he improved in the short time that he first faced Naruto in a spar. It was ridiculous to believe that this person not only helped Sasuke awaken his Sharingan, but also helped him evolve it to the second stage. It certainly made Sasuke even more eager to spar many more times with his Janan compatriot. However, the image of his brother's fully evolved Sharingan staring at him as if Sasuke meant nothing, made his blood boil. The rest of the Janan managed to relax throughout the week and even Naruto allowed himself a full day of rest for the first time since he started training with the Naidaim. The image of a dying Haku was still fresh in his mind and it only inspired him more to improve, to train more. He certainly would have gone out to train, but he was forbidden to do so by Hinata. After the battle, she could see with her Byakugan how strained his chakra coils were and urged him to get some rest, both in mind and in body. Not only that, but she stayed with him pretty much the entire week to prevent him from escaping. Naruto tried to call for help, but the mere look of Hinata's fierce Byakugan daring them to contradict her convinced everyone to pick her side instantly. Asuma and Kakashi saw it with enough humor and, needless to say, both sided with Hinata in this manner. When the bridge was finished, it was time for them to part and as such, Tazana, Inari, Tsunami and a group of villagers bid them goodbye and a safe trip back home. Naruto and Inari crossed eyes for a moment before Naruto extended his fist for Inari with a broad smile on his face. Inari then met with Naruto's fist with the same smile, before Naruto caressed Inari's hair playfully. The villagers all saw how different Inari became and it filled Tsunami and Tazuna's heart with joy seeing that he managed to surpass his father's death. After all, Keiza may be long gone, but his name will always be in their hearts and in their memories as they step on the very bridge that now has his name on it. The idea was from Inari himself after he remembered the words from both Keiza and his will to protect everyone with his own arms and Naruto's praising Keiza for his acts of heroism. Equals 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 in Konoha equals equals equals. Two months flew in a flash for Naruto after the wave assignment. After that, his team participated in many D-ranked missions, 5C ranked and 1B rank even, together with Kakashi's team. In the meanwhile, he would train his ass off, rarely doing anything aside from missions, training and meeting with his teammates and even Sasuke on occasion asked demanded for a spar. He would abuse his cage bunshine training and actually urge the clones to perform all the chakra control exercises he knew, including the elemental ones. Asuma had provided him with a new futon technique for him to practice called Fuutan Senpukan, wind release, whirlwind fist technique. It was a simple enough technique that consisted of Naruto focusing enough wind chakra through a closed fist and then releasing the pent-up energy seconds before landing the punch. Also, he was focusing his training on perfecting the Naidimes technique Sutan Suishuha, water release, water shockwave technique. Of course, he needed to practice without a nearby water source and it was quite hard, because Naruto had to attract a suitable quantity of water as well as keep the strength level high. The technique by itself started as defensive, by gathering water in a defensive barrier around him, 
before the accumulated geyser turned into a maddening wave towards the target. It was quite chakra intensive, but he wasn't much worried about it. Aside from the ninjutsu department, Naruto focused on his few ninjutsu skills and space-time ninjutsu theory, studying the Nidime scroll as well as some scrolls in the library that Janan could pick it up. The rest of the areas of focus, Taijutsu, Kenjutsu and Genjutsu, Naruto chose to spar with Asuma and Sasuke for that. As far as Genjutsu was involved, well, he was struggling. The chakra control exercises helped and he would use his cage bunshines for target practice in the art of illusion, but he was struggling still. Pushing that aside for now, in between missions, Naruto would act as a Janan leader for Sakura and Hinata. The two girls would approach him asking for guidance and Naruto provided for them. Sakura and Hinata already mastered the two exercises of chakra control and Naruto would guide them to spar on top of the lake, while using water walking. He would also surprise both of them with the occasional kunai and shuriken to test their awareness. In the beginning, both struggled, but they had the drive to improve and in no time, both Janan would battle each other like seasoned Janan. Naruto even got to train Hinata on the side. He didn't know much about the Hyuga techniques, but he settled for being a target practice for Hinata. She was being tutored by her father in those techniques and the strict man was ecstatic about her growth in such little time. So much so, that Naruto even decided to teach her about the third chakra control exercise, so long as she didn't tell anyone about learning it from him. He didn't want to receive another earfall from Asuma sensei about teaching advanced stuff to them without his consent. But as the Hugas were quite knowledgeable on the use of chakra, it made sense that the clan heir learned as much of it as possible. Today, Team Asuma did a couple of teamwork drills and light sparring, before Asuma released everyone for the day. The bearded Jounin had already informed his team that he would be away for a couple of weeks for a personal mission at Fire Capital. So, he had advised his team to keep on training. Shikamaru had also informed that he would leave on a family training trip with the Yamanaka and the Akimichi clans, so only Naruto and Hinata would remain inside the village. Naruto saw as Hinata and Shikamaru said their goodbyes for the day, so he was left alone in the clearing with Asuma Sensei. Sensei. Asuma turned to his student and leisurely lit up a smoke. Um, yes Naruto. If history served him right, Naruto would only ever approach him for one subject, new skills to learn. The brat was indeed relentless. As his Jounin sensei, Asuma was also responsible for tutoring his Janan about the life as a shinobi. At first, he figured that he would have to be more present with Naruto, considering that he is an orphan, but the kid had never approached with anything. The wave assignment was the one time he had ever seen the kid giving in to his emotions, to his inexperience in life. He and Kakashi had advised Naruto back then about what it meant to be a shinobi in service for the village and the hardened view that Zabuza had concerning the profession. After that, however, they had been in plenty of missions and Naruto behaved as professional as a seasoned chunin throughout it all. Asuma-sensei, do you know who I can talk to regarding Genjutsu? The bearded Jounin honestly wondered why Naruto would be interested in the subject, considering his predilection and pestering for ninjutsu. Genjutsu, now, that's surprising. Naruto just blinked asking why and Asuma merely chuckled. Well, I really need to stop being surprised by you, don't I? I happen to know a specialist in the field, Kurenai sensei happens to be a specialist in the field. I know she will be thrilled for the prospect of passing on her knowledge about the subject. In fact, I believe she is at training ground 3 at this time teaching her own team. If you hurry, you could go there and ask for her assistance. Oh, thank you Asuma sensei, well, see you in a couple weeks then. Bye. Asuma responded to the wave and tucked his hands inside his pockets as he observed his Janan's back. In two weeks' time, Asuma would have to make a decision concerning his team, but he had faith that they were ready for it. Equals 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 training ground number three equals equals equals. Yuhi Kurenai stood by with her arms crossed and a proud smile on her face as she observed her Janan training. It was already close to sunset and she was proud to say that all three of them, Kuji, Ino, and Shino, managed to finish the second stage of chakra control, water walking. At first, this team was supposed to be for reconnaissance assignments, at least it was the directive given by the San Daime when he asked her to be a Jounin sensei to this new crop of Janan. Both Ino and Shino managed to fit the criteria easy enough with their clan abilities and Kuji was the team's bodyguard in case of trouble. At least, this was the theory that Iruka brought to the Hokage for approval. Kurenai was at first skeptical of what she could teach the chubby Janan but she learned that Kuji was a sweet kid and quite eager to please everyone. As such, the missions progressed nicely and Kuji had even learned a great deal of what these types of missions entail. One sad part, 
though, is that with clan heirs, Kurinai wouldn't be able to impart to any of them her knowledge in Genjutsu. Ino proved to be quite adept in chakra control and learned quickly enough in how to at least dispel the illusions. Shino, she already knew, was almost impervious to the techniques, since they relied on their kikaiku bugs. Kuji had too much chakra to be able to control and thus was quite weak to the illusions. In this manner, Kurinai had instructed his teammates to help him in disrupting it. Still, the fact remained that none of them were ever going to be using Genjutsu like she did. Okay team, that's enough for today. Kurinai instructed everyone, before turning to the right just as the blonde Janan arrived. Oh, hi there Naruto. Kuji waved to Naruto, quite eager to meet his academy friend again. Naruto waved to him back and approached the chubby Janan to salute him. Hi there Kuji, looking good there. The Akimichi smiled broadly. The rest of the team, Ino and Shino, observed the sudden arrival. It was no surprise that Naruto would greet Kuji first, since they along with Shikamaru would play together at the academy. Naruto then saluted both Ino and Shino, albeit neither of them admitted ever hanging out much with Naruto at the academy, though Ino heard bits and pieces from Sakura that Naruto was helping her a lot. Kurinai smiled at the interaction and stood on the sideline, waiting for them to finish talking. So, what are you doing here, Naruto? I thought you would be training with Asuma-sensei. Oh, I actually came to ask Kurinai-sensei for some help. Naruto then turned to the surprised sensei and she approached them, still with her arms crossed. She remembered the conversation she had with Asuma and Kakashi about Naruto's prowess in many subjects and even was privy to some of his missions from Asuma when the Jounin peers got together for drinks on occasion. She remembered Asuma and even Kakashi giving Naruto high praises regarding not only his skills but also his behavior on missions. Though, she now became curious as to what he could want her help with. Naruto, then, remembered that her team was still training. Sorry if I'm interrupting your training, sensei. Kurinai shook her head and smiled at him, noticing his surprising manners. It's okay Naruto-kun, we are about finished with today's training. Just wait until I address them, so you can tell me what you need my help for. Naruto nodded and took a seat close to the trees while Kurinai said her goodbyes to her team, before approaching him. So, what is it that you need my help for? The sun was about to set for good and the few lights in the area came to life. The moon was also about rising and it aided with area's brightness. Asuma-sensei said that you are an expert in the art of illusions, and I wanted your help, Kurinai-sensei. Her interest was piqued at the mention and she placed both hands by each side of her hips. Oh, you're interested in Genjutsu, from what I heard about you from Asuma, though, you were gearing towards ninjutsu and kenjutsu. Naruto stood up from the ground he was sitting in the jown and noticed that he was quite tall, almost reaching her shoulder. Asuma-sensei talked about me? She nodded and found herself smiling in response to his eager smile at being praised. Yes, he did, he is very high praise for you, Naruto-kun. Even Kakashi commended you when he is not focused on his reading. Though, don't mention to them that I said that, Naruto laughed at that, remembering how much Kakashi enjoyed burying his head on his little orange book though he wondered what could be so interesting about it. So, what aspect of Genjutsu do you want my help with? Oh, yeah, uh, I can already perform a few C-ranked illusions techniques. Kurinai heard in surprise, never before hearing that Naruto was practicing Genjutsu techniques. Certainly, Asuma never mentioned that, though she kept on hearing him. However, I couldn't maintain the technique for long. At first, I wondered if I lacked enough chakra control for this, but I have been doing chakra control exercises every day and am still struggling. Ah, I see, if I may ask, why are you interested in being a Genjutsu user, Naruto-kun? This was just too surprising to hear and Kurinai thought about pinching herself at the prospect of imparting her knowledge to the next generation. Kurinai firmly believed in the will of fire and adored the prospect of teaching, especially when it comes to Genjutsu. She couldn't help but curse every day that she heard her peers talk hours and hours about other arts and simply forget about the more subtle shinobi arts such as genjutsu. I aim to become a well-rounded shinobi, Kurinai-sensei and I also have a side project that I know you could assist me with. I'm happy to help a fellow genjutsu user, what is it? Little by little, the Naidaim student would lay out the type of shinobi he wanted to become. The Naidaim Hokage was proficient in pretty much all different branches of shinobi arts and Naruto aimed to be just like him in the future. Ninjutsu, Kenjutsu, Shurikenjutsu, Fuinjutsu, Genjutsu, space-time ninjutsu, everything. And for that to happen, he would need to work hard, true, but he would also need to receive guidance from the best in each of these fields. 
It just so happened that he enjoyed the prospect of learning from the best. I was aiming to use my kenjutsu in conjunction with the false surroundings technique. The woman couldn't help but widen her eyes at the so-called side project. Yuhi Kurinai based her knowledge about Naruto from Asuma's and Kakashi's reports and the boy's own file. From that alone, it was already established that this boy was already very well developed in terms of overall skills, the likes of which Kurinai only heard about from Kakashi or Itachi's growth. However, when she heard about him wishing to use a C-ranked illusion in the middle of a Kenjutsu fight, Kurinai felt herself without words. Of course, she would be able to do it with a single hand seal and still have the other hand free to fight. However, the level of focus and mind strength to do so was enough to spike her enthusiasm. Naruto, for his part, saw the sudden giddy look and Kurinai couldn't help but blush slightly, before clearing her throat to keep it together. That is indeed quite ingenious, though quite difficult to accomplish. Naruto-kun. Could you do the technique on me so that I can see what you're doing wrong? The boy nodded and went through the necessary hand seals, before focusing on the ram seal. Megan Kokoni Arazu no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion, False Surroundings Technique. Reciting the Needham Scroll, Naruto slowly but surely guided his chakra to invade Kurinai's own chakra, reaching towards her nervous system. Within seconds, the woman saw that nothing much had changed, except that the moon was slightly lower and a couple of trees less than it should be in this area. Though, she knew from memory that she was in a genjutsu, she couldn't help but applaud the demonstration. And true to Naruto's report, the moon image then flickered slightly, before she released the illusion. Okay, I see it now. Indeed, a good show, but it could be better. So, any tips? Kurinai nodded, already working on the theory that Naruto needed to understand, so she entered into teacher mode. A few, yes. First, you need to consider that the minuscule details are the most important in a genjutsu. The key here is disorientation without the target realizing it. I didn't notice my chakra being invaded at first, which is A+. Plus. But, the images you supplied me with tempered with my memory of the area, so I was able to see that the details were wrong. But that is something you acquire through experience. Chakra-wise, those who tend to focus on ninjutsu, focus more on the yang part, while genjutsu require more yin release, I do hope you're following me thus far. Naruto nodded, already knowing about the theory of chakra and how to control the balance between yin and yang release. I do, yes. The confident and short response made it believable to her. Wonderful, how far are you in chakra control? I do recall Asuma saying that you already finished water walking. Naruto nodded and grabbed a kunai, before making it hover above his hand using only chakra. The display made Kurinai even more excited to see his future as Naruto focused on the exercise. My last record is 20 minutes, though having large chakra capacity makes it hard. When the kunai fell on the ground, Kurinai turned into a thinking pose. What I noticed from your illusion is that it crumbled approximately 15 seconds after you cast it, truly so maintaining an illusion for longer periods is hard and I must say doesn't much fit with what you seek. Keep on with the chakra control exercises and you will be good in time. And focus on the details is key like I said. Though, your target would have to possess prior knowledge of the field like I do to know he is in a genjutsu. Kurinai saw as Naruto turned introspective afterward and she allowed him time to do so, quite pleased to see the young man's work ethic. Naruto, for his part, stopped pondering and turned to her with an appreciated smile. Thank you, Kurinai-sensei, for your help. Though, I do wonder what I could do to help you as compensation for your help. Kurinai smiled at that, feeling at ease with him, despite being the first time they interacted. You don't need to do anything, Naruto-kun. Not only is my duty to help the next generation as a Jounin sensei but it's also a privilege to tutor you in Genjutsu. Naruto, though, looked like he was adamant in at least doing something. At least, allow me to buy you dinner, it's already that time after all and you must be hungry, I know I am. She giggled at the blushing in his face when his stomach betrayed him. I'd say it's fairly standard that usually it's the senior that buys the young one's dinner, though I wouldn't say no to some dengo if you insist. Kurinai replied as she casually walked with Naruto back to the village. I do, and since you're not my jounin sensei, that senior rule does not apply. Equals 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 dengo place equals equals equals. In little to no time, the nightlife in Konoha came to life as many would be seen roaming through the streets, restaurants and bars. And since Naruto didn't know a good place that sold dengo, so he followed the genjutsu specialist to a place. Along the way, the two chatted about shinobi life as well as other subjects, like Naruto's relationship with Asuma and some hardships he encountered throughout the missions. 
When they joined inside the restaurant and chose a table, Kur and I placed their orders. So tell me Naruto-kun, your teammates with Hinata-chan, aren't you? Naruto nodded with a smile as he ate the first dengo stick with much gusto. Yeah I am, do you know her, Kurunai-sensei? The Jounin held a cup of tea as she remembered the timid, white-eyed little girl. One year before your graduation, I tutored her for some time. At the time, her father didn't particularly care much for her well-being, because of her poor skills, but sadly I wasn't able to help much. Kurunai would sometimes base Hyashi's behavior on the many traumas in his life, like his wife's passing after giving birth to Hanabi and even the incident with Kumo that led to the death of his brother, but in her mind, neither of those events were valid excuses for mistreating his daughter. Yeah, I know all about how he constantly puts her down, I don't know why, though. Hinata-chan is very strong and brave. We have been training constantly together. Kurunai beamed at the news that she was doing okay. She remembered how much Hinata cared for Naruto back at the academy and was thrilled to hear Naruto's words about her. I don't know why her father treats her like this, Kurunai-sensei, even her sister is mean to her sometimes. I know that Hinata can mop the floor with Hanabi when they spar, but she always holds back and by doing so, her father treats her even worse. The down look on Naruto's face only made the Jounin smile, it was quite sweet of him to care about her little sister's well-being. Hayuga Hyashi is a strict man, indeed. I remembered hearing some very harsh words from him concerning Hinata-chan and it broke my heart to see the effect it had on her. Though, I'm quite surprised to hear she is getting better. Naruto finished his set of dango and then drank his tea while nodding at the senior Kunoichi. Oh yes, perhaps we can arrange some time for you to see her once more Kurunai-sensei, I think she will like seeing you once more. And you can see how strong she has become. Kurunai appreciated the invitation as she remembered the kind words Hinata had to say about the blonde Janan back in the day. She could see how much he cared about her and was willing to push her out of her shell, perhaps better than Kur and I ever could. Sure, it's been a long time since I last saw her, I'm glad you're helping her improve, Naruto-kun. Dinner went on after that as Naruto offered a refill since he was getting one as well. After talking about Hinata, they chatted about hobbies and like every fresh Janan out there, Naruto told her that he trained a lot, though he had a special predilection for eating ramen on occasion. Kurunai then told him about how much she enjoyed hanging out with her Jounin peers for drinks and chatting. While Naruto had yet to understand the concept, he came to know about a couple of other names that she mentioned as her friends. It turned out that one of said friend had walked inside the Dengo place at that precise minute and saw Kurunai there talking to Naruto. Mitarashi Anko was considered her friends, though she was a few years younger than the brunette Jounin. Oh hi there, Kurunai-chan, funny seeing you here. Kurunai heard Anko's voice and smiled with a wave at the woman. Hi there Anko-chan, Naruto-kun here was just treating me to some dengo. Naruto, this is Mitarashi Anko. The woman named Anko saw the QB kid sitting next to her friend and saw him nod at her in greeting. So what happened? Got tired of your Janan and decided to steal Asuma's? Kurunai only smiled at that though while Naruto just observed the conversation. Nothing like that, Anko. Naruto-kun here asked for some tips in genjutsu and he invited me here as compensation, that's all. You're welcome to join us, if you'd like. Nah, I'm good, thank you both. I was just grabbing some dengo and then going back to work, Iviki has some batch of people to interrogate and needs my help. I will just let you guys resume your little date. Kurunai sighed at that and ignored her choice of humor, while turning back to Naruto who was looking at Anko's back with a smile. She certainly reminded him of how he used to be before meeting up with the Nidime. Don't mind her, what she got you can't fix, Naruto laughed at that and shrugged his shoulders. I believed I saw her once when I used to escape from the Anbu pursuit back in the academy. She is the one who uses snakes, isn't she? Yeah, she is, but please refrain from saying that to her face. Though she uses snakes in her fighting, the mere association irks her to no end, just a tip. Naruto was curious about the comment, but not enough to ask about it. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Is there? Naruto was about to continue the conversation when both Jounin and Janan turned to see an Anbu sunshine to their table. Kurunai Yuhi and Uzumaki Naruto, Hokage-sama requests your presence right away. The Jounin stood rigid right away and nodded to the messenger before seeing the Anbu vanish. Before she could usher the Janan to follow her, he was already paying the bill and standing beside her. She nodded at him as they used sunshine to reach the Hokage's office right away. Equals 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 Hokage's office equals equals equals. The old man Sandaime Hokage was smoking his pipe while reading a report from the Anbu and medical shinobi team. 
Time was off the essence right now and he had very few shinobi he could spare to aid Kurinai in this mission that only she could perform. The Chunin exams is on the rise and his forces were stretched thin with the many preparations and precautions necessary for Konoha to house such an event. Not to mention the sudden tension that is on the rise in the elemental nations. Despite the five villages having a path of neutrality, Sarutobi Hiruzen knew never to take things for granted. As such, he would send scouts to all possible locations, disguised as missions to bring him reports. The Hokage was alerted for about less than a second, once he sensed Kurunai's and Naruto presence manifest inside his office. Hiruzen allowed himself a fond smile at seeing the blonde Janan next to the Jounin. If there was one Janan in this generation that showed the most promise was him. Ever since the wave assignment, when Asuma told him that Naruto not only learned about the cage Bunshine, but also was able to use low-level fuel in Jutsu, the Hokage was quite surprised. The surprise only increased as Naruto also displayed skill in ninjutsu and kenjutsu in the following missions. He had no doubt in his mind of this kid's drive and he couldn't be prouder. You called for us, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen nodded, being serious as he addressed the jonin in front of him. Kurunai, it's about Kurama Yakumo. Naruto saw with concern as Kurunai's eyes widened to impossible proportions and her hands were trembling. Chapter 11, Yakumo Uzumaki Naruto and Yuhi Kurunai listened calmly as the Hokage gave them the summary of what happened. Kurunai, I had received a report from the team responsible for Yakumo's safety in Satomi Hill that Yakumo has been quite unstable for some time now. Usually, when that happens, they would handle it with sleeping agents, but even that has proven to be useless. Knowing about your mission, I had ordered the Anbu team back and called for you here. I'm sure that your expertise in this manner would be able to handle it, plus based on your previous assignment, you'd know how best to handle her case, I assume. One of the Anbu reports even singled that the Kurama clan might be involved in this. That moment, a silent conversation continued between the Hokage and Kurunai that Naruto was clueless about. All he could see and perceive was Kurunai's tense shoulders, narrow lips and narrow eyebrows. Hokage-sama, I understand you calling me, but why is Naruto here? This is my responsibility, so I alone should proceed. Naruto looked at her in surprise while the Hokage simply puffed the pipe in his mouth with eyes betraying nothing. Kurunai had a stoic expression on her face and normally she would not act this rashly towards a fellow Genjutsu user and perhaps one who could have a bright future as Konoha's next generation of finest. Naruto selfishly wished to tag along, though as he thought about it, this Yakumo girl must have been a sore spot for the Jounin sensei, so he quietly understood and stood there, waiting for the Hokage's order. The Hokage stood there observing both the Jounin and the Janan. He knew what happened to Yakumo and Kurunai, so he understood her position in all of this. As he observed Naruto, though, the Hokage was surprised to see the boy as composed as he was, after being diminished by a senior officer. Naruto-kun, what are your thoughts about this? If he was surprised to even have a say in this manner, Naruto wasn't showing it. Hiruzen chuckled as Naruto's eyes went from Hiruzen to Kurunai and then to Hiruzen once more. Well, I guess Kurunai-sensei knows better and if she believes that I would get in her way, then I guess it's best if I don't go. The Jounin couldn't help but flinch in slight shame at his response, but it lasted less than a second. Though, I would want to help if I could. Hiruzen smirked at that, before Naruto bowed to Kurunai. He flinched slightly at the harsh glare she was directing his way, but he at least tried to explain. I could see how tense you became as Hokage-sama explained the situation and you've been quite helpful to me, the least I could do is help you in return. Kurunai looked stern at the blonde Janan for a good while and then she sighed in dismay. Naruto's shoulders relaxed as he saw a content smile on her face. I didn't know you're so stubborn, Naruto-kun. Naruto simply nodded at the sensei's claim, remembering the same comment from the Naidaim Hokage when Naruto sometimes trained past exhaustion. Hiruzen allowed a smile as he observed the scenery. Okay then, you can tag along, though if Sandaime Hokage is certain, then our enemies are members of the Kurama clan, not to mention Yakumo herself. They are experts in using Genjutsu as their main weapon. I promise I won't let you down, Sensei. Kurunai just smiled at the confidence exuding from the Janan. She, then, turned to the Hokage who puffed some smoke, before addressing the duo. Then, Yuhi Kurunai, and Uzumaki Naruto, I'm issuing you two a B-ranked mission with the objective of subduing Kurama Yakumo using all means necessary. Equals 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 top of the Hokage's building equals equals equals. Naruto and Kurunai had shunshined outside the Hokage's office and appeared on the building's rooftop. It was a night of full moon tonight as their hair danced to the gentle wind of fall. 
Kurenai, Naruto could tell, was silent as she looked towards the location of the Satomi Hill mansion. He observed as her mangled brunette hair dangled freely, while her eyes remained at steel like quality of a professional. Right there, Naruto could see the quality of a jounin. He had seen it in Kakashi and Asuma a couple of times and it made his chest tingle in excitement to be able to witness it firsthand. He yearned to participate in more assignments like these in the future with prominent shinobi and kunoichi just like Kurenai sensei Still, Naruto couldn't help but notice with a dread how Kurenai's hand clinched every now and then. That tension that he had seen in the Hokaye's office came full force and he couldn't help but worry. Kurenai sensei ah, is there something wrong? The Jounin turned to her Janan subordinate for this mission in slight surprise, not realizing that she was telegraphing her tension. I guess that's no harm in telling you, since you are tagging along Naruto, though this is considered a top priority secret known only to me and the Hokage, understood? She then turned to him and placed her right hand on her waist. You remember me saying that this is my responsibility, right? He nodded and she continued. A couple years ago, the Sandaime Hokage had entrusted Kurama Yakumo to me as her tutor in the shinobi arts. Being a member of the Kurama clan, it was a given that she would be at least proficient in the art. However, I later realized that she was too good, far too good to be considered a prodigy. So I one time checked to see deep within her mind. Once inside, it's when I saw it, a demonic creature with oni mask and a female dress, a sensitive and malicious creature born from Yakumo's mind, due to her story. Naruto choked at that as Kurenai continued. The image of the QB no Yoko instantly appeared in the Janan's mind. In the end, it fell onto me to stop that creature from manifesting and Sandaime ordered me to seal it permanently, or so I thought. Suddenly, the floor looked quite a sight as Kurenai found herself doubting herself. So you think that this demon is trying to take over once more? Kurenai just answered that with a yes and Naruto continued. What happened to her, sensei? Kurenai released a sad sigh but held nothing from her mission partner. Although she was considered a prodigy in the art, Yakumo was born with a frail composition. She was incapable of performing the other physical aspects of a shinobi life. So, her father at the time requested the Hokage for a special tutor, so the Hokage assigned me. I remembered that she so desperately wanted to become a kunoichi despite her shortcomings, hoping to focus only in her genjutsu ability. I tried to dissuade her from the ninja way of life. At the time, she just couldn't perform to at least the standard levels, so I refused to train her. At the time, I thought my decision was right, but looking at today, I found that I could have at least tried more. Yakumo, though, persisted despite her depression at the high expectations her family had put her through. Then, the incident occurred. What happened? One day the members of the Kurama clan ran to check on an incident at the clan's main residence, only to see the building burning and Yakumo just standing outside the house, petrified. Later, we found out that my ceiling was ineffective and that this monster inside her caused the fire. So, the Sandaime had no other choice other than that intern her in a facility and assigned a team to watch her, monitor her mental health. Of course, Yakumo has no knowledge of what happened as she went catatonic after the event. Naruto could see how saddened Kurenai became and noticed how much she cared about Yakumo to go to such lengths to even blame herself for this. I see, well why do you blame yourself for this, sensei? Sounds like you did everything you could do. True, that Naruto would push forward just as Yakumo did if someone said he couldn't do something, but Kurenai taking responsibility for this was wrong. Sandaime gave me a mission and I failed, but more than that, I failed with Yakumo. It took me quite some time to get over what happened. Still today, I don't know why Hokage-sama entrusted me with a Janan team. Now, that gave Naruto pause as he wondered the reason behind such negativity. The Janan wasn't experienced enough to empathize with her plight. He heard from both Asuma and Kakashi that not all missions will end on a positive note. There would be times when the team arrived too late, there would be times when the shinobi moved too slow to stop someone from dying, there would be times when the client withheld key information that proved the difference between living and dying. As such, simplistically and naively stating that she was wrong would be the same as not acknowledging the possibility of failure and regrets. I guess there's time then for us to remedy whatever you feel you failed, right Kurenai sensei The Jounin looked at the Janan for a while, before nodding in content. Despite the short amount of time she had interacted with him, Naruto managed to impress her, not only with his surprising well-rounded shinobi ability, but also with his maturity. Yeah, I guess we do. Equals 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 Satomi Hill Forest equals equals equals. 
It took some time for Kurunai and Naruto to cross the village and then embark through the forest that would lead them towards the Satomi Hill safe house where their target was currently located. The eerie night and gentle wind did little to ease the duo. To a Genjutsu user, such as the enemies they would face in no time, this settlement was less like a quiet forest and more like a bear trap waiting to be activated. Despite the members of the Kurama clan being composed of Chunin mostly, none of them could be underestimated. Both Kurunai and Naruto flared their chakra constantly so as to not be caught underhanded. They were also on the lookout for hidden traps that were more easily hidden at night. Kurunai could certainly attest to the Janan's experience, as she rarely needed to do anything to help him. Though, she would be remiss if she didn't converse something important beforehand about fighting against Genjutsu. Naruto, please hold on for a moment. They were jumping through the treetops and Naruto stopped as soon as his leader Jounin said so. They stood on top of the tree as they looked around for a while, before Kurunai turned to the Janan. I know you're experienced in disrupting Genjutsu, so hold on to that technique as soon as you sense the shift in chakra. While it would be more efficient to use counter Genjutsu techniques, this is too advanced to teach you right now. Naruto cursed inwardly at not advancing too much in the Genjutsu part of Toburama's scroll, since using counter Genjutsu was there indeed. Got it. Kurunai nodded and was about to order them to continue when she remembered another important aspect. Also, please bear in mind that they are still fellow Konoha shinobi, so please avoid using lethal force if possible. She was slightly surprised to see a look of surprise in his eyes. Still, she elaborated. I don't think that they will use lethal force against us, their target is Yakumo. But, Kurunai sensei, what if they attempt to kill us? True. While they were in fact fellow Konoha ninja, it's not like she trusted them to place the needs of the village above the needs of the clan. Still. Use your other skills to maim instead, Naruto. I know that a skilled Kenjutsu fighter like I expect you to know the subtitles between going for the kill and incapacitation. Kurunai's mind went to her friend Yuugao as she observed Naruto's sword. The Janan certainly had some techniques that were more complementary in nature that could be used. Certainly, this mission could provide him with tons of opportunity to use his most diversified skill set. Plus, if Kurunai was correct, then the enemy wouldn't face them directly, opting for more subtle means. Okay Kurunai sensei, I'll be careful. Please do, now let's continue. They continued forward for a while, before both dropped towards the ground, while looking around for traps and keeping in close proximity to their inner chakra. Kurunai observed as Naruto released his sword from its scabbard. When Naruto then made a step forward, he then looked down to see branches of leaves surrounding his foot and entrap him. Kurunai's feet suffered the same fate, but unlike the Jounin, Naruto felt the sudden invasion of his chakra system. The blonde quickly disrupted the chakra flow and released the Genjutsu technique, while observing the enemies. In less than a second, Kurunai used a counter Genjutsu technique and escaped the vine's construct. Her body was turned into flower petals, ensnaring the two Kurama clan Chunin. Naruto took the opportunity of their lack of attention and charged at them, just as Kurunai appeared behind him. She observed as Naruto swiftly flipped his sword to use the blunt edge of the sword and slammed them both on their side stomachs. She flinched at the aggression in his swing and the sound of the enemy's grunt and pain, before both passed out on the ground. Well, she couldn't deny it was effective and Naruto did what she asked him to do in the end. Well done, Naruto. Now please tie them up. We need to move quickly. Naruto nodded at the order and did just that, before placing a chakra suppressor seal in their foreheads for good measure. I didn't know you were into Fuwinjutsu as well? The Janan smiled at that, as he observed the sealing array spread towards their body and mind. Yeah, another side project of mine, you know. Shall we? Pushing aside the thought of a genius shinobi in the making, Kur and I nodded as they advanced towards the mansion. So far, they only had to deal with the clan's weakest. Still, there were some who actually managed to snare Naruto into a nasty hell imagery genjutsu for two seconds. The Janan was actually surprised to see his version of hell with the fox coming to attack him, before he dispelled it in enough time to protect himself against a barrage of kunai. Naruto, then, went through a sequence of hand seals, before focusing enough wind chakra on his fist. Fuuten Senpuken, Wind Release, Whirlwind Fist Technique. He slammed the wind cannon punch straight at the enemy's gut, sending him flying while spinning towards a rather thick tree. He was slammed rather hard and fell on the ground unconscious. Kurunai, meanwhile, had the upper hand against her foes using counter genjutsu and her own illusion techniques. Different from Naruto, 
she would handle her enemies without appearing to lift a finger whereas the Janan had to constantly feel out his chakra pathways. He couldn't help but blame the situation on his large chakra coils, though his extensive chakra control exercises helped some. Still, as they progressed, Naruto couldn't help but feel how far he needed to go in the yin release department. The strain in his coils was getting to him. The precision required at all times and the effort to control his immense chakra to the level required for constant genjutsu usage. At one point, Naruto had simply defended against the enemies pumping as much chakra as possible into a wind technique that blasted everyone from the ground, except Kurenai who saw it coming. Right now, they were resting for a while behind a thick tree. The mansion was already visible as Kurenai turned to see the panting Naruto on the ground. Man, who would have thought I would get tired? That's a first. Kurenai couldn't help but laugh in humor at the situation while she crossed her arms. Dangling between yin and yang release is quite the strenuous activity indeed and to control such large chakra the entire time is indeed taxing. We made good progress, though, so ease your chakra and rest. Kurenai stopped smiling when she turned towards the Satomi Hill mansion up ahead. She knew that this mission would be quite demanding and Kurenai was afraid to open up the can of worms in her strained relationship with Yakumo. She wondered what they would find once inside, the sweet but frail girl or the furious beast that she met once before the attempted sealing. So, seeing that we have some time, how can I use counter genjutsu? Kurenai snorted in derision at the question. Leave it to Naruto to consider learning something now right in the middle of a mission. I'm afraid it's too advanced for you right now, but the theory is quite simple. In essence, you must dispel the technique your enemy casted and perform a genjutsu of your own almost at the same time. It depends on the level of the technique, though. B and A ranked genjutsu techniques are quite hard to dispel not to mention perform a counter genjutsu immediately after. In fact, even I would have difficulty using counters against an A-ranked illusion. Kurenai then saw the look of introspection in the Janan's face and grunted. She wouldn't be surprised if he managed to do it in a couple of years, based on the rate he was progressing. How are you feeling? Naruto looked up from his sitting position and got up, while dusting the smear from his pants. With the theory of counter genjutsu in his mind, he closed his eyes and focused on molding chakra throughout every tenketsu inside his body, thus easing the strain. Bit better now, thank you. The two then charged towards the Satomi Hill mansion, before stopping as a giant tree emerged in their path. Both Naruto and Kurenai paused, knowing that it was a genjutsu, but the amount of chakra invading them felt way stronger than the others combined. The two then got caught in strong vines that entrapped their bodies and forbade them from using hand seals. Naruto even attempted to slice the vines with his swords, but more would simply appear and entrap him. The two looked at each other, before seeing a man come from inside the tree that appeared in front of them. Kurenai narrowed her eyebrows as she recognized this foe. Grey hair, face filled with wrinkles from old age and wearing a grey yukata and yellow pants. Kurama Unkai, the leader of the Kurama clan. The old man smirked at the recognition. Yuhi Kurenai, so the Hokage sent you once more. I did believe Hiruzen to be smart this time and send in someone else. Both Naruto and Kurenai snarled at the old man for his words. Both appeared to use brute force to escape from the binds, but failed. Oh this is so precious, please explain it to me how you are going to beat me, you are both in my world right now. Unkai then made more hand seals, before more vines grew from within the tree and charged straight at Kurenai and Naruto. Naruto, quickly use your sword on the both of us. The Janan looked at her in surprise, before remembering their only means of escape. Able to free one of his hands, he whispered a silent sorry to the sensei, before piercing her right shoulder and then his own thigh. Both flinched at the pain, but it was enough to rid them of Unkai's technique as the tree vanished. Unkai snarled at that and threw a barrage of kunai and shuriken straight at Kurenai who appeared to be the most injured from the small one's attack. Naruto, despite the injured thigh, managed to step in front of Kurenai and block the projectiles, before Unkai caught them in a genjutsu once more, just as Naruto charged with his sword. This time, he didn't allow for the vines to bind his arm and release the genjutsu, before parrying the kunai. Unkai then quickly evaded a barrage of shuriken from Kurenai. Naruto took the opportunity and went through a sequence of hand seals as he saw Unkai in mid-air. Fuuten Daitapa, Wind Release, Great Breakthrough Technique. Unkai saw the blast of wind about to skewer him and he vanished using Genjutsu. Naruto, keep on the attack, he is hidden behind that boulder to your right. The blonde Janan used a quick shunshine and focused wind on his fist to destroy the boulder, forcing Unkai to escape from his hidden location. 
the leader of the Kurama clan stood menacingly at Kurunai, before Naruto stopped in front of her once more. Why are you doing this Unkai? The old man was still in strike position with a kunai, before standing up and dropping his arms. Yakumo is a disgrace and a menace to the clan, Kurunai. You know that more than most. Naruto and Kurunai were surprised when Unkai vanished once more and Naruto closed his eyes, focusing first on disrupting the subtle genjutsu and then pinpoint the enemy's position. Naruto then looked up just as Unkai came falling down with a kunai. Well, it appears you got yourself a competent bodyguard. Naruto didn't stop and focused wind chakra through his sword and charged with speeds that surprised Unkai. He tried to block using kunai, but his weapon got sliced in half like it was nothing. When Naruto was about to slice him in half, Unkai vanished once more and managed to send a barrage of shuriken at the injured kunai, who for her turn used genjutsu as well to vanish from her position. Though, one of the shuriken ended up lodged on her arm. Before Unkai could follow up for the final blow, Naruto came barging in and landed a strong kick on Unkai's shoulder, followed by another kick to the man's chest. Unkai flinched in pain at the strong attack and snarled at the Janan, before vanishing once more. Naruto stood for a while in front of Kurunai waiting for their enemy to appear once more. Don't worry Naruto-kun, he is not here anymore. Naruto grunted at that and then turned to the down Jounin. I'm sorry sensei, he slipped from my vision and got you injured. I should have been faster in dispelling Genjutsu. Kurunai's messy ebony hair dangled in her dismissal to Naruto's self-blame and Naruto couldn't help but stare for some time at it. You needn't worry Naruto-kun, Unkai is a master in Genjutsu fighting, you actually impressed him. Now, could you do me a favor and close these wounds for me? The blonde sighed and got the first aid from his kunai holster. The jounin released the sleeve from her injured shoulder as Naruto cleaned up the injury and then passed some bandage over the wound to close. Muttering an apology at Kurunai's subtle complaint, Naruto then made a tight knot to hold it steady. He did the same with Kurunai's arm as well. Thank you, though your patching needs more work. The woman Jounin giggled at the sudden look of concern from the blonde Janan, wondering if he had made a mistake. Ha, huh, you worry too much Naruto, I was only jesting. This is the first time I did this, I was worried that I squeezed too tight. It's okay, I can handle the pain. Now, it appears the path is cleared towards the mission, so let us proceed. Equals 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 Satomi Hill Mansion equals equals equals. As soon as they stopped in front of the house, both Naruto and Kurunai were surprised when the door slowly opened up for them to enter. Naruto then looked to Kurunai and frowned at the worried stare in her eyes. Naruto, I'm sure we are about to enter the demon's lair, but we have no choice but to enter. The Janan nodded and followed the Jounin inside. As soon as they did so, the door behind them closed and the mansion all but vanished. As soon as they stepped inside the house, Naruto and Kurunai were immediately oppressed by the strong energy that invaded their bodies. Naruto found himself lost for words as he couldn't feel his chakra for the first time in his life. No doubt about it, we are in Yakumo's world right now. What now, sensei? I can't feel my chakra. Kurunai nodded at the Janan's words. This is Yakumo's ultimate genjutsu, Naruto. Right now, we are inside her world and she rules everything, even our own ability to use chakra. Our only hope right now is for us to reach her and deal with whatever is happening to her right now. Oh sensei. So nice of you to visit me again. The two suddenly tensed at the sudden haunted girly voice echoing throughout the corridors. And you brought company as well, I was hoping for us to talk alone, actually. Shame that you two will not leave this place. With nothing left in terms of defense, Naruto unleashed his sword and Kurunai alone kunai as the two wandered the dark hallways together. Considering that any room in this mansion could be a trap waiting to kill them, splitting up would be ill-advised, very ill-advised indeed, based on Kurunai's information just now. Naruto, please be careful, Yakumo's genjutsu prowess is so powerful that it could kill you. Ha, huh, how's that possible, genjutsu affects the mind and the senses into believing in something that isn't there, how can genjutsu be strong enough to kill? True, illusion targets the mind and the senses. However, Yakumo's genjutsu is so powerful that the brain is led to believe that you're in a life or death situation and react accordingly. Since we lack the usage of chakra, our mind is all we got. The news was quite startling indeed. So this is why the Hokage wanted you to deal with her, sensei. Because her power is dangerous? Yes. The Hokage wanted me dead right Kurunai sensei? Again the voice echoed throughout the haunted hallways and it appeared to come from the door to their right. When Naruto pushed it open, 
he was surprised to see that he was one step away from falling down into a pool of lava. And he would have, had Kurinai not held his shoulder at the last possible second. The unbearable heat crawled on their skin. The lava lake was so hot that bubbles appeared on the surface and even skeletons were floating freely. They knew that this was a genjutsu, but the feeling was so real it scared Naruto. He was scared to realize the sheer potency of a strong genjutsu user, and the possible damage done to his mind. Kurinai pushed Naruto back from the door and back to the hallways. Come on Kurinai sensei, what's taking you two so long to get here? I'm getting really bored waiting. This time, the hollow voice shifted to a more urgent tone. Sounds like she's truly pissed. Kurinai released a sigh at the blonde's comment. Of course she is, and your comments are not helping, Naruto. The Janan backed off at the sensei's tone and quickly apologized. Forgive me for snapping at you, just do realize that she hears everything, so avoid upsetting her until we find her. Okay. Who is he, sensei? Another life for you to ruin? Naruto didn't enjoy the hollow laughter that followed after the jab. And Kurinai wasn't much interested in playing this game for long. Yakumo, you know you can make us walk for hours on end without finding you, so let's cut the chase and show us where you are. Well, that is true, sensei. Though, I wonder if I am done playing with you too, hum, yeah, you're right. You two please step inside the double door in front of you and let us have an interesting chat. True to her guiding, the brown double door surged out of nowhere and one of the doors opened. As soon as the two entered inside, the door was then shut, before vanishing. What they saw was breathtaking. It was like they were in outer space and a lone girl stood on some hovering platform in the middle of the room surrounded by paintings. Naruto now could take a look at Yakumo's appearance. Long brown hair and light brown eyes. Her hair is straight on one side and braided on the other side. She wore a pink kimono held closed by a pink sash with two pockets on the front. The hovering paintings were also quite disturbing, one had Konoha burned to the ground, other was the Hokaye's tower being bombarded by lightning from the sky, but all the rest were of Kurinai suffering painful deaths. Do you like it sensei, when I think of you, I get so creative you know. I can think of many ways to deal with you right now and then Konoha shall be next. Naruto took a step forward but stopped when Kurinai ushered him to stop. Why involve the village, Yakumo? I alone should be enough for your revenge. Yakumo, though, merely frowned at the comment as a painting from a shocked Kurinai in full body appeared in front of her. She then took a brush from her kit and painted Kurinai's feet up to her knee. The result was instantaneous as Kurinai looked down to see her feet up to her knees vanishing. Yakumo just kept her stoic face as she observed the painting as if neither Kurinai nor Naruto was there in the room with her. I have complete control over your life or death Kurinai sensei. Kurinai appeared frantic as she focused on her now missing feet. Why are you doing this Yakumo? The girl giggled at the question, but still kept on facing the picture. You know, I was really counting on the Hokage sending you to deal with me, sensei. And now you're here with me, so now I can get the truth from you. Naruto tensed as Yakumo turned aggressively at them. I want the truth, sensei. I deserve to know the truth, the Sandaime ordered the death of my parents, right? He wanted the annihilation of the Kurama clan, didn't he? Naruto wondered about what the girl was saying, but he had kept his mouth shut. It was clear that something was not right, based on Kurinai's story when they started. The Jounin looked briefly at the Janan and nodded in appreciation at him allowing her to conduct the conversation. No Yakumo, the Sandaime Hokage had not ordered such a thing. Please stop lying, sensei. You'll vanish if you continue. To prove her point, Yakumo repeated the brush on Kurinai's knees and thighs and like before, Kurinai was now only visible from the waist up. Kurinai sensei. The beautiful ebony-haired Jounin looked at Naruto briefly and negated, before turning to Yakumo. She knew that some buttons needed to be pushed for Yakumo to truly see what was going on here. Though, at the same time, this was quite emotional for the Jounin sensei. Kurinai had too many traumas in her life growing up. Something happened without her being able to do anything about it, but the worst ones were the ones where she could have done something about it, but didn't and Yakumo was clearly in the top three. Dear sad child, if killing me will settle your suffering, then by all means go right ahead. Your hate will vanish together with your suffering. Naruto's chest clinched as the woman tried to appear strong, but couldn't hold back the tears from falling. Yakumo, though, merely observed the show and cursed her once more. What are those tears for, sensei? Well, let us continue. This time, Kurinai saw as her stomach vanished, 
leaving only half of her arms, chest area and her head. Naruto was finding hard to continue observing only and took a step forward. Stop, Naruto. The Janan then crossed eyes with the stern looking red eyes. He was at a loss right now in how to solve this manner. Please Yakumo, speak everything you have held inside your heart, focus your hatred on me. Both Naruto and Kurenai could see the brush on Yakumo's hand tremble. I heard you and the Hokage talking sensei. How you tried to kill the Kurama clan. Kurenai now looked solemn as she really wanted to approach the sad child and hold her. No Yakumo, you got it all wrong, I. Stop lying. My mother and father wouldn't die in a fire. They were murdered, plain and simple. Naruto tensed once more as only Kurenai's head remained visible. Still, the Jounin didn't bulge. The only way they would get out of this was by telling her the truth. The truth Yakumo is that it was you who killed your parents, or rather something inside you did. The girl looked incredulous at the notion and was about to finish the job, when her head started hurting. The brush fell on the ground as Yakumo squeezed her head trying to stop the unbearable pain. The sudden image of her house burning to the ground and Yakumo standing outside crying non-stop at her parents' demise. The memory was repressed, but now it came bearing down at her like a broken dam. Keep a strong mind Yakumo, you have to keep it under control. Keep what under control, I don't understand. Yakumo began to tremble until a painting fell on the ground next to her. It was completely dark, looking like dark mud, until it started to melt. Yakumo then looked at the image in the painting and froze in fear at the image of the beast dressed in the same clothes as her. Then the repressed memory of what happened appeared in her mind. She remembered it clearly now. Her parents were talking to her inside her bedroom. They wished for her to stop pressuring herself into becoming a shinobi. But, she felt that they were looking down on her, that they were really disappointed at her. Then, this creature appeared and turned to attack her parents. The fire, the fire was caused by this creature and it was all her fault. Kurenai sensei was right, she killed her parents. You're right sensei, I killed my parents. My genjutsu killed them. No, Yakumo, it was not you. Please try to listen to me. You and that monster are completely different beings. Naruto now focused on the sensei's frantic tone and he couldn't help but draw parallels once more with this girl. You're wrong sensei, this creature lives inside me. I know now what must be done, sorry Kurenai sensei for causing you so much trouble. Kurenai saw the tears escape from Yakumo's eyes and turned to Naruto. Stop her, Naruto. The Janan didn't need to be told twice and used all his chakra less agility. Yakumo had a kunai aimed at her chest hoping to kill herself and end her suffering and Naruto would make it in time, though he stopped when he saw a hand come out of the painting and hold Yakumo's. A hand that looked like hers, only bigger. Yakumo still tried to go through with it, but the hand wouldn't bulge. The creature in the painting now turned into a picture of Yakumo herself and started talking to the little girl. Why do you want to take your own life? The voice was painful and hollow as well. Only those who are responsible for this burden should perish. The creature then emerged fully from the painting and stood in front of Yakumo with its hunched back and elongated arms and oni mask. The creature then marched past the still struggling Yakumo towards Naruto and Kurenai. Naruto didn't wait long and charged with his sword. The creature then exhaled the blue flame beam at him, forcing Naruto to evade and keep on the assault. The monster's long legs managed to block his sword, so Naruto kept on attacking. He may not have his chakra, but he still had his physical skills. So, he used Kenjutsu added by Shurikenjutsu to keep the monster on the defensive. Kurenai looked worried at the Janan and then looked back at Yakumo who was still nurturing her head. Yakumo, you need to handle the monster. It came from your heart so you need to confront it yourself. But, Yakumo focused on the boy facing the monster that she created and while he was holding his own, Yakumo couldn't do anything but shake her knees. All she was focused right now was to keep standing up. Yakumo. The girl then noticed that the boy was talking to her, while facing the beast that she created. This is the first time we have met, but I may be the only one who understands you. Kurenai looked at the blonde Janan and it truly only came to her now that Naruto was indeed speaking the truth. I know what's like to have a beast inside of you. Yakumo looked at him strangely, only this time her head stopped hurting. For the longest time, I was only known for the damage and thousands of lives that my demon caused to the village. There was a time when I wanted to do the same thing you tried just now. Naruto needed to stop, because the monster was right now attacking him. I know that pretty much all of the villagers would be thrilled to see me going all the way and taking my own life. 
Despite the laced humor in his voice, Kurenai could feel the pain laced within and it saddened her. Yakumo even more so as she looked at the beast that was now attacking him. Is this true, Kurenai sensei Kurenai was saddened by the tone of the Janan and took some time to realize that Yakumo had stopped trembling and addressed her. While it was still an S-rank secret, it was perhaps the only way to convince Yakumo. Uzumaki Naruto is the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Yoko, the fox demon who attacked the village. Yakumo looked at the blonde in a completely new light at the revelation, but even more so when she saw the drive in which he battled her own monster. Like Naruto deals with the fox every day of his life, Yakumo, so can you. You need to deal with this monster you created. The Kurama heir got a sudden influx of guts at seeing a fellow demon jailer and focused her chakra into the ram seal, before grabbing the kunai on the ground and appearing in front of the monster who was trying to attack Naruto. Yakumo then slammed the kunai right in the creature's forehead, earning a scream of pain from said creature. It skidded backwards in pain as it asked why Yakumo would do such a thing. Have I not served you, I protected you from them all. Why did you do this to me? The creature's oni mask then slashed in half and dropped dead on the ground. Yakumo was sweating profusely, now looking directly at the creature responsible for her parents getting killed. She then went through a number of hand seals, before Kurenai's body returned to normal. Naruto was content as the Jounin appeared to be alright. Yakumo then limped towards Kurenai and fell down to the ground, as she remembered her frail composition. Before she could fall on the ground, Kurenai kneeled next to her and secured the pale but smiling girl in her arms. Kurenai was looking down at Yakumo with a beautiful smile and the girl was looking up in admiration. You did good, Yakumo, you defeated your darkness. Yakumo nodded and smiled as she closed her eyes and basked in her sensei's loving arms. Though, there was another person that she needed to thank as well. Thank you as well, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto merely nodded in acknowledgement as Yakumo then went straight to unconsciousness. Strangely so, one of the paintings that had Kurenai being pierced by a yellow beam melted to review the very scene Naruto was observing right now. The other paintings all fell on the ground and the room curtains opened to review the blessing light of the moon outside. Last but not least, Naruto welcomed the sudden influx of his own chakra passing through his tenketsu once more. Being without was an experience he wasn't thrilled to have at any time soon. Now it is quite clear to me, Kurenai sensei that you were wrong. The Jounin looked back at him curiously, before Naruto explained with a content smile on his face. You didn't fail Yakumo nor did you fail your mission. Naruto. There were many things in her eyes towards the Janan. Admiration and respect certainly being the top emotions she was feeling right now. But, above all else, one word was enough to express and for Naruto, it meant the world. Thank you, Naruto. Now, all we need to do is keep the clan from going after her, right? The Jounin nodded and ushered Naruto to lead the protective detail while Kurenai gently carried the unconscious Yakumo to the Hokage. He would decide the best course of action. Equals 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 a week later equals equals equals. A week has passed since Naruto and Kurenai saved Yakumo and then took her straight to the Hokage's office. It came as a surprise when the leader of the Kurama clan, Onkai was there waiting for them. Apparently, his goals were much the same as the villages, or so he made it sound. In the end, Yakumo managed to defeat her inner beast and no longer had the same problem, meaning she could go back to become a Kunoichi. And the Hokage had denied Unkai's request for Yakumo to return to the Kurama clan's grounds. Since she was now a registered Janan, she could do whatever she wanted and she was also under the Hokage's authority. In the end, Kurenai took a step forward and offered one of the rooms in her house for the girl to live, until she could find her own home. After Unkai left, Kurenai and Naruto each gave the Hokage their separate report, ending with yet another successful mission for Naruto's record. After that, Naruto had met with Kurenai on occasion to receive more tutorship in Genjutsu and even other side projects. The woman was all too eager to help him with all of his so-called side projects and she came to know there were indeed many. Asuma was in possession of a complete gold mine and he selfishly was keeping Naruto all to himself, well, not anymore. Though, she could see something more in him that made her want to see him more often. Aside from having the opportunity to watch his growth, his stellar progression and perhaps aid him in his quest, Kurenai felt herself unguarded so to speak when they interacted. It was something she only reserved for a precious few, those being her friends Anko and Yuagao. It's nice to think that she could possibly add another friend in him. Today, Naruto was taking a quiet walk towards the Hyuga compound. Hinata had asked him to come see her morning spar with her sister. Well, 
Actually she had already wanted him to come, but this was the first time her father authorized him to come. When he arrived at the gates, Naruto saw the two guards at the gates holding staffs and blocking his entrance. Beat it, these are private grounds kid. You can't come in here. Naruto looked at the one on the right who spoke. Well, it was already an improvement, considering the other words that people normally refer to him as. Hi there, yeah, I'm Hayuga Hinata's Janan teammate, Uzumaki Naruto. She invited me to come and Hayuga Hyashi-sama authorized it. The two Hayuga guards looked at one another and grunted. At least, now, Naruto knew they recognized him. You can go in, but do not wander around or else you'll suffer the consequences. Naruto resisted the urge to roll his eyes. With eyes like the Byakugan that could see through walls, Naruto wouldn't be stupid to do such a thing. One of the guards ushered him to follow as they walked towards the clan's training grounds. Naruto observed as many spars were occurring while the clan and its whole stood and observed. His blonde hair and blue eyes stood out completely and he was receiving looks of complete hatred from some and apathy from others, as if he didn't exist in the first place. Usually, Naruto would receive the latter from the general population. Later, he saw Hinata kneeling next to her grunt of a father. Her sparring partner, Hanabi, was kneeling on Hyashi's other side. Naruto decided not to bother Hinata, but he could see the saddened look in her eyes at having to do this once more and in front of the clan no less. The timid girl, for her chance, looked around, wanting to see if Naruto had arrived. All she could see, though, were white hollow eyes, long black hair and white or black robes, depending on the family branch. Her eyes suddenly looked livelier as she saw Naruto waving subtly at her, almost hidden by two Hyuga branch members. She waved back at him, before giggling once she saw Naruto being chided by the Hyuga branch member for waving at her. Naruto then grumbled and crossed his arms at being scolded for doing nothing. That interaction alone made her entire day worth it and with him here, she could allow herself to relax as she remembered the one and only request Naruto made for coming here. Of course, I will go Hinata, but promise me that you will take the spar seriously. I know you don't wish to hurt your sister, but you will be hurting her even more by taking it easy on her. At the time, she couldn't give him a confident answer. Every spar she had with her sister was practically the same. Hinata was more agile, more skilled, and certainly more experienced. Hanabi may be strong for her age and more attuned to the Hayuga's standard practice, but the only reason Hanabi appears to win every time was because Hinata would create an opening to finish the spar, but she would never go through with it for fear of hurting her. When Naruto said that, by doing so, Hinata was hurting her little sister, which gave her pause to reflect. The truth had only came once Hinata later saw her sister walking around the clan compound as if she was the clan head, mistreating everyone, demanding attention from the clan, she grew conceited and Hinata was the one to blame, by letting Hanabi win their spars, the little girl let this false fame go over her head. Well, not anymore. Hinata would shudder to think about Hanabi as a Janan out there, doing something stupid and getting killed. So, when their father ushered them to stand in line and begin their spar, Hinata stood resolutely and met her sister in the middle. Hinata couldn't help but look at Naruto from the corner of her eye and bask in his confident eyes for her. Just watch me, Naruto-kun. I'll make you proud of me. Hanabi was the one who initiated the attack as her hands glowed in blue chakra. As a firm and proud practitioner of the Jukan, Hanabi kept on the hard offensive. Though, her offense was met with a subtle defense that merely diverted Hanabi's energy away without the little kid knowing what happened. Naruto smirked immediately. Hinata was taking this seriously. Hanabi looked back at her sister who looked back sternly. Hanabi snarled and kept on the offensive. Then, the juke and back and forward began with high energy thrusts between both Hayugas. Still, Hanabi flinched at each and every thrust from her juke and strike was completely diverted by Hinata and her sister's strikes were causing internal damage. Hinata, for her part, focused on her goal to stop her sister from her way of thinking, but it was hard. It was time to finish this, before her own will falters. So, with surprising speed, Hinata diverted Hanabi's last strike and got a full view of her little sister's exposed side. She could have given a solid Jukan strike on Hanabi that would cause some serious internal damage, but Hinata chose a different venue and Naruto saw it happen. The elder sister gave Hanabi a concentrated slap at the back of her neck, sending Hanabi into the sweet realm of unconsciousness. Hinata knew that in the eyes of the clan, she should have followed through with her attack. Though, she couldn't do that to her sister. She promised Naruto that she would win the spar, so she did. She will not in any way or form willingly harm her little sister that reminds her so much of her own mother. So, 
she stood proudly for the first time in her life as she looked Hyuga Hyashi in the eye. Her father stared back, seeing his daughter's resolve in all of this, despite the clan's murmuring sounds of disapproval. After some time, Hyashi had a subtle smile on his face at seeing his daughter finally show some backbone. Though, he never opened his mouth and issued the end of today's spar, before ordering Hanabi to get attended. Hinata managed to breathe once more in relief and a proud smile was on her face, despite no one approaching to see if she was okay. Well done, Hinata. The girl didn't want anyone in the clan to come, only him. You did great, especially in the end there. I, I couldn't go through with it Naruto-kun. I know. Hinata looked at his face in surprise. But there are more ways to defeat an opponent and you did it without having to use brute force. I'm proud of you Hinata. The girl opened her mouth in awe for a while and then smiled brightly. How much she wanted to hear those words from the one she most admired. Say, you have some time right now, there is this one person I want you to see. Hinata nodded, though she wondered about whom Naruto wanted her to meet. Equals 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 training ground number 3 equals equals equals. Kurenai was currently overseeing Yakumo's training with other skills aside from Genjutsu. While Yakumo took over her problem with the beast, her overall composition was still in the way, so Yakumo would never be a close-range fighter. The best she could do right now was to provide support from long range and use her illusions. While it would be fair to assume that her career would be limited, Kurenai figured that with enough experience, the Kurama clan heir could be quite an accomplished chunin at specific assignments. Perhaps, become a Tokubutsu Jounin in Genjutsu, who knows? Still, it was a far better future than being in a mental facility. So, Kurenai would be tutoring Yakumo together with her own Janan team. So, as Yakumo focused on Shuriken and Kunai target practice, the ebony haired Jounin stood behind her with a smile on her face and her arms crossed. She then turned to the right when Naruto appeared with Hinata in tow. They appeared to be chatting amicably, and Kurenai's heart swelled at seeing the girl walk. Hinata still looked reserved somewhat but she was smiling more and her shoulders were more open, showing more confidence. So, Naruto did tell the truth. Hinata, for her part, looked up and saw Kurenai. Her content smile turned into a full-out happiness as she saw the Jounin. Kurenai sensei Hinata then turned to the smiling Naruto for a second, before she ran towards Kurenai and embraced her. Naruto was just content in seeing their encounter once more as Kurenai was busy caressing Hinata's hair and chatting with her former ward. Naruto then saw Kurenai introducing Hinata to Yakumo. Kurenai had talked to Naruto about the possibility of Yakumo flourishing more if she had a girl her age to hang around more. Both Ino and Sakura could be good choices, but their outgoing personalities would probably push Yakumo away and do more harm than good. Hinata, on the other hand, was a perfect fit for Yakumo. And they were right. Kurenai then looked up at her blonde friend for a while, before returning to their private chat. Yakumo and Hinata laughing with one another was perhaps Kurenai's favorite little song. Chapter 12, Chunin Exams Part 1 Sarutobi Asumo was relaxing with a smoke as he observed his team train. Since he returned from the capital, he had performed another quick C ranked with his team as well as a couple of D ranked here and there, much to Shikamaru's visible complaint. As Jounin Sensei of Team 10, Asuma had received the report of his Genin's activities. Shikamaru's trip with his family as well as the Yamanaka and Akimichi clans bore great fruit in terms of teamwork exercises and even some training with shadow manipulation. Hinata and Naruto had also trained a lot with Hinata staying inside her compound training with her father. Asuma had surprisingly so received high praise from Hinata's father, saying that she has improved greatly under his command. Asuma found it hard to accept the praise, considering that it was mostly Naruto who got the Hyuga heiress to where she was now. As to Naruto, Asuma had simply stopped being surprised. Asuma had known about Naruto's time with Kurenai in Genjutsu practice, going as far as to participate in a B-ranked assignment that involved one of Kurenai's students Yakumo and the Kurama clan. If that wasn't surprising enough, Naruto had even shown the bearded Jown in the beginnings of water manipulation exercise, one of his so-called side projects. While Naruto only showed him the beginning stages of Sutan manipulation, Asuma couldn't help but whistle at the speed in which this kid was growing. While true that Naruto had an affinity for water as well, using two elements in his first year of graduation placed him easily under the term of a prodigy. Not only on ninjutsu, but genjutsu, fuinjutsu and kenjutsu as well, truly Asuma wondered if the kid ever bothered sleeping. Kurenai had certainly bombarded him ever since he came back from his trip, with demands about sharing Naruto's training with her from time to time as she had finally found a genjutsu user to tutor. 
Of course, she had Yakumo for that, but the Kurama heir truly needed no tutorship in that regard. Asuma chuckled as Naruto took less than a couple minutes sparring with Shikamaru, before the lazy genius was on the ground panting for breath. Shikamaru's training trip may have helped him, but Naruto was never known for taking it easy. You're all right Shika? The frown on his face was evidence enough that he shouldn't even bother accepting to spar with his teammate. I told you it is worthless to try and face you in taijutsu. Naruto smiles as he offers a hand for Shikamaru. Nonsense, you have improved greatly Shika. I am betting you have trained a lot. Keep up the good work. Hinata quietly observed the spar as she would be next to face Naruto. She couldn't help but see the humor in Shikamaru's sounds of complaint when in the presence of Naruto's drive. Looking at her Janan superior, Hinata couldn't help but blush at her senpai's new clothes. Naruto's new attire consists of a fishnet shirt covered by dark blue short sleeve yukata and dark blue pants with yellow tied by yellow sash. Both his wrists were wrapped by bandages just like Kurinai's thighs. When the girls asked what main color he envisioned, dark blue was his immediate answer as he remembered the Nidime's clothes. After that, Hinata, Yakumo and Kurinai had helped him choose. Hinata saw how fine he was dressed in dark blue and the yellow sash matched with his golden hair. Okay Hinata, you're up, hopefully you can last longer than Shikamaru here. Both Naruto and Hinata laughed both at Asuma's comment and Shikamaru's mumbling response. Feel free to use the Jukin, Hinata. It will serve as practice against Neji when you next spar with him. Hinata smiled and fell into her fluid stance. After defeating Hanabi in their fight, Hinata had gained a boost in confidence. While never outgoing, she now went from lack of self-trust to a reserved girl that stood out for herself. And Hyashi was pleased with her growth, so he had placed Hinata to face off against the clan's branch house prodigy Hayuga Neji. Truth be told, Hinata had not considered herself ready not even remotely. Ah Neji Niazan is a year older than me Naruto-kun and a genius. I, I can't hope to defeat him. Naruto merely tisked at her comment downgrading her skills like that. Experience counts a great deal Hinata but your style of fighting compensates any lack of experience towards an older enemy. From what you said, Neji's style is not that different from Hanabi's. That rigid stance of your clan can't deal much with this style you created. So truly, Neji only has superior strength, but we had practiced many times together. Now, let's begin. Hinata noticed as Naruto dashed towards her position at high speed as her Byakugan saw the use of chakra on his limbs. Hinata had used her style and diverted Naruto's punch. The face-off causes dirt to get up from the ground. Asuma saw it and chuckled. He saw the look in Hinata's eyes spark as she sparred with Naruto. Kurinai was right. Naruto's drive to improve rubbed off on Hinata to the point that the Hayuga girl became quite the menace in close-range fighting. Hinata's hands glowed with chakra as she attempted to break Naruto's guard. Naruto was already familiar with fighting against the Jukin, so he was wary of her fingers and palm thrusts. And with her Byakugan, Hinata was able to follow Naruto's movements. Naruto is highly efficient in using chakra to his moves so her eye pinpointed exactly which limb and where her teammate would strike. Still, as the fight progressed, like she expected, Naruto increased his speed. In a way, Hinata was happy to be in this position right now. Despite her already knowing that it wouldn't take much longer for her to tire and call it quits, she could see how much she had improved by seeing how her senpai Naruto was taking her seriously in this fight. It came as a position of respect to be acknowledged by whom she considered her senior, despite being the same age. As soon as Hinata had lost her footing in dodging one of Naruto's punches, Asuma Sensei had called the end of the match just as Naruto was about to follow up with a direct hit to her stomach. Nicely done, Hinata, you sure improved with the Jukin. The girl was panting for breath, but still standing as Asuma praised her. And it appears your stamina improved as well. H, hi. Tosan has been tutoring me in the juke and more these days, Asuma chuckled at the girl still fidgeting somewhat with her fingers at his praise. All right then, Naruto, Shikamaru, Hinata, take a seat and get some rest, I have some news to tell you three. Oh troublesome, you're doing it right? You're nominating us? The bearded Jounin couldn't help but chuckle at the little genius Nara, while Hinata and Naruto were looking at each other, clueless. Well, since his Shikamaru's father is the Jonin commander, him knowing about it firsthand was no surprise. Equals 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 flashback to this morning in the Hokage's office equals equals equals. The Hokage had summoned all of the most senior Chunin and Jounin to one of the giant halls of the Hokage's administration building for an important announcement. So it has started, then. 
Kakashi stood next to Asuma and Kuranai as both his fellow Jounin nodded, both already knowing what this was about. Sarutobi Hiruzen had looked around and figured that most were present. Indeed Kakashi, now allow me to make the formal announcement, in a few days' time, the Chunin exams will begin. Now, then, in conjunction with beginning the Chunin exams, I want to hear the names of the Jinan that you wish to nominate, beginning with those in charge of the rookie Jenins, Kakashi, Asuma, Kuranai, please step forward. The three Jonin did as commanded as Hiruzen eyed them warily as per the situation required. So, are there any Jenins from your squads you wish to nominate? It goes without saying that only a Jinan who has carried out eight or more formal missions is hereby allowed to be nominated, but at least double that amount would be advisable, so let us hear you three, starting with you Kakashi. Those in the back didn't even need to hear the Jonin sensei for as they knew that nominating recently graduated Jinan was out of the question. That was certainly what Umino Iruka was thinking as he waited for Kakashi to speak. The silver-haired Jounin formed the ram hand sign and spoke with as much boredom as his apparent visage. Hatake Kakashi, Jonin sensei of Team 7 composed of Uchiha Sasuke, Inuzu Kakiba, and Haruno Sakura, I hereby nominate all three for the Chunin exams. The announcement came as a shock to everyone present, but Kuranai soon went after Kakashi. Yuhi Kuranai, Jonin sensei of Team 8 composed of Akimichi Kuji, Aburame Shino, and Yamanaka Ino, I hereby nominate all three for the Chunin exams. Iruka by this point was wondering what the hell was going on as Asuma went up last. Sarutobi Asuma, Jonin sensei of Team 10 composed of Hayuga Hinata, Nara Shikamaru, and Uzumaki Naruto, I hereby nominate all three for the Chunin exams. Immediately after the three Jounin announced their respective teams, Hiruzen simply acknowledged with a hum of his throat, while the rest of the shinobi all murmured behind them, about how strong these rookie Jinan must be to be nominated right off the bat. Of course, it was no secret at least to Hiruzen who had spoken with the three Jounin already about having these nine Jinan participate in the Chunin exams, considering that this generation was composed of clan heirs, meaning that the village could receive quite the income for missions. While it was underhanded placing green shinobi to be used like this, it was one of the Hokaye's jobs to bring in revenue for the village and he had high hopes that these three nine Jinan will surprise everyone in a positive manner. Hey, wait a minute here. Iruka had about enough of this charade, though, and stepped forward earning the Jounin's attention. What is it, Iruka? Speak your mind. The Chunin teacher gestured exasperated, showing his objection. Forgive me Hokage-sama, but I was in charge of these Jinan in the academy, I admit that they all showed advanced skills, but this is too soon for them. Kakashi, Asuma and Kuranai all looked at Iruka with apathy. Kuranai and Asuma really didn't bother much explaining their reasons, but Kakashi with his bored almost falling asleep look, decided to entertain the Chunin's pledge. I became a Chunin when I was six years younger than Sasuke is now. This is not war time, Kakashi, is it your wish to crush these kids? Kakashi wasn't bothered by Iruka's sudden outburst however. My team always complains about wanting important missions and such, so teaching them a lesson would be fun, wouldn't you say, Iruka? Crushing them would be quite fun too. The Chunin felt insulted by the insinuation. What did you say? Well, joking aside, I understand where you're coming from, however. Asuma and Kuranai turned to see Kakashi and knew that their fellow Jounin wouldn't mince words right now. Stay out of this. They are not your students anymore, they are our subordinates and is up to us and only us to define whether or not they are ready for the exams. Iruka was truly about to hurl some obscenities at Kakashi for what he said, while Kuranai and Asuma had simply sighed in dismay. Though, they knew that saying their peace of mind would at least place Iruka's mind at ease. Iruka, despite Kakashi's harsh words, he is right, they are our subordinates, Kuranai said with a smile on her face. Plus, we wouldn't be irresponsible in simply throwing them in the Chunin exams if we didn't believe that they weren't ready. Asuma then followed with his cigarette in between his teeth, before Kuranai turned to him. Though, it is quite unfair that your team has Naruto-kun in it. The bearded Jounin merely shrugged, still unable to take credit for the daily surprise. Hiruzen just observed the conversation, and it was clear that he was enjoying it. Enough everyone, Iruka, Kakashi is right. The Jenins are now their subordinates, so they are free to be nominated. The Chunin in question frowned but said nothing else. He wouldn't be pressing the issue any further. Furthermore, I don't need to stress that everyone needs to be on high alert. There are too many Jinan and Jonin from the other villages, so it's imperative to be on the lookout for any strange activity from each and every one of them. The ones present knew what the Hokage was saying and paid close attention. 
Do you have any suspicion, Hokage-sama? The village leader took a puff from his pipe and turned to Kakashi. Reports are coming still and none stand out so far, many rumors going on and many uncertainties from the other villages, so maintain complete vigilance. With that, the Hokage had dismissed everyone, especially the three Jounin to communicate their respective Janan. Equals 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 back with team 10 equals equals equals. Asuma saw the gathered team with a smile as he began his announcement for them. The sun was minutes away from setting for the day as the Janan took a seat around Asuma. As Shikamaru probably already knows, in a couple of days, Konoha will host the Chunin exams. The news came as a surprise to Naruto, since he caught up on the sudden movement from visitors inside Konoha since the beginning of this week. At the time, he had simply waved it off, figuring that there was a festival of some kind. Plus, with some missions and training underway, the blonde shinobi had other concerns. In a couple of days, Genins from other villages shall arrive to participate in an event that will demonstrate whether or not they are ready for the promotion and as of this morning, I had nominated you three as eligible to participate. The response varied after his announcement. Shikamaru mumbled, Hinata eeped in surprise and Naruto became elated at the prospect. Do you think we have what it takes to become Chunin, Sensei? It came as a surprise to Asuma that it was Naruto who asked that to him. Aside from a little more experience, the blonde Janan was already Chunin material. Still, the question brought about the other two's interest, so Asuma addressed everyone instead. If I didn't believe you three weren't capable, I wouldn't have nominated you three. We already reached the minimal mission requirement for the participation and it shall be a good experience for you three to face off after Janan from other villages. Still, Hinata was the one who still looked skeptical about herself. Well, he needed to explain to them that attending was optional, of course withholding information that if one chose not to come, then the rest of them wouldn't be able to participate. Of course, if any of you feel like you want to wait a while, participating is optional. As Asuma accepted, Hinata relaxed a little bit, but she still looked concerned while looking subtlety at her teammates for confirmation. Well, you all are free for the rest of the day and until the day of the exams and if you choose to attend, then here are the forms. After handing the forms, Asuma placed both hands on his waist. Okay now run along, think about it and see you at the exams, or not. Shikamaru was the first who yawned and bid everyone goodbye. Naruto was seen whispering some encouraging words to Hinata, who appreciated it and bid him and Asuma goodbye after that, leaving Naruto and Asuma alone. I guess I don't need to ask whether or not you want to go, huh Naruto, but please do not pressure Hinata into going if she is resistant. Naruto negated the accusation looked at the Jonin. Don't worry, I won't pressure her into going. All I said to her was that she could talk about it with either you or Kurenai sensei before deciding. But her family will pressure her into going, I'm afraid, Asuma sighed, concurring. Indeed, for a Hyuga, especially the main family, to back off from this, Hyashi would not take that lightly. Naruto shrugged in the end, this was a door that Hinata herself needed to pass herself in the end. Still, there was also something I wished to convey to you, Naruto. He looked as Asuma opened a bright smile. It's quite impressive how you had taken a position of leadership among some of your peers. Naruto looked in surprise at that and couldn't help but avert his eyes somewhat at the praise, though Naruto smiled in content. Not only to Hinata and Shikamaru, but Sakura, Kuji and Sasuke as well, from what both Kakashi and Kurenai told me. Well, I don't know about that, I mean, all I did was try to give them some pointers here and there. A chuckle escaped from Asuma's mouth at that. Don't be modest, Naruto, be proud of that. To become a Chunin, skill alone does not mean much. Being a Chunin requires experience and leadership. There will come a time when you will be pointed out squad leader for a mission and you will get to lead Genins and even other Chunin. It only dawned on Naruto now the words of wisdom he was receiving. True, the Naidime's lessons, his training on his own and with either Asuma, Kakashi or Kurenai Sensei, they had only prepared him so much. Being a squad leader, being responsible for the lives of your team, that he would only get to learn with experience and there will be times when he will make a mistake. However, Naruto had truly remarkable role models to follow. I guess I understand, Asuma-sensei, though it's quite scary now that you mention it. Asuma just hummed in approval. He would be disappointed had Naruto said something laced with arrogance. Indeed it is, as you grow, the challenges ahead of you will be harder. And with your drive to improve, I have no doubt that you will be quite an accomplished shinobi, Naruto. Going from genes alone, that was an understatement in Asuma's opinion. But then he remembered some of the beef he had with his father, 
So Asuma refrained from that line of thinking. Thank you, Asuma-sensei. Well, I can already state that I will be there, and Shikamaru will as well, he, his mother will kick him all the way to Suna if he doesn't go. See you Asuma-sensei. The bearded Jounin waved at the kid, while sharing the humor of Inara Yoshino chasing Shikamaru throughout the village and dropping him at the academy soon after. Once alone, he just lighted another cigarette and casually walked towards the hidden leaf village, while the city light slowly came to life in front of his eyes. With nothing better to do for the day, Asuma went straight to the Sarutobi compound and took it easy. Equals 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 tuning exam start equals equals equals. When the date of the exam occurred, the village was in uproar with the open gates. Many, many people flooded through the gates, visitors, vendors, customers and Janan from other villages as well, plus the Jonin responsible. As such, the hidden village and the leaves worked double in providing security for everyone. The village counted with the help of the Anbu force and the Chunin guards to investigate if the Janan and the Jonin from other villages matched with the list they had. Many of the Chunin guards were censors, as such they had the ability to scout for possible invaders, eventual shinobi or kunoichi disguised as the ones Konoha had on the list. So far, nothing out of the ordinary occurred, though. At least, nothing considering the foreigner's behavior. However, on the main road there was a skirmish with the village's troublemaker and the Sandaime's grandson Sarutobi Konohamaru and his two friends Moigi and Udon. Konohamaru was a scrawny little kid wearing yellow shirt, brown pants, a set of goggles and a long scarf. And right now, the little troublemaker was running for his life together with his friends as one Haruno Sakura was chasing them, after a comment from Konohamaru regarding her let's say front assets or lack thereof. Of course, the fiery Haruno wouldn't take the comment lightly and chased after the three. Kiba and Akamaru were with her when it happened and instead of trying to stop her from killing the Hokaye's grandson, the Inuzuka merely pointed at Sakura and laughed his ass off about the comment. Of course, before Sakura chased Konohamaru, Sakura punched Kiba hard on his stomach. Of course, with her chakra control being even higher than Naruto's, Sakura managed to pack quite the chakra-enhanced punch. Ah, she is going to kill us, crazy lady, I'm sorry. If possible, Sakura was even angrier when she heard the brat's comment. Come back here, you little creep. I'll teach you some manners. Konohamaru screamed his ass off out of fright as they saw Sakura approach them slowly but surely. Konohamaru was running while looking back to see Sakura's position, so he didn't see that he was running straight towards a Janan from Suna wearing a black hooded jumpsuit and wore paint on his face. The kid slammed into the Janan and fell on his butt on the ground. Sakura and Kiba soon appeared as they recognized the guy's Suna headband. Plus, there was a girl next to him with blonde hair tied in four pigtails, wearing light grey clothes with fishnet clothing. The guy was looking straight towards Konohamaru. That hurts, little shit. He then grabbed Konohamaru by the scarf and dragged him forcefully up in the air. The kid tried in vain to get away, but his airpipe was being squeezed. Hey, let him go, it was just an accident. Kiba was about to charge at this punk for daring to attack Konohamaru, no matter how much of a pain this kid actually was. Oi, stop that, you'll get us in trouble, Konkuro. The Sunijanan named Konkuro looked at both the blonde girl and the one that threatened him wearing a grey overcoat with a dog on his head. So you're all Konoha Janan, huh, I guess I'll just play with you too while we wait. Hey jackass, let him go this instant, let's go Akamaru. The dog barked in acknowledgement just as Kankuru smiled and threw Konohamaru towards the running Kiba. The Inuzuka, though, managed to grab Konohamaru airborne and gently placed him on the ground, before ushering the kids to run along. You'll pay for that now. Kankuru merely tisked at the empty threat while the blonde girl from Suna merely sighed in exasperation. She shrugged though as Kankuru did cause this situation. Sakura did try to stop Kiba from attacking a foreign shinobi while it was clear that they were here for the tuning exams, but she was already too late to do that. Kankuru, though, merely smirked as he swiftly used chakra strings that he used to control puppets to make Kiba slip and fall on the ground. Akamaru stopped his advance as he checked on his owner to see if Kiba was alright. Sakura, for her part, released a sigh at the scene, ignoring the Sunijanan's taunt against Kiba. So, it's this what Konoha has to offer then this tuning exams will be easy. Allow me to finish you off right here and remove you from the competition. The threat was quite clear as Kankuru unleashed what was strapped on his back. The woman next to him became worried about the situation escalating and urged him to stop, but Kankuru paid her no mind. Before Kankuro managed to release whatever technique he was about to perform, 
a small pebble of rock traveled fast straight towards his stretched hand, forcing him to abort. When everyone turned to see the direction it came from, Uchiha Sasuke was sitting on top of a tree, dangling another small rock on his hand. Immediately, Sakura relaxed somewhat, knowing that at least they had the superior numbers if something were to happen here. Still, she couldn't help but berate the Uchiha. Sasuke-kun, what took you so long to get here, you're late. The Uchiha only grunted, not bothering to acknowledge Sakura's complaint. It was already a huge boon in his life that Sakura had stopped following him around like Akamaru did to Kiba. While it couldn't be said that her teenage infatuation with the Uchiha was no more, it was now more subdued. After all, Sasuke could attest that Sakura became more motivated after the wave mission and her demanding Naruto to help train her from time to time. How about you get down from there, so that I can teach you a lesson in manners, punk? Sasuke looked at Konkuro and sneered at the empty threat. You should think better before trying to cause trouble in here. Sasuke got up from his sitting position and was about to jump down, when a smooth voice jolted Sasuke by surprise. Konkuro, stop this at once, you're an embarrassment to the village. Sasuke was so caught by surprise that he had even activated the Sharingan and reflex, before looking back to the other side of the tree he was sitting on. There, hanging upside down, was a redhead Janan with a giant gourd strapped on his back. Sasuke was completely caught off guard since he didn't even hear the intruder's footsteps. This level of stealth was close to Kakashi in his mind. Sakura and Kiba even looked surprised at the sudden appearance, though Sakura was surprised at the frightened look displayed by the two genins from Suna at this new guy's presence. Then, both the newcomer and Sasuke used Shunshine to drop to the ground at the same time, before facing each other. A complete silence ensued as Sasuke eyed this interesting foe before him while the opponent did the same to Sasuke. Sasuke could tell that this guy was the real deal and he couldn't help but compare him to Naruto, it was certainly the same feeling he had when Sasuke sparred with Naruto when they had the chance. Tell me, what's your name? The redhead had simply stared at Sasuke for a long time, and this only served to escalate the tension further. Certainly, Konkuro and the blonde lady next to him were already feeling it. Sabaku no Gara, you are very interesting as well, what's your name? The Uchiha smirked at the acknowledgement from a worthy opponent. Uchiha Sasuke, I look forward to facing you in the tuning exams. Gara just hummed in recognition, before he turned and jumped away followed by his teammates. The two ended up causing quite a spectacle for many foreign shinobi, who were perfectly hidden on top of other trees a couple meters behind them. Shinobi and Kunoichi from Iwa, Kumo, Kiri and even three shinobi wearing a headband with a musical note as a symbol. They all focused on the black-haired Janan from Konoha and the one with the gourd from Sunagakur. And they were all gunning against the Genins from Konoha in particular. If there is one village that every other village hates with a passion and for different but similar reasons was the hidden village in the leaves. This was the scene where one particular blonde shinobi wearing navy blue clothes observed from a very good vantage point on top of a building nearby. Naruto's focus lay entirely on the redhead Janan from Sunagakur as he could feel a powerful chakra inside of him the likes of which it was uncomfortably familiar. Equals 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 academy building equals equals equals. After leaving the building, Naruto went straight towards the academy building where he would join the tuning exams. As soon as he got in front of the building, Naruto was surprised to see Shikamaru and Hinata there waiting for him. The three Janan exchanged pleasantries along the way, with Naruto praising Hinata for her decision to come and laughing at Shikamaru from probably being too scared to risk telling his mother that he didn't want to attend. After that, the team went inside the building and climbed two sets of stairs, before stopping when they saw a commotion of sorts. They were supposed to head to room 301 and Shikamaru had simply sighed, wondering why these people even bothered. Naruto and Hinata chose to simply follow the genius as they had avoided the group of Janan on the second floor and went straight to the third where they would find the designated room. Of course, had they opted to stay on the second floor, they would have witnessed a standoff between Sasuke and two Konoha genins that graduated last year one of them being Hinata's cousin Hayuga Neji. As soon as Team 10 appeared in front of the room 301, they saw Asuma casually leaning on the wall, with his arms crossed, eyes closed and smoking. Well, it appears that Hinata is here, ha, huh, good. Now, you can formally attend the tuning exams. The girl in question looked at their sensei with a silent question, as Asuma chuckled. Actually, from the start, only three man squads could apply and take the exams. So you lied. Asuma smiled at Shikamaru's accusation and, well, it wasn't much of an accusation, but an assertion. Indeed, had I said it differently, either one of you could be pressured by the others to apply. 
This way, at least, by you three showing up individually, shows that you're at least in this wholeheartedly. It took Shikamaru's throat clearing to make Asuma correct himself. Well, at least Hinata and Naruto is. Naruto couldn't help but grunt at his teammates' laziness. Naruto had already shown that he could use suit and manipulation, so it would be perfectly fine for him to use the Nidime's water whip on the lazy Nara. Then, he counted 1 to 10 backwards and it passed. Still, it would be highly satisfying to do so, soon, he will, though, only once just to feel vindicated. Well, I guess it's due time you three step in there and begin, I just like to say how proud of you three I am, even Yushikamaru. Asuma saw the three smile back and then step aside as his team took their first steps towards becoming a chunin. Equals 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 room 301 equals equals equals. Once inside, Team 10 had met probably close to 200 pairs of eyes staring at them. Quickly so, the team went to the far corner of the room where they saw Team 8 standing there waiting as well. Oh Shikamaru, Naruto, you came. Kuji greeted them as he was busy eating a bag of chips. The other two boys greeted the robust Janan while Ino greeted Hinata. Shino just stood in the back, observing the group's interaction. It's great to see you Kuji, how's your family doing? Kuji responded to Naruto's question by offering him a bag of chips. They are great, Naruto. Naruto had been there together with Shikamaru once or twice. The Akimichi clan were food lovers and Naruto had quite the stomach to match the clan. Akimichi Kuza, Kuji's father, saw Naruto's performance at the food table and he bonded with the blonde Janan immediately, saying that Kuji should invite Naruto more often to the clan's food gatherings. While Naruto preferred ramen and even Kosuke's magnificent cooking, the Akimichi clan's barbecue was excellent as well. So, I guess that even you came Shikamaru. Yeah, though is quite troublesome, it would be even more to try and back out of this and explain to my mother. Kuji showed a full-out smile at that, knowing all about it. The chatting then stopped once Sasuke's team opened the door as well and once again, everyone turned to see the new opposition. Ino stopped chatting with Hinata and hugged Sasuke from behind, earning Sakura's ire at the Yamanaka's forwardness, while Kiba ignored them and greeted the other Janan, namely Naruto, Shikamaru, and Kuji. It's been a long time ago, but these four would get together in this very academy and skip school together. While it's been a long time, Naruto found himself reminiscing on those days while the four chatted amicably. While they chatted, a grey-haired man with a short ponytail, a Konoha Janan, approached the nine rookie Janan. He wore long blue pants, a grey shirt beneath a dark blue jean vest and glasses. This stranger fell into Naruto's senses immediately, though the blonde couldn't feel a strong chakra capacity, meaning that either he was truly a low-level Janan or he was controlling his chakra to a point that he was able to trick a censor shinobi. Hey there, you should be a little quieter and learn to read the atmosphere. You all are rookie Janan, aren't you, good grief. Ino was the one who took offense to the man's talking. Well and who are you, talking like you know us? The grown-up Janan adjusted his glasses and opened a haughty smile at them. I'm Yakashi Kabuto and please take a good look around you. As an answer to his cue, the rookie Janan looked around and once more caught the eyes and stares of everyone in the room focused solely on them. Everyone around here is quite tense because of the exams, so I wouldn't push it if I were you. Just a heads up from a fellow shinobi of the leaf. Like Kabuto expected, the rookie Janan at least stopped conversing as if this was a school field trip and stopped talking, though Naruto was still wary of this guy. Now, I guess that with you being rookies and all, a few pointers would help you all. Ah Kabuto-san, so is this your second time in the tuning exams? Sakura looked quite eager to know more about what was going on. Well, it's my seventh time overall. The rookies had different responses to that. Kiba mocked him for being a low-level Janan, Sasuke just dismissed this guy's info considering it all, Shikamaru considered the exam even more troublesome if it took someone seven tries and still failed. However, Naruto right there caught a minuscule shift in his man's chakra as soon as he said it. Something was not right here, though he couldn't tell what. So, I guess that most of you already know a bit or two about these exams and the relations between villages, so I won't bother going into detail. But, I could provide help for you guys to know what you may be up against. Kabuto then reached inside his pocket and picked up a deck of cards. Throughout my experience, I have gathered information about all of the Janan here, including you nine. What are those? Naruto asked as he could feel the intricacies of Fuenjutsu on these cards, getting his interest. Oh these are ninja info cards, these cards react to my chakra, so only when I pass my chakra through it, the card reveals the shinobi, any shinobi here's stats. 
Kabuto then began to flip the cards one by one and pass chakra through, showing images of some of the shinobi in this room. So, any of you wish to know about anyone here? The rookie Janan were all silent as none of them had any names they wished to pass on to Kabuto. Only Sasuke had a few names to check. What can you tell about Sabaku no Gara from the sand and Uzumaki Naruto from the leaf? Sasuke's mention of Naruto was met with incredulity from the rest, though Naruto couldn't help but sigh at the rivalry that the Uchiha pursued with him. While Naruto enjoyed sparring with Sasuke's Sharingan every now and then, he wasn't too thrilled to deal with Sasuke's drive to defeat him every chance he got. Still, it would be at least revealing to Naruto just what sort of information this Kabuto had on him to confirm if this guy is legit or not. A side look at Shikamaru made Naruto aware that his teammate was also suspicious of this guy. Wow, interested in knowing one of your own, well, in here we're all enemies, so I can't fault you for that, let's see, first Sabaku no Gara. Kabuto then placed the card on the ground and passed chakra through it, revealing a very intricate chart with mission records, teammates, Jounin Sensei and even a chart with the shinobi's main abilities. Well, he is a foreign shinobi, so records about him are quite scarce mainly about his abilities. Teammates are Sabaku no Konkuro and Sabaku no Tamari, well, so they are siblings. Mission record is 1C ranked and WoW 8B ranked and he came by unscathed in all of them. A tough opponent indeed. Though, only the Jinan elite from each village comes here, after all. The news was registered by Sasuke and even Naruto who remembered the feeling he had when he looked at the Suna Jinan from this morning. Well, now, Uzumaki Naruto. When Kabuto was about to review Naruto's stats, a kunai drenched with wind chakra charged and stuck the card on the ground, slicing it cleanly in half before Kabuto could even read it. Naruto's rapid action surprised the rookie Janan and even the rest who were busy observing the scene. This very moment, the team from Suna all looked at the blonde in attention, as all three noticed the usage of wind chakra and pinpoint accuracy. Hayuga Neji, Hinata's cousin, focused on Naruto and remembered him as his cousin's teammate. Neji remembered seeing Naruto on occasion inside their compound, but he hardly ever interacted with the rookie Janan. Though, now, he found himself focusing on him more now. Sorry there, Kabuto-san, but I don't feel comfortable with you announcing to everyone here just what I can do. I hope you understand that and sorry for ruining your cards there. It was bad enough that this guy had such an info that should have been safely stored inside the Hokaye's administration building. Kabuto appeared surprised for a while, but then relented with a flat smile. I understand Naruto-san, my apologies and you're right, forgive me. Naruto's actions alone brought about loud murmuring as each and every shinobi in this room looked at whom they considered an opposition. Many strong shinobi and kunoichi spiked their chakra as they stared at each other. Sasuke, Neji, Gara, Naruto, Neji and many others did the same. The rest couldn't help but sweat profusely at the high tension that suddenly enveloped the entire classroom. Ino couldn't help but cower slightly at the feeling while she looked at Sakura and Hinata, wondering if they felt the same way. Though, she was surprised to see the two girls matching what the others were doing. Ino looked at both their focus visages and realized how further than her Sakura and Hinata were. The tension stopped when a huge smoke enveloped the room from up front, before many Konoha Chunin appeared with the same uniform and one man leading them, with a black trench coat and face full of deep scars. Quiet down, everyone this instant. This was enough for everyone to stop flaring their chakra as the Jonin instructor named Morino Aviki showed a full-out deranged smile. I deeply apologize for keeping you waiting, I'm Morino Aviki and shall be the proctor of the first exam. And before I begin with the rules, I will state right now, there will be battles or fights without the permission of the proctors. This time, Aviki even flared his own chakra, increasing his killing intent as he intoned. For those who believe they can try their luck right now, well, you shall deal with me personally. That alone managed to get everyone's attention, before Aviki continued. Now, hand in your applications and take a seat under the numbers I shall hand to each of you. After that, we shall begin the written test. A few murmured about the absurdity of having a written exam, but did as demanded. Naruto observed that the proctors gave random numbers to the same Janan team, which meant that he would be seated far from his teammates. It turned out that he was then seated next to Sasuke as the Uchiha kept glaring at him probably because Naruto kept him from knowing more about his skills. So, Naruto sighed and turned to ignore the glare from his comrade in favor of paying attention to Iviki while the other Chunin handed the test to everyone. In no time, Iviki stood alone in front of the classroom while the Chunin took chairs close to the room walls. Now hear me out, 
because I will only say it once, there are several important rules to this first test. Iviki started, still with his killing intent high, keeping up the tension in the air. You all are given 10 points right from the start. The written test has 10 problems to solve, with 1 point each. And this test is a point deduction system. You are deducted 1 point for each problem you get wrong. If you get 3 wrong, you'll have 7 points. Now, pass or failure will be determined by the total points of the three-person teams. At this point, everyone realized precisely why this exam needed to be taken in teams. If one failed, then the others would fail as well. Now, shut up everyone because this is important. Those who are deemed by the Sentinels as having committed an act of cheating or something similar to that will have two points deducted for each act. It was at this point that these Janan began to know about the sadist known as Moreno Aviki. As some of you might have guessed, yes, there may be those who will be dismissed during the test without waiting for the test grading. Iviki now smiled just like the Chunin who were seated close to the Janan. If you all aspire to become a Chunin at all, then know that Shinobi should act like exemplary Shinobi. Oh and if one of the members of the team gets zero points, then the entire team is disqualified. Like Iviki expected and thrived off, the entire class shuddered at the rules. Well, Iviki's chakra flaring didn't make things any easy. The last problem will be given 45 minutes after the start of the test. So this test is to be finished in one hour flat, no exceptions. Begin. The noise of pages turning in dead silence met the room as the Janan looked at the questions. Five minutes later after reading all of the questions, it became clear that this system was beyond sadistic. The questions were quite complex and not many in this room would manage to answer it correctly. Still, the rules were quite clear in Naruto's mind. He began with 10 points and only needed to not score zero in this test. He knew Shikamaru would ace this thing without the need to work up a sweat and Hinata was quite smart as well. Naruto had more battle brains, but he figured that he could at least provide answers to three questions, maybe four. What intrigued him, however, was the notion that he would only get a two-point deduction for being caught cheating. So that alone was surprising, considering that when he was caught by Iruka Sensei once, the Chunin kicked him out immediately afterward. So this exam encourages cheating and that's what that Aviki guy said about acting as an exemplary shinobi, this is an information gathering mission, the likes of which Kurenai Sensei often talked about. Quickly going about writing the answers he knew, Naruto then placed the pencil down as he observed the classroom around him. He observed the Chunin around the classroom and even the Jonin Aviki up front, looking around. Each of the Chunin had a pencil and paper as well probably to write down the Janan who were caught cheating. And if one gets caught five times, then they are out. True to his guess, the Chunin next to him scribbled something on his paper. So the goal here may not be the questions itself, but cheating without getting caught. Like Naruto came to this conclusion, many of the others did so as well. Gara commanded his sand to make an artificial chakra eye to check on who had the answers. Kiba's dog Akamaru barked the answers to Kiba. Shino's bugs did the same. Sakura and Shikamaru were perhaps the only two who didn't need to cheat as they answered all of the questions. Ino saw Shikamaru doing so and used her signature clan technique on the lazy Nara to take possession of him to check on Shikamaru's answers, before answering her own, before turning to Kuji and doing the same, taking control of his body to answer for him. They were even those who had to rely on creativity like Neji's teammate Ten Ten, a twin bun-haired girl wearing Chinese-style clothing who did so using mirrors to see Shino's answers. She had even managed to help her teammate Rock Lee, a bowl-haired Janan with green leotard clothing. Throughout the test, the Chunin Sentinels announced the numbers of Janan who were caught cheating five times as these Janan along with their teams were getting kicked out. Both Neji and Sasuke got the same idea with their respective dojutsu, with Neji looking past one who was answering all of the questions with his Byakugan. Sasuke with his Sharingan copied the same man's movements. Naruto noticed Sasuke doing so and turned to look at the Chunin next to him, fully focused on him. Going through the skills he had at this point, Naruto realized that he was rather limited right now. No ninjutsu would help him and few ninjutsu wouldn't help either. That only left genjutsu to use and a smirk soon appeared on his face, before Naruto focused on the ram signal straight towards the Chunin who was looking at him. The Chunin looked to see what the blonde would do, but he just stood there looking at his test doing nothing. Little did he know that the Naruto he was observing was truly the false surroundings technique. The Naruto he was looking at was not the real one. The real one was peeking at Sasuke's test and following Sasuke's writing speed flawlessly. Being adept at Fuenjutsu, Naruto needed to have a good enough calligraphy and fast enough to write the seals in the midst of battle. As such, 
it came easy for him to follow Sasuke's answers, before both finished at the same time. The Chunin in question widened his eyes as the real Naruto appeared in front of him, with his arms crossed instead of just focusing on his test holding the pencil. While he knew that this kid did something, he couldn't know what. Alright, I think we almost finished shaking off the losers. Iviki's sudden voice made everyone focus on him and then looked around to see 40 perhaps 50 seats from the approximately 200 Chunin candidates. Now, it's time for the 10th question. Everyone tensed as Iviki once more flared his chakra for effect. Before I give the 10th question, however, you guys will have to choose whether or not you will take the 10th question. If you choose not to take the 10th question, then your score will be zero, thus you and your team will be eliminated. Of course, the natural course of action would be to take the question. But herein lies the genius of Aviki's madness and precisely why the man was considered on Boo's lead of torture and interrogation in Konoha. However, if you choose to take the 10th question and fail. Iviki had paused, keeping up the tension to everyone, including the most experienced. Such is the psychological power this guy possessed. Then you relinquish the right of taking the Chunin exams forever. Hey, what the hell? What kind of rule is that, there are tons of Janan here who have taken the exams before. Iviki couldn't help but chuckle at Kiba's tantrum. He laughed and laughed hard, before spiking his killing intent making Kiba buckle under the pressure. I guess you're just unlucky then kid, it is I who make the rules this year. But I did give you all the options. If you decide not to risk your ninja career, then you can simply not take it and try again next time. Take the 10th question and fail, and you shall remain a Janan for life. Iviki had even chuckled evilly once more as he basked at the feeling of the terrified looks in front of him. Now, before I give the 10th question, I need you to raise your hands if you wish to forfeit. Those who stay put will then receive the question. Naruto observed as one by one, random Janan left and right raised their hands choosing not to endanger their careers. If he was true to himself, he was in a perilous situation right now. These questions were tough to answer and if the 10th question is too hard for him to take it, then he would be a Janan for life. But if he decided to quit right now, then they would have to leave as well. Well, it somewhat eased his mind at the thought that should he take it, he wouldn't be damaging their careers. Worst came to worst, only he would suffer the penalties, so he came with the resolve to stay and answer. In the end, no matter his ranking, Naruto will always strive to become stronger as the Nidime's legacy. And he couldn't picture his role model taking a different decision. The rest of the rookie Janan knew about the odds and remained in their resolve to stay and answer it as well. Iviki remained quiet as he could still see some raising his hands and quitting, until only 51 Janan remained. Morino Iviki smirked, knowing that his mission was accomplished. He received the acknowledgement of the Chunin and then addressed the classroom, now quite empty. Well, then, I like your determination. Now, for those who stayed, you pass. Five seconds passed and most Janan simply stopped breathing, their brains had simply stopped working for a while. Certainly, Shikamaru cursed this man even more than his own mother. Even if he was a genius, Shikamaru could very well get a question that he couldn't answer and he stays Janan for life and doing the same chores over and over again was way too troublesome. Naruto for his part allowed himself time to breathe properly. He wouldn't want to meet this guy anytime soon after this. Hold on, what are you talking about, what's the 10th question? This time, Iviki had stopped flaring his chakra and transformed from the sadist interrogator to a completely different person, smiling broadly at the question. Well, you can look at the choice you had to make as the 10th question. This test's objective above all else started with your ability to gather information. It was never about the questions itself, so no one will be grading your answers here. As to the 10th question, well, it was indeed an unfair question. It was to test your resolve as future tuning. There will be missions where you won't know what will happen to either you or your teammates. What do you do then, decide to flee to save your life or go through it knowing you could walk into a death trap? The lesson was then clear to everyone as Aviki finished. Showing your courage to your teammates in a tight spot and the ability to get through the hardships is the qualities of tuning captain. Naruto observed this man intently and he saw many of Toburama's qualities in Iviki. Despite Toburama's methods to inspire fear were more physical, Iviki's was by no means less effective, and his heart is on the right path. Iviki then turned to the window just as a black ball came barging inside. The man observed the window shards headed for the opposition, before his vision became impaired as the black ball turned to be a black flag the assailant opened with two kunai thrown upwards that stuck on the roof before Mitarashianko emerged with such grace that baffled everyone. Naruto remembered the woman from the Dengo place and couldn't help but smile at the theatrics. 
there is no time to celebrate yet maggots. I'm the proctor of the second exam, Mitarashi Anko. Follow me. Iviki then appeared behind the flag containing Anko's name written in white. You're late again, Anko. The woman in question deflated at her superior, before looking at the number of Janan still present. Oh, only 51, you weren't kidding around huh Iviki? You expected something different? Ha, huh, I guess not, Anko concluded, before turning to the class once more. Well, then, all right, I'll drop more than half of these losers in the second exam, Anko said was with a smirk that promised a great level of pain. So, the details regarding location and time will be handed to your Joni and we shall meet tomorrow. Everyone is dismissed. Chapter 13, Chunin Exams Part 2 As instructed by Anko, Naruto and his team had met with Asuma after the exam and received the location of where to be for the second exam. The bearded Jounin had then congratulated his team on passing the first barrier. Since Asuma couldn't tell much about the second part, the only thing he could say was a pep talk about trusting each other and acting as a team. After their brief encounter, to which Asuma had left saying he needed to meet the Hokage for something, Naruto then received an invitation by Kurenai to join her, Hinata and Yakumo for dinner in her house. Shikamaru was invited as well, but like Kurenai's own team, he preferred to go home and rest for tomorrow. So, after stocking up on some general supplies through the swift use of Genjutsu, Naruto had knocked on Kurenai's door for the first time. Her apartment was just one of the many similar two-room apartments in a building reserved for Shinobi. Though, as he stepped on the floor of her apartment, Naruto couldn't help but compare with his own building. The hallway only had one light and it barely worked, probably due to poor maintenance. Well, perhaps her home is better looking than this. No sooner had he knocked, Kurenai had already opened the door, inviting him inside. The Jounin sensei's casual clothes were composed of short beige pants barely covering her knees, long black shirt worn beneath a loose red fabric. Ah welcome Naruto-kun, we were having a bet to see if you would be late, come in, come in. Naruto greeted the sensei with a wave as he got inside the apartment and like he guessed, it was way better than the creepy hallway. Hi Kurenai sensei, I just wanted to stock up on supplies for the second part tomorrow. Is he not a here already? The sensei ushered him inside before closing the door behind him. Yes, she is helping me and Yakumo prepare dinner, please make yourself at home, Naruto-kun. Dinner will be right up. The Janan acknowledged the hospitality and observed as the sensei went back to the kitchen. As soon as Naruto took a seat on her couch, Hinata's neck surged through the kitchen door as she saw her senpai take a seat by Kurenai's couch. Good evening Naruto-kun, you came. Naruto was busy looking around the living room and even peeking on some of Kurenai's library when he looked at Hinata. Oh hi Hinata, yeah, sorry I took so long, just that I needed to restock some. The reserved Hyuga simply acknowledged with a fond smile as she took a seat on the chair opposite the couch where Naruto was sitting. You don't need to apologize Naruto-kun, you're right on time. So, what did you buy? Anything I should get as well? Naruto chuckled as Hinata placed her hands on her knees while sitting. While she had evolved from her shyness, it was still there. Well, Asuma Sensei was of course quite vague about the exams tomorrow, so I just bought the usual, Shuriken, Kunai, Fuinjutsu kit, plus some general supplies. Did Kurenai Sensei say something about it? Now why would I do that Naruto-kun, that would be cheating, wouldn't it? Kurenai walked in the living room carrying the dinner trays together with Yakumo, who for her turn greeted Naruto and Naruto greeted back, before smirking towards the Sensei. Yeah, it would, though if you said anything, it would be to your team, not us. Kurenai and the rest laughed at his comment. Plus, Anko-san happens to be your best friend, so clearly you would know something. Yakumo and Hinata just looked at each other and smiled as Naruto and Kurenai talked to each other. The Jounin, for her part, ushered everyone to take a sit by the table, while addressing Naruto. Forget it Naruto-kun, Anko is tight-lipped about it and even if she did, I would never betray her trust with this. Now, dig up everyone. The three Janan did as instructed as the four occupants chatted amicably with each other, about a great range of topics. Most of them were about the first test and how Naruto and Hinata had managed to survive Morino Iviki's psychological warfare disguised in a 10-question written test. While Hinata using Byakugan was pretty much guessed by Kurenai and Yakumo, both illusion users were surprised when Naruto said that he used the very craft to get by. It came as a surprise to Hinata as well since the team had yet to talk much about what each did to pass by, though Hinata knew that Shikamaru was too much of a genius to need any kind of subterfuge. You used Genjutsu, 
Naruto-kun? How interesting, tell us. Naruto nodded at Kurnai's ponder as he turned to Yakumo and Hinata. Well, yeah, I'll admit I was stuck otherwise. Many of the skills I have are more battle-oriented. Elemental ninjutsu would be useless, any wind jutsu would simply blow all of the tests on the ground, including mine. So, I saw that one of the chunin was focusing on me the entire time. That gave me the opportunity to disrupt his senses so to speak, make him see me doing something else other than checking on Sasuke's answers, who by the way was using his Sharingan to copy the answers from someone else. To Hinata, the concept was still foreign, but Yakumo and Kurinai both nodded in acknowledgement, knowing what the blonde Janan did. The Jounin sensei finished gathering the plates from the table with everyone's help. I can see you improved then, when you first showed it to me, you couldn't maintain the illusion for more than half a minute. Naruto scratched the back of his head in acknowledgement of his limit. His fast scribbling based on few Jutsu did the rest. Yeah, I had that time frame window to write as many answers as possible, before the illusion faded, Kurinai chuckled at that. Well, good work. Now stay put you three, I will bring us some tea for the night. Naruto then hung out with Yakumo and Hinata. Naruto, then, turned to the Kurama heir. So Yakumo, why didn't you apply for the exams? I wanted to, but there was no team with a third member short. Naruto and Hinata observed as Kurinai came and gave everyone some herbal tea. I had already placed my name to Hokage-sama for the next exams, though. Perhaps, one of the Janan from your classroom can be promoted and that would open a spot for me to join. Though, I wouldn't be surprised if you were promoted Naruto. The sudden praise was met with surprise by the blonde Janan, though no one, Hinata, Kurinai or even Yakumo, had much doubt that Naruto had enough skill to be eligible for the promotion, if his team passes the second and third steps of the exams, that is. Naruto then remembered his talk with Asuma and how he was viewed by his peers. He also saw recognition from Kurinai's tender eyes at him, though the Jounin recognized doubt in Naruto's. As the night progressed, Hinata and Yakumo shifted to their own conversation, so Naruto and Kurinai turned to talk to each other. Is there something you wish to ask, Naruto-kun? The look of doubt became transparent once more and someone with a keen eye for details picked up immediately. Naruto had lots of secrets in his life, but he could at least be open about his concerns, just like he had with Asuma before the exams. Just wondering about what Yakumo said about me having what it takes to be a chunin. Kurinai nodded as she crossed her legs with an open posture while holding her cup of tea. Asuma-sensei had explained that a chunin are squad leaders, being responsible for the lives of my team. I only wonder if I truly have what it takes, you know. The Jounin did remember the time when she had this conversation, when she was in Naruto's position. Even now, being a recently promoted Jounin, she constantly feels the weight of leading her Janan team and sometimes having to choose between the safety of her team, which is a must, and finishing the mission. Now looking at him, Kurinai could offer some encouragement moving forward. Though like Asuma, she had faith that Naruto would do just fine. I see, well, truly it's something to ponder about as we all move forward. Naruto was looking down and then focused on his senior for her words of wisdom. Moving from Janan to Chunin is not only about skill as I trust Asuma had explained to you. And being a leader is quite a complex skill to develop. It's bad enough that we have to figure this out in the middle of a mission though I don't believe that the Hokage would give you a mission above C rank to lead right off the bat. Naruto looked uncertain still and Kurinai smiled at it. Everything is going to be okay Naruto, being a leader above all is to have the respect of those who follow you. And I can see as everyone does that your peers respect you. You always go out of your way to help most of them and look how much you helped both Hinata and Yakumo already. Even Sakura and Sasuke from what I hear from Kakashi. Kurinai was now more thrilled to see the light coming back from Naruto's light cerulean eyes at her words and she realized to herself that she enjoyed seeing the gleam in his eyes. Such drive added by such an exponential growth is quite rare to see. It only made her all the more excited to just sit back and observe his growth as a shinobi and now as a person. Thank you, Kurinai-sensei. Her smile was so exuberant that he couldn't help but confide with her and perhaps even open up fully to her about everything in the future. For now, the focus shall be on passing the exams, but should you receive the promotion, your growth will rise exponentially. And us Jounin Sensei will always be here for you to talk to, if need be. Yeah, it's no use worrying about something while the exams are still in play. And I appreciate the help, Kurinai Sensei, truly. I just hope that I can help you as well, someday. Once more, he surprised her with that tenacity of his. It was a Jounin's obligation to help the next generation of Shinobi. But above all else, 
for her especially, it was considered a privilege to have this opportunity. Plus, she could see how attentive he was to her every word, not only in genjutsu training, but also when she offered her wisdom in personal matters. Throughout our lives, there will be situations when I will help you Naruto-kun and in others, you will help me. Work hard, become a chunin and, who knows, perhaps we can go together on missions in the future and we can have each other's backs. The thought became so vivid that Naruto was engrossed in imagining them fighting side by side just like they did when they rescued Yakumo. I certainly look forward to when this day arrives, Kurenai-sensei. The comment brought about a comfortable nod from the sensei, knowing, or rather hoping, that Naruto will keep surprising her every time. Soon, Naruto and Hinata said their goodbye, since they needed to rest for tomorrow. He then walked together with Hinata towards the Hyuga compound and then to his house. Equals 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 next day equals equals equals. The next day, the 17 Janan teams were gathered around in a clearing while waiting for the second exam Proctor Mitarashianko to explain this part. The woman, with her beige overcoat, just stood there with her arms crossed while observing everyone, talking with each other. She could feel, though, the general mood and shivered in anticipation for what was to come soon for them. The fact that neither of them even knew what awaits brought a sense of excitement that made her tingle all over. The thought of the perils, the pain, the hardship that these poor souls will suffer soon enough, after the start of the exam. The woman was exuding such a bloodthirsty aura that for those who knew her, began to shiver at the sight of the woman practically salivating. True enough, the chunin that aided her with the exam knew about her reputation and couldn't help but take an unconscious step back. Okay everyone, gather around, because I won't be repeating myself here. Her announcement brought everyone's attention, before Anko uncrossed her arms and placed her hands on her waist. As you know, this is the site of the second exam, training field number 44. The woman was a fan of the theatrics and the suspense, so she just smiled mischievously at everyone, before finishing. Also known as the Forest of Death. The wind picked up and all the Janan stood at attention as they now took a good look at the huge forest that began just behind the fences. Just by seeing the tall trees and the fact that the tree's roots alone toppled the fence, brought great shivers to the uninitiated. The Janan could see the warning signs of do not enter all over the fences, filled with giant locks. Plus, the fact that giant centipedes and snakes could be seen crawling around the tree logs feasting on the unsuspected prey sufficed for an explanation. The sense of dread was clear to everyone and only a fool would not heed the warnings in this place. Before we start, though, there's something important I must pass out to you all. Anko then reached inside her overcoat and pulled a pile of written papers. This is a consent form, before you can take part in the test, you all have to sign this. Consent forms, what for? Anko turned to see Kakashi's Janan Kiba asking and smirked. Well, from here on out, corpses are going to come out, from here on out, there is the possibility of you guys dying, so that would be on my responsibility. I can't have that, you know, so you will need to sign, waving Konoha of the responsibility. The fact that Anko started laughing after that was even more scary and Naruto was starting to wonder which psycho was the worst, Anko or Aviki. The beige overcoat Kunoichi may be friends with Kurenai sensei but Naruto knew bits and pieces about the woman who played with snakes, needless to say, he never wanted to be on her bad side. Not her nor Aviki for that matter. As the consent forms were passed along by the Janan, which needed to be signed and delivered to the Chunin in the tent next to Anko, the proctor now began the real explanation. Okay then, now I shall explain, in a word, the limits of your survival will be challenged. First, allow me to explain about the terrain. Anko then opened up a map. Training field 44 is surrounded by 44 locked entrance gates, there is a river and a forest and a tower in the middle of the field. The distance to the tower is about 10 kilometers from the gates. In this confined area, you will go through a certain survival program. In other words, pretty much anything goes beyond these gates, a scroll battle. Once more, the shiver returned as the Janan looked at each other, most of them knowing what that meant. Permission to kill. Essentially, I want you to fight for two scrolls, the Heaven Scroll and the Earth Scroll. There are 17 teams here, so 9 teams shall receive the Heaven Scroll and 8 will receive the Earth Scroll. The objective, as you may have figured out, is for the Janan team to reach the tower, but the team will only pass if they manage to bring in both scrolls. In essence, it's expected that at least half of the Janan teams will fail or even worse. Shikamaru had to release a sigh, wondering if it's still time to make a quick getaway in cloud gaze. One more thing, there is a time limit to this exam. Once more, Shikamaru sighed. Of course, there is a time limit, troublesome. For this second exam, 
the time limit shall be 120 hours. You all will have precisely five days to reach the tower. At this, both Eno and Kuji protested, of course, for different reasons. Five days? What do we do about food? Anko merely smiled at that. Well, this is a forest filled with flora and fauna of various species. You can all hunt and drink, this is a survival course. There are plenty of animals in there for you all to hunt if needed, though sometimes the animals and even some plants may see you all as prey, so I would threat carefully if I were you, or not. Kuji and Ino both shivered as the woman showed quite the devious smile. Now, all there is to explain are the rules for qualification. First, like I said before, the team must all reach the tower within the time frame. If one or two members are injured or dead, then the team fails. Also, absolutely do not look at the contents of the scrolls at least until you have reached the tower. So, please do not try to find out, I'm serious here. There are times when a chunin must deal with super-secret text. It serves to test your reliability. There were a few murmurs amongst the Janan as they heard the explanation. Okay, that's enough for the explanations. All it's left is to exchange the consent forms with the scroll your team will receive. So, go to that tent over there and do that. After that, you are to reach the designated gate. The Janan had a 10-minute break to go over the consent forms while the Chunin organized the tent to initiate the exam. Naruto, Shikamaru and Hinata had all chosen different spots to go over the terms of the consent form, but most of what Anko had explained was already in there, so the time was mostly spent in making the conscious choice of going forward with it despite the warnings and risks. After that, the teams went inside the tent one by one, until all of the teams received their respective scrolls. All that was left was to go to the designated gate and start the exam. Equals 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 training ground 44 equals equals equals. No sooner had the gates opened, Naruto, Hinata and Shikamaru quickly ran inside the forest of death and stopped before running for five minutes and finding a secure location for planning purposes. They had found a tall enough tree which roots grew above the ground, allowing them to crawl inside. The team got the earth scroll, which meant that they needed to find the heaven scroll and then march straight to the tower. Right now, Hinata was activating her Byakugan in short intervals for threats and Naruto was abusing his sensor capabilities for both enemy teams and dangerous fauna and flora in this place. A few minutes ago, the team had passed a giant snake feasting itself with some rabbits. This snake was large enough to eat them if it wanted to, so, neither of them could afford to relax. Okay then Shikamaru, it's time for you to shine here. What's the plan? The Nara's eyebrow twitched at his blonde friend. Why do I have to come up with a strategy? here? This time, Naruto's eyebrow twitched, but he did respond with patience. Oh I don't know, perhaps it's because you had already come up with dozens of possible scenarios in your head about how to proceed. You're the team strategist Shika, I don't think I need to stress that point and I know Hinata concurs with me. Shikamaru looked at his Hyuga teammate and saw her nod with a content smile, directed mostly at him. Ah, fine. Naruto hummed and Hinata giggled, before Shikamaru briefly closed his eyes, took a long breath, and got into strategy mode. I don't feel like remaining in this troublesome forest any more than necessary. Aside from facing enemies and whatever it is in these woods, having to worry about food and sleeping just isn't a safe course of action to take. Naruto and Hinata looked at each other and neither found much to object to the basic principle. Which meant that Shikamaru wanted to reach the tower today. It's fine by me, though we still have to find a way to reach the tower, Shikamaru. It's not like we have a map with us. Shikamaru already knew that, hence he had opted for one of the possible ways to figure out. Hinata, can you see the tower with your Byakugan? The girl from the team, though, negated as she had already attempted that when she first activated the eyes to see close threats. Ah, Anko-san said that the tower is 10 kilometers from here. Though some in my clan can extend their reach to 10 kilometer long, I can only see 1 kilometer. Shikamaru acknowledged that with HMM as he then looked right and left for a while. That's fine, I have other means of finding the right path, but we have to take advantage of sunlight as much as possible. I don't care much for food and water. So as we proceed, Naruto shall use your sensor skills to pick up a couple of teams that we can face fast without much trouble. I believe you know the teams to steer away from, don't you? Naruto nodded at that, marveling at the speed of analysis from his teammate. Naruto could be strong on the field and face most opponents in a fight, but Shikamaru had plans in spades. If anyone could be spotted as a future leader in missions, he would point at the lazy Nara without much doubt. The only negative was his laziness. Yeah, one of the Janan from Suna. 
he has red hair and carries a gourd on his back. Plus, that Kabuto we talked to early in the first phase was hiding something. So, yeah, I would pick these two teams to steer clear from if we wish to reach the tower today. Okay, noted. Now, let us proceed. Naruto, can you get us some cage bun shine and follow us using Henge? Hinata keep activating the Byakugan to help Naruto's sensor skills pick up our enemies. Naruto and Hinata did as instructed, before the team charged forward. Shikamaru already had a map in his mind of this place memorized. It was a clear rounded territory, so choosing a straight path was out of the question. First, they could get lost along the way and face more opposition both from the forest and from the enemies. And Naruto and Hinata were perfect for figuring the right path ahead. Despite her saying that her reach was limited, her Byakugan helped out a great deal in changing course slightly. Plus, every now and then, Shikamaru would ask Naruto to climb the tallest tree he could find and try to see the tower from up there. Of course, Naruto had to choose the very tree where he had to battle giant centipedes with his sword, but he could tell Shikamaru that their path was taking them closer to the tower. As soon as he dropped and reached his teammates on the ground, Shikamaru and Hinata were dragged away by Naruto's cage bunshine envoy to protect them from a rain of projectiles, while the real one blocked a couple of incoming shuriken. His sensor abilities picked up on the usage of chakra as soon as he reached the ground and his clones worked fast in protecting his peers. Still, based on the projectile's trajectory, Naruto pinpointed the enemy's location, while turning to Hinata and Shikamaru. This time, he would take the lead as a fight ensued. Hinata, can you see them? Her Byakugan was activated before Naruto asked her as she nodded and pointed to a few branches upward. As soon as she did so, a team of Iwagakura ninja appeared from thin air, charging the Konoha team with a kunai. Their image was still distorted, though, forcing Naruto and Hinata to take the initiative, Hinata with her Byakugan and Naruto with his sensor skills. The Bunshine stood close to Shikamaru, who had already grabbed some shuriken to act as support for his teammates. Still, he had only his own teammates to work with, as he could not see the opponents. They only knew they were from Iwa, because Shikamaru could see one of the headbands briefly. Still, Shikamaru observed that Naruto and Hinata were handling them just fine from close range. Naruto was facing two on one and Hinata the third, allowing Shikamaru to observe and wait for the opportunity to strike. Like a sniper waiting for the target to appear in his aim, Shikamaru's eyes saw the sudden drop of blood emerge from Naruto's sword, before Shikamaru's shuriken traveled at the target. His accuracy proved fatal as the shuriken hit the enemy Janan straight on his chest, forcing the Janan to stop the camouflage jutsu he was using. Naruto saw this and capitalized on the opportunity granted by Shikamaru. His sword worked fast and sliced the enemy in many places at once, using the wind element. The Janan was down for the count, bleeding badly, but still not dead. The others looked at his teammate bleeding heavily, so Hinata worked fast in using her jukan to seal the other two's tankitsus, before they could check on their teammate. Shikamaru was there to bind them with his shadow, while Naruto tied them up, close to the one who was bleeding heavily. Ha, huh, now comes the hard part, here. Naruto eyes Shikamaru. Just defeating them wasn't enough, they needed to take their scroll as well and that would involve some coercion. Still, he could at least start out civil. I don't suppose you guys could hand in your scroll peacefully, right? The three from Iwa were bruised and one was bleeding all over, but none of them would be so stupid as to give the scroll willingly and Naruto could see it in their eyes. Neither Hinata nor Shikamaru would know how to play the tough guy here. Hinata has improved sure, but she wouldn't do anything to harm someone after defeating them and Shikamaru's bored look just couldn't threaten them much. So, Naruto took some breaths to clear his head and turned to incorporate the Naidaim Hokaye's leveled stare at them. The sudden spike of his chakra and even killing intent surprised his own teammates, while Naruto focused on the downed Iwa team. So far, only one of them was in dire condition, the other two had only their tenkatsus closed by Hinata, but that could change as Naruto once more charged wind chakra through his sword. Throughout his life, Naruto had many role models to follow. And these last few days allowed him to study both Iviki and Anko up close for their methods. He figured that mixing it up, playing with the mind as well as pain would go along well. Now, I have a couple of skills I'd like to try on the both of you, but it would save us both some time and, less blood on your part if you cooperate. Hinata tried to brace herself because the killing intent wasn't directed at her, but she was scared because she had never seen Naruto like this before. Shikamaru, though, had to help her, because this was necessary for their objective, so he just placed a comforting hand on her shoulder, urging her to trust their teammate. 
The three from Iwa began to stir from their seats as Naruto approached them with slow steps while holding his wind chakra sword. Starting with your bleeding friend here, I could inflict even more pain on him, if you don't hand in the scroll. As proof of his threats, Naruto had touched the Janan's right arm and it caused a small slash, earning more pain. Or I could perhaps, I don't know, use you guys as practice for a nifty skill I learned recently. Naruto then placed his sword back on the seal where it came from and worked through hand seals, before focusing on their Janan's minds. The three enemies from Iwa suddenly saw as giant centipedes crawled from behind them and entrapped them using its bodies, earning three frightened screams of fright as they saw the giant insect's fangs about to decapitate them. Okay, okay, you win, here is the scroll, now leave us alone. Naruto, Hinata and Shikamaru just observed when the team from Iwa began to scream at nothing. Hinata and Shikamaru knew that their teammate had a large array of abilities, but to see it being used like this, well, it showed to them that perhaps the Naruto that they knew was barely the tip of the iceberg. Still, Shikamaru grabbed the scroll, which sadly was the same as what they had and the team left once more, towards their path to the tower. They still had to search for another team to take the heaven scroll. As they progressed, Hinata was looking at her blonde teammate in fright. The feeling she had when Naruto spiked his chakra and killing intent, plus the way Naruto handled the interrogation, it made her chest hurt at witnessing it. Naruto then looked briefly at Hinata and saw her hesitance. He sighed, figuring why she was looking hesitant at him. Shikamaru, we should stop for a while. The Nara looked at both his teammates and then at Naruto, who nodded at him with a silent request. I will check the perimeter for a while, I'll be right back. Hinata and Naruto observed as Shikamaru walked away from them. Right now, Naruto and Hinata were close to a stream and Hinata was seen holding her hands close to her chest, while her eyes tried not to look at her blonde companion right now. I'm sorry for what you had to witness, Hinata. The reserved Hayuga now had his full attention as he approached her. It was never my intention to scare you or take things too far. I wouldn't resort to physical pain any more than what I did. Ah, it's alright Naruto-kun, I, know it was necessary, but... Naruto was surprised when he tried to place a comforting hand on her shoulder, and he saw her body flinch at the contact. I can't say it was necessary, but I would do that once more if it meant that neither of you two has to. Hinata, this time, had looked at him straight in the eyes for now, wondering what he meant by that. Asuma-sensei and Kurenai-sensei had talked to me plenty about what it means to be a chunin, Hinata. Being a leader, being responsible for the mission as well as the lives of my team, I don't know if I already have what it takes. And this exam, I can see that these types of scenarios we are in right now will repeat itself in the future. As a leader, I will have to make choices, choices that may affect the mission, choices that may affect the lives of the team. I stepped up and tried to emulate the other proctors, you know. As well, as you Toburama sensei. Naruto-kun. The Janan in question looked at Hinata once more and breathed when he saw that she wasn't scared of him anymore. I, have no doubt that you will be a great chunin and I'm sorry for feeling this way. There is no need to apologize Hinata, let us move forward towards our goal and then take some rest afterward. Hinata nodded this time more relieved as Shikamaru returned with new coordinates for them to follow. The same pattern followed once more with the team on the move. As they progressed, this time, they had to face a giant bear that crossed their path. Working as a team, Shikamaru trapped the giant animal with his shadow binding. Hinata used Jukin to hit some chakra and pressure points, before Naruto sent the creature to dreamland with a swift kick on the back of its neck. After that, Shikamaru cursed seeing the sun was about to set for the day. Hinata ended up being a lifesaver for the team as she activated her Byakugan. Shikamaru, I see the tower a few meters to the right. The Nara Janan released a sigh and relaxation at the notion that they had managed to locate their destination and in record time no less. The problem was that they were still due to find another team with the scroll they needed to finish the assignment. Hinata, Naruto, can you tell if there's another team nearby? We still need to get a heaven scroll to get inside the tower. Hinata then expanded her Byakugan as per Shikamaru's request for a while, before her eyes landed on a team also heading towards the tower from their opposite direction. Seeing as they were pressed for time, Team 10 ran towards the tower to meet up with the opposite team, hoping that they had the scroll they were looking for, or else they would have to spend the night outside. The sun at this point had already begun to set and they had barely half an hour of sunlight. Because of this, Shikamaru urged Naruto to kick it up a notch and help them get the scroll faster. The blonde Janan had already sensed the team he would be up against and knew that they didn't represent much threat. So, 
he urged Shikamaru and Hinata to stay close to the tower and wait for him to return. A team from Taki was running in record time, all three of them looking like grown-ups already. They had great luck, finding one green team from Kumagakura with the scroll they needed to advance. Plus, they could see the tower up ahead from their path, meaning that they would be acing this exam and jumping straight to the third and last phase. They were surprised when a blast of wind came barreling in on them. Still, all three Janan were experienced enough to stick to the ground with chakra as the wind blast passed through them. Some cuts could be seen on their arms and limbs, but otherwise they were unscathed. All three stood back to back with kunai in their hands while observing where the enemy or enemies would come. Naruto observed the three from atop a tree and went through a sequence of hand seals. This forest was almost damped in humidity, allowing him a great source of water to use from. Still, he had summoned three cage bunshines to follow up on the attack, as soon as he finished the hand signs, finished by the praying sign. Sutan Suishuha, Water Release, Water Shockwave Technique. The three Janan from Taki looked up in surprise as a gigantic water geyser erupted up into the air, before falling down on them like a hammer from the sky. The amount of water was indescribable, and it dragged them together. So unfocused were they from being dragged by the strong water current, that neither of them screamed in pain when three blurs carrying swords descended from the trees and pierced their stomachs. Naruto's bunshines had then quickly dragged them away from the water current and searched for their possessions to see which one had the scroll. His attacks weren't life-threatening, though they were bleeding profusely. But, using the Suishuha took a lot of control from him and like Shikamaru, Naruto was eager to get inside the tower and be done with his test. As such, when he found two scrolls, one heaven and one earth, he released a sigh and relaxation, before going back to the place where his teammates were waiting for him. Hinata and Shikamaru were just resting near the tower on the lookout for Naruto to return. Shikamaru had a feeling that sending in Naruto alone would be faster than them together facing this team. Ever since they graduated, Shikamaru had the feeling that their teammate was hiding his true strength. Throughout their missions together, Shikamaru could see that Naruto would always show a new skill or even display an improved version of the skills he had already shown. But to this day, the Nara genius had yet to truly see everything that Naruto could do. Shikakun, do you think it's wise to send Naruto Kunin alone? He looked at the clear concerned look from Hinata's eyes and nodded. Pretty sure, Hinata. You of all people should know what he is capable of. Plus, I get the feeling that both of us would hold him down. Hinata did know that. She knew that he was stronger than he showed, certainly stronger than all of them, but she couldn't help but worry either way. You can see him with your Byakugan, can't you? The Hyuga Janan nodded and used her all-seeing eye to see an okay Naruto walking towards their location. She could relax now seeing that his outfit appeared rugged but no visible injury. He is coming back. Shikamaru smiled at her happier tone, before the blonde emerged from the foliage behind them, throwing both of the scrolls he had collected to Shikamaru. Great, now let's get inside the tower and end this troublesome exam. Quickly opening one of the many double doors, the team walked inside the tower and explored inside until they stood inside an empty hallway with two opposed platforms upward and a board in front of them, with an inscription. Shikamaru couldn't help but groan at the thought of yet another puzzle to solve before truly completing the second phase. Naruto was the one who read it out loud. If heaven does not exist, enrich your knowledge, and prepare for the chance, if earth does not exist, run the fields and search for an advantage, open the series of heaven and earth and the perilous way shall be addressed, this is namely the secret of the one that guides, what does that mean, Shika? The Nara genius crossed his arms as he pondered on the phrases. While he could certainly work out the meaning behind them in due time, there was simply no intel he remembered Anko saying about this. The only item still left unattended would be the scrolls now in their possession. I don't know, but perhaps the scrolls have something to do with this. We couldn't open the scrolls before entering the tower, but now that we are inside, perhaps it's time to open them. Naruto and Hinata eyed the scrolls and they nodded to each other before opening them at the same time. The summoning kanji inscribed in both scrolls were clear to the Fuenjutsu user as Naruto urged Hinata to throw the scroll on the ground, before both scrolls joined in a cross, before smoke erupted. The blonde remembered this summoning scroll design similar to the one the Nidaim taught him to hide the scroll containing the Nidaim's teachings. When the smoke cleared, it revealed a man wearing a chunin attire and a blue bandana on his head and eyes that were similar to Hinata's. Koshan, is that you, what are you doing here? The Hyuga Chunin in question greeted the team with a wave. Hello there Hinata-sama, your team was quite fast to reach the tower. While it wasn't the first team to arrive, you were definitely the second. 
Us Chunin were tasked with welcoming the Jinan teams who reached the tower and Hyashi Sama asked me personally to be the one to welcome your team here. Hinata ran and gave Ko a hug, to which the Chunin returned with a smile on his face. After the greeting, Ko announced to the team congratulations for passing the second phase of the Chunin exams and explained to them the meaning of the inscription above them, before telling them that they had the rest of the five days to rest while the rest of the teams finished the exam. Chapter 14, Preliminaries and Training It was already well past midnight, and the second exams were well underway with the teams already finishing the second phase. In most situations, the Chunin hopefuls were battling amongst each other for the scrolls, but this exam just got some serious situations occurring that made one Mitarashianko rubbing a strange-looking mark on her shoulder. She was currently inside a room filled with monitors together with two Chunin proctors as well as the Sandaime Hokage. No sooner had she reported what happened to the village leader, he had met her and quickly added some new layers of protection around the three-shaped seal on her shoulder. Still, it was not enough to fully erase the pain as she kept on rubbing on it to go away. Is it better? The Jounin proctor released a slight curse before covering her shoulder with her trench coat. A bit better now, thank you Hokage-sama. The elder leader grunted, before puffing some smoke from his pipe. Is there anything else you can tell me about why he had decided to infiltrate these exams, Anko-chan? The mere mention of that name was enough to make her snarl, before the memory of her pathetic display was brought to surface. To believe that after all this time, that man merely toyed with her, still, the only intel she could remember was what the S-ranked missing nin and probably Konoha's worst criminal, Orochimaru, said to her. He mentioned having an interest in the last heir of the Uchiha clan, Uchiha Sasuke. Hiruzen Sarutobi really couldn't be surprised. From the knowledge he had on his former student, it was obvious that the man desired the Sharingan. The Dojutsu, that once fully evolved, can literally copy Genjutsu, Ninjutsu, Taijutsu and Kenjutsu moves, pretty much all of the shinobi arts opened up to a Sharingan user by sight alone. Anko and the Chunin looked at their leader in suspense for a while, wondering what he was thinking. Rochimaru was one of the Sanin, a team personally tutored by the very Sandaime Hokage into greatness, perhaps the strongest shinobi of Konoha after the Hokage himself. And for this person to be here right now when Konoha's gates became open for the exams, the snake knew what he was doing by revealing himself like this. He wanted to cause panic. And right now, Hiruzen couldn't anticipate everything his former student is capable of doing. Anko-san. The group turned to one of the monitors as one of the Chunin gave her a message. The second exam is over, and 21 contesters managed to pass. As for the third exam, according to the regulations of the Chunin exams, preliminaries are planned for the first time in five years. After the message was delivered, the monitor was turned off and the Hokage turned to Anko and the other Chunin. For now, continue the exam as it is, while keeping an eye on his movements. The tension in the room was palpable and Anko was more in favor of calling off the exams, but she knew the responsibilities of hosting these exams. Calling it off would have been the sensitive decision to make, but she knew the damage it would do to Konoha's reputation if the Hokage made that decision. The hidden villages were at best in a civil war with each other, competing amongst each other for clients and revenues. Doing so would drive many of Konoha's clients to other villages equals 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 next morning equals equals equals. Inside the tower, everyone that pertained to the Chunin exam was there, the Jinan who managed to pass the exams, the Chunin proctors, Anko, the Jounin responsible for the Jinan who passed and finally the Hokage. Despite fulfilling her promise to at least cut the Jinan candidates by half, Anko firmly believed that fewer Jinan would finish this exam, which proved the contestants' skills to have come this far. Certainly, the Hokage thought amongst the same lines as he turned to the three Jounin of the rookie teams, now understanding why they advocated so fiercely for their respective teams. The Jinan, for their part, looked at each other. Naruto's team was perhaps the exception from the Konoha teams, since none of them suffered too much to get to the tower. The others, though, had suffered plenty, that much he could tell based on the rugged and bloodied outfits. Also, he could tell by their chakra capacities, that some could barely stand. His focus, however, was mostly on Team 7. Sakura's hair was shorter than he remembered, and her red dress was ripped in multiple places. Kiba's dog Akamaru was whimpering inside Kiba's jacket and his outfit was in shambles as well. Sasuke, however, Naruto could tell, was the worst of the three. Naruto could tell that his chakra was in complete disarray and Sasuke was also holding his shoulder the entire time. Just what happened out there to make them like this? As a matter of fact, 
Naruto wasn't the only one focusing on Sasuke as certainly Sakura and Kiba were looking at him in concern as they had witnessed what happened in the forest. How Sasuke was manhandled by the Kuza Janan who turned out to be a man named Orochimaru. Sasuke had put up a tough fight with his two Tomoe Sharingan and with his expertise in fire ninjutsu, but the enemy was far too powerful for him alone to deal with. In the end, Orochimaru had done something to Sasuke, biting him and giving him that strange mark on his shoulder. Kiba and Sakura still trembled at the memory of seeing the dark and malevolent purple energy that came out of Sasuke when the team from Sound attacked. The others were also looking at Sasuke, mainly Anko, Iviki and the Hokage. More precisely, the fact that Orochimaru had given Sasuke the same seal that he gave Anko. So it's true then. Iviki and Anko nodded at the Hokage's assessment. We should remove him from the exams and isolate him with Anbu bodyguards on him. Before, the Hokage could give his assessment, Kakashi approached them with an aloof smile on his face. Well, he's not really the type to just obey like that, he is of the Uchiha clan after all. Anko snarled immediately at the Scarecrow Jounin. What are you talking nonsense for, I'll make him stop by force if necessary. The curse mark responds even when one's just building up chakra and attempts to forcibly extract his strength. Anko even rubbed her shoulders, revealing her own cursed seal, as she finished. It's a prohibited jutsu that eats into the body of the one who uses a jutsu. It's a wonder that this kid's even enduring it. He should really be dead. Anko then turned to the Hokage who was busy focusing on Sasuke, who was apparently having an argument with Sakura about something. I'll allow his participation for now Anko, but Kakashi, you know what to do afterward. Kakashi nodded and then returned to the Jounin's line, before Anko turned to the Janan. Okay everyone, shut the hell up and listen as we'll now proceed with the explanation of the third exam from Lord Hokage, so listen carefully. Anko then turned to Hokage and saw his nod, before taking a step forward to address the Janan himself. Before explaining the rules of the third phase, I have just one thing to explain to you all. It's regarding the true purpose of these exams. Why do you all believe nations conduct the exams on a conjoint basis? Raising the levels of the shinobi amongst the nations, it won't do to have the wrong idea of the true meaning of that statement. The exams are so to speak, a microcosm of battle between the nations. Back in history, every shinobi nation battled with each other for power. But in order to avoid a futile crushing of each other's military strength, the nations mutually selected a place to battle and that's how the Chunin exams originally began. There were some murmurs amongst the Janan and Naruto took the time to briefly wonder about the time of the Naidaim Hokage. It's true that these exams serve for us to select possible Chunin candidates, but these exams also provide a venue for shinobi who carry their nation's pride on their backs to fight for their lives. Many feudal lords and those of prominence from many nations who request shinobi for work are invited to this third exam as guests. They come here to watch the battles and see the village's military prowess displayed. The nations who manages to impress the feudal lords and clients will thus gain more revenue and exercise pressure on the other nations. As expected, this one was met with more complaints as the Janan now wondered why they were battling for their lives just to perform for the feudal lords and other visitors. Still, it made sense if one were to pay attention. The strength of the village is closely linked to the strength of its shinobi. It's a precarious system for sure. It's a delicate balance between nations, going as far as to measure one's military might by the number of missions this village is hired to perform. Now, with that out of the way, I shall now explain the third exam. The Hokage stopped talking as soon as a Jounin morphed in front of Haruzen wearing the standard uniform and a blue bandana on his head. Lord Hokage, please allow me, Hayate Gekko, to explain. Hiruzen nodded, before the man in question got up from kneeling and turned to the assembled Janan. Before turning to explain, though, the man named Hayate started coughing. Okay then, everyone, I'd like you all to do something before the third exam and that is a preliminary to the third exam. From the Janan in attendance, it was Shikamaru who voiced his complaint. Oi, what is this about preliminaries, shouldn't we just go straight to the third exam? Hayate released a sigh at having to explain himself more than necessary, which ended up forcing his throat and lung capacity down. Cough, cough, whether the first phases were too easy or the quality of this year's Janan has improved, the fact remains that there are too many applicants. Because of this, according to the exam's rules, preliminary matches are necessary to reduce the number of Janan advancing. Those that suffered the most in the exams, and Shikamaru, were clearly against the idea, but Hayate ignored them. As Hokage-sama explained, many guests shall attend the third phase, so we can't have long and pointless matches. Not to mention that our time is limited as well. 
Therefore, those of you not in top physical condition are free to, cough, cough. Hayate had to stop talking once the coughing became too much and made some Janan worried about the Jounin's health. Sorry about that, well, those of you who wish to drop out, please speak up now. The preliminary matches will begin immediately. Oi, what the hell, we just spent five days in this forest, getting our asses kicked. Kiba truly looked like he had described it just now. It's your decision from here on out, so please raise your hands and drop out if you don't feel like continuing. To this, the Jinan started murmuring amongst each other and Sasuke looked around, wondering who would quit now, when the pain on his shoulder erupted once more. His hand unconsciously reached towards the injury as the level of pain became too much to bear. Sakura, behind him, became worried about the Uchiha's chances to continue. Sakura knew how his pride would be diminished if she suggested for him to forfeit, but she was worried about his health. Sasuke-kun, you need to forfeit and get it checked out. To this, both Kiba and Sasuke looked at their teammate in incredulity. Kiba did understand Sakura's pained voice after what they had to face in the forest. Sasuke, though. Shut up Sakura, stay away from this. Sakura, though, instead of being more worried about him, now became angry at such stubbornness. No, I won't stay away, you're our teammate. If you don't forfeit, then I'll inform them of your condition. Sasuke was baffled at her narrowed expression and he could see that she was about to raise her hand. Sakura, be quiet. The pink-haired Janan, though, wasn't phased by Sasuke's angry visage and kept on raising her hand. Before she could fully raise, however, everyone was surprised when Kabuto beat her to the punch, with an unguarded smile. Excuse me, I'll quit. His revelation brought about question marks from everyone present, considering how Kabuto presented himself to them at the beginning. If this was his seventh exam, then it would seem that he was at least the most experienced Janan from Konoha in these exams. Kiba, Sakura and Sasuke looked even more incredulous, considering how helpful was the silver-haired Janan in the second phase. It was thanks to him that the team passed it all. The higher-ups, for their chance, looked at this with narrowed eyes, considering the Janan's history, or at least his folder. Hayate, though, merely looked at the spreadsheet in his hands and accepted his withdrawal from the exams. As he walked away, however, Kabuto had simply adjusted his glasses with an evil smile on his face. Because of Kabuto's withdrawal, Sakura had simply forgotten about her desire to inform of Sasuke's illness. Okay then, since no one else will quit, we shall continue. The matches will happen in one-on-one. -on -one. There are now exactly 20 people, so we will conduct 10 battles overall. The winner shall attend the third exam. There are no rules for this combat, so you'll fight until someone dies, collapses, or admit defeat. In other words, please admits defeat right away if you don't have a death wish. I can interrupt the match at any time if I see a clear victor. Now, please everyone clear the area and move to the upper platforms as the fights shall begin. The names shall be randomly selected on the board up there. As instructed, everyone went up to the upper platforms, while the names appeared on the board. Equals 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 preliminary fights equals equals equals. The first names on the board were Nara Shikamaru from the Leaf vs. Kin Tsuchi from the Sound Village. The lazy genius released a Sayada's name being mentioned and casually walked down the stairs followed by his opponent, a woman from the looks of it, which further annoyed the Nara heir. The two combatants were then standing face to face with Hayate as the referee. When the match started, Shikamaru had immediately begun with his shadow binding technique. Kin saw the shadow beam charging at her and evaded. She then released a couple of senbone with bells attached. Shikamaru dodged the incoming projectile and observed as the senbone lodged at the wall behind him. A couple more senbone and this time Shikamaru blocked it with a kunai, before closing the distance. Before he went within close range, though, he heard the distinguished noises of the bells and turned to see it. Kin took the opportunity of the distraction and threw more senbone at the Nara. However, after facing Naruto so many times, despite Shikamaru's complaints, his agility had improved by leaps and bounds, allowing him ample time to dodge and use his shadow bind once more. Only this time, instead of the usual shadow beam, Kin was surprised when the shadow had split up in smaller tendrils as each charged in different directions. Kin cursed having to dodge from multiple directions and chose the only venue she could dodge. As soon as she placed her right foot to go backwards, Shikamaru smiled and joined his shadow to one single beam that captured the sound Janan. Naruto and Hinata both smiled at the clever plan from the team strategist. Shikamaru had forced Kin to make that move and the moment that she dashed backwards, she had lost her footing for a few seconds. That was enough for Shikamaru to move for the checkmate. 
Naruto had almost fell victim for that strategy in one of their spars one time, by using a cage bunshine to be captured in this place. Ha, cage main no jutsu, success. Shikamaru had even casually walked towards Kin and Kin moved against her will, shortening the distance. Shikamaru had a kunai on his hand and when they stood face to face, Shikamaru's kunai became inches from her neck, positioning himself for the win as per Hayate's decree. Next up was Inuzuka Kiba from the Leaf vs. Sabaku no Konkuro from the Sand Village. As usual, Kiba underestimated the enemy and heavily paid the price. Konkuro's use of chakra strings was enough to trap Akamaru and the Inuzuka heir lost his trump card right away. And since his fighting style revolved around fighting with his canine partner and despite Kiba being a heavy close-range fighter, he lacked the necessary skill to take on Konkuro's puppets. Kakashi, up in the stands, couldn't help but sigh in dismay for his student as Kiba had simply forgotten to take this fight seriously. Next up was Aburame Shino from the Leaf vs. Zaku Abumi from the Sound Village with the Aburame heir being the victor. The battles progressed with Sabaku no Tamari from the Sand winning against Tenten of the Leaf. Naruto keenly observed the use of wind jutsu aided by fans. Haruno Sakura from the Leaf had defeated Yamanaka Ino also from the Leaf quite easily, expertly mixing Taijutsu, Shuriken Jutsu and Genjutsu, much to Naruto's applause. He had even openly praised Sakura for her skills, to which she accepted, basking in the praise from her senpai. Sakura had trained a lot under Naruto's guidance, and she dedicated her win to him, even more than Kakashi sensei. Akimichi Kuji was up against another Janan from the sound, named Kinuta Dosu. The match was rather pathetic, though, with Kuji using his clan's technique to expand his body and rolling towards Dosu. Dosu, though, had simply sidestepped, forcing Choji to hit the wall pretty hard and lose consciousness. Naruto and Asuma had to sweat drop at Kurenai heavily rubbing her forehead at the display. The Genjutsu user was already frowning at Ino's poor showing against Sakura, but she couldn't help but wonder if she should have focused more on Kuji's training. At least Shino had managed to advance. When the next names appeared, though, Hinata gasped and Naruto was by her side immediately, giving her courage. The reserved main branch Yuga couldn't help but look at her cousin, who was simply crossing his arms, while focusing on the board. The two Hyuga then walked together downstairs, before standing face to face. Their facial expressions varied, Neji looked angry at her and she looked saddened by it. Neji Nisan. I never thought I would have to fight you Hinata Sama Hinata had evolved a great deal from the timid girl she used to be, but she couldn't help but revert to that state upon hearing the anger at how he had addressed her. Still, now was not the time to dwell on these problems. Hinata wished she could have faced another adversary, but Neji was her opponent. I didn't want to face you as well Neji Nisan, but I guess fate is chosen for us. If Hinata had one word that Neji had absolutely loathed above all else it was that, fate. Yes, indeed fate has placed us to face each other Hinata-sama. And fate has smiled at me with the opportunity to face you without the clan doing anything against me. Hinata stood there facing her cousin. She knew what he was talking about, of course. She had seen it happening one time too many to understand the depth of his anger towards her. Well, towards her would be wrong, rather towards the main branch family. But right now, Hinata may very well be the face of the main branch in his eyes. Aside from truly wishing to become stronger, she wished to rid her cousin of this hatred. Naruto and Kurenai eyed each other from the upper grounds, knowing the mountain that Hinata now had to climb on her own, before both turned back to the fight. Neji Nisan, I don't believe words will change what happened in the past. All I can do right now is face you head on. Neji, for his part, smiled as both fell into the traditional fighting position. I would be remiss if I didn't say one more thing beforehand, withdraw Hinata-sama. Although, by the look in his eyes, he didn't want her to, he wanted her to fight and she knew that. Naruto knew bits and pieces about what happened to Hinata's cousin from Hinata. How Neji's father ended up taking Hyashi-sama's place to serve as sacrifice to stop a war against Kumo, even though it was Kumo who decided to kidnap Hinata that day. He knew about the Hyuga clan seal on Neji's forehead that is used by the main branch to force loyalty and that Hyashi had already used it on Neji once. Because of what he knew, he could feel Neji's chakra spiking to dangerous levels and without a doubt was aimed at Hinata. Neji's killing intent was clear towards Hinata. He knew that his teammate wouldn't back down, though. And while a part of him truly believed that it would be best for her to withdraw, this was also her opportunity to truly gauge her own growth as he knew she can do this. I won't Neji Nisan, so don't bother, Hinata stated resolutely, accepting his anger. 
As soon as Hayate authorized the fight, both Byakugan activated at the same time as they exchanged chakra thrusts with each other, going toe-to-toe. Neji had more experience, but Hinata had trained extensively with Naruto. Plus, she learned from her teammate how to avoid the powerful chakra thrusts that could block the chakra points. Her eyes were focused on Neji's hands while using both her own diverting style and Naruto's evasion technique. Still, she could feel some of Neji's blows land even if barely. Overloading her chakra circuits hurt like hell, but it helped overcome Neji's blows. What surprised the older Hayuga was that Hinata landed some hits as well. And it irritated him to no end. Her footing and movement had both grace and agility the likes of which Neji had never seen before. Soon it became a dangerous dance of strength versus grace. And while Hinata managed to face her cousin, Naruto was on her mind the entire time. She remembered their fights together just as she was battling against Neji now. She could see his deep cerulean eyes and confident smile directed at her from the upper platforms. Please watch me Naruto-kun. When Hinata tried to attack Neji, though, she had made the fatal mistake. Her style revolves around counter-attacking. When Neji landed a powerful chakra thrust at her chest, Hinata felt it right away as she spilled blood. Still, Neji was surprised when her counterattack landed an equally powerful strike on his stomach. Naruto squeezed both hands on the rail as he looked in anticipation for the injuries she sustained. A hit like that from the Jukin was quite deadly. Back to the fight, both Hayuga were on the ground panting from the pain, though Hinata's was worse. She desperately wanted to get up and fight, but the blood kept on dripping from her mouth and she could feel her stamina leaving her body. She felt weak, but as she looked up to Neji, she realized that she had done that to him. She, the timid girl, the one to whom the clan looked down upon, the girl whose own father looked down and said that she would never amount to much. She, Hayuga Hinata, had sent the clan's prodigy to the ground, panting. And based on the look in Neji's eyes, he was just as surprised as she was. Best of all, was that Hinata had seen something else in his eyes, recognition, acknowledgement, finally looking at her like a worthy adversary. Then she looked up and saw him. She saw him smiling at her. That was enough for her, she has proven to both him and herself that she was capable. And truly they was enough. Both Naruto and Kurenai had shunshine down next to her, just as Hayate called the match in Neji's favor. The medics were approaching and Hinata opened her eyes to look at the two most special people in her life. Kurenai-sensei, Naruto-kun, how was I? The blonde smiled and grabbed her hand. You were excellent Hinata. I knew you could do it. You showed him. You were indeed Hinata-chan, now please rest. The girl smiled sweetly at both and gently closed her eyes, feeling lighter than ever, filled with enough confidence that she could take on every possible challenge from here on out. The medics took both Neji and Hinata away, as Naruto and Kurenai returned to the stands, none of them bothering to look at the others' surprised looks, namely Anko, Kakashi, Shikamaru, and Asuma. Their surprise was more regarding the fact that Kurenai and Naruto practically moved at the same time in clear concern for Hinata and that spoke volumes. Asuma, though, couldn't help but smile at this. He knew that Kurenai cared for Hinata like her own daughter and Naruto had greatly helped her grow out of her shell. The board then sprang into action once more and it stopped on two quite interesting names. When Naruto's name appeared next to Sasuke, the blonde Janan couldn't help but sigh in dismay. He didn't even need to see Sasuke to know that he was looking forward to this fight. He saw Sasuke coming down the stairs and was about to follow him when Sakura stopped him. Sakura, what's up? Naruto-senpai, there is something wrong with Sasuke-kun. Sakura just couldn't talk about what happened from fear of Sasuke losing confidence in her, but she could at least ask her senpai to better handle Sasuke with care. What happened, Sakura? He could see that she was tense when speaking. Sorry but explaining everything would take too long, but. Is it about that strange seal on his neck? Sakura looked surprised at that while Naruto turned to look at his opponent down below waiting for him. I can sense that his chakra is in disarray, though I don't know why. I can't promise that I won't take this seriously, though. Just like him, I want to advance. Sakura nodded anyhow. I understand, just don't go overboard on him okay? Huh. I make no promises, Naruto stated with a wink and Sakura couldn't help but smile, before Naruto using Shunshine to stand right in front of the smirking Sasuke. Naruto stood face to face with Sasuke and he could see that Sasuke was itching for another fight with him. In the beginning of their training sessions, Naruto had enjoyed them, but then with time, Sasuke started demanding more and more time to fight him, every time. 
In some of those demands, Naruto caved, but in other times he had other priorities like joining his team for training or helping Sakura or even hanging out with Kurenai and Yakumo for genjutsu practice. Naruto had even distanced himself from the Uchiha when he wanted to train some of the hidden skills he had yet to reveal to the public. You have been blowing me off for a while, Naruto. But now you can't avoid fighting me, Naruto sighed as he felt the sudden spike in Sasuke's chakra followed by the Uchiha's flinching in pain. It would be best if you withdraw Sasuke. I can see that you're in pain. If it's a fight you want, then we can do it once you recovered. He owed Sakura to at least try, though he was certain that Uchiha wouldn't back down. Worry about yourself, let's do this. And yet you still wonder why I avoid facing you sometimes, when you're like this, acting like everyone needs to do your bidding. I can see though that mere words will not suffice. Despite the obvious jab, the Uchiha was unconcerned. What mattered the most to him was to have fights like this and surpass him. By surpassing him, Sasuke could see himself surpassing his brother in the future. The rest of the audience looked at this fight right now in great anticipation. Despite some of the jounin knowing about Sasuke's current disadvantage, he was still in Uchiha and could give Naruto trouble. The Hokage puffed smoke from his pipe and looked straight at Naruto, since this happens to be the first time he has seen the kid in action. The other jounin were also eager to see who would prevail. Naruto had quickly unleashed his ninjato and fell into position with a reverse grip. Sasuke used a kunai on his hand and both vanished as soon as Hayate authorized the fight. The Janan widened their eyes at the sheer speed displayed by these two, before they met in the middle grinding weapons. Sasuke snarled at the strength required to normally parry Naruto added by the pain of the seal. Naruto appeared to be tranquil as he observed Sasuke or rather his onyx eyes. Aren't you using your Sharingan, Sasuke? Without it, you won't last long. Sasuke quickly redirected Naruto's sword and attempted a flip kick to which Naruto easily sidestepped and closed in on Sasuke, making a faint slash on Sasuke's torso. The Uchiha used agility to evade, but his shirt was slightly torn, before he took some distance away from the blonde. Naruto's sensor capabilities could feel Sasuke's chakra flow battling as if there was a presence inside of him, trying to take over. Sasuke charged at Naruto and he saw it too late when Naruto's free hand shifted into a half-ram seal. From up the platforms, Kurenai smirked as Naruto began. Sasuke had attacked the Naruto that he saw in front of him, but the real Naruto was a couple of centimeters to the right of his actual position, easily sidestepping Sasuke's attack and grazing the Uchiha's arm with his sword. The Uchiha grunted in pain and charged once more, with the same thing happening, only this time it was the other arm. There was no way that Naruto could be this fast. It was like he was disappearing for a single second and appearing right next to him. Asuma and Shikamaru looked on in surprise at this and the bearded Jounin turned to the smirking Kurenai. He is using Genjutsu? The woman looked at him briefly and nodded still with a proud smile. It's a style he devised in our Genjutsu training. Sasuke could have seen it with the Sharingan, but since he is not using it, he is clueless about what is going on, mistaking it for Naruto's agility instead. Asuma and Shikamaru then looked back at the fight to see Sasuke's shirt completely torn, from Naruto's sword. How the hell are you doing this? The Uchiha had enough speed to rival most adversaries, but he just couldn't follow Naruto's attacks. Use your Sharingan, Sasuke. Or else you'll be finished quite quickly. Truly, I expected better from you. If Naruto wanted to push his buttons, he had truly succeeded. Up from the stands, the Jounin from Sound, Orochimaru in disguise, was focusing on this Uzumaki Naruto attentively. True, that Sasuke couldn't use the Sharingan because of the seal, but facing an Uchiha in close combat even without the Dojutsu was surprising. Plus, Orochimaru saw a genius mix of Genjutsu and Kenjutsu, the likes of which ninja nowadays don't favor much. For this fact alone, Naruto spiked Orochimaru's interest. Back to Sasuke, he figured that keeping like this was not to his advantage. He was bleeding in multiple places and he was clueless. Naruto was barely winded and Sasuke was panting. He couldn't keep up like this. Kakashi narrowed his eyebrows the minute that Sasuke activated his Sharingan. Naruto had pushed him into doing this. Sasuke ignored the sudden pain as he eyed Naruto now with his two Tomoe Sharingan. This time, Naruto stopped his previous strategy and faced Sasuke head on using his own speed. The fight became even as despite Sasuke anticipating Naruto's movements, his body just wasn't trained to follow. Up from the stands, Guy and Lee looked in approval at the blonde for his agility. Lee was faster than this, but still it was quite impressive to see a Janan from the first year this fast. 
Sasuke smirked despite the pain, managing to even the playing field, but still he was nowhere near turning the tides of the battle. Despite not receiving any more injuries, he was now merely parrying Naruto's strikes. The blonde, then, surprised him with a distance and went through hand seals. Sasuke believed it would be one of the ninjutsu Naruto knew, but he was surprised to see Naruto vanishing and Itachi dressed in an Anbu uniform looking at Sasuke with his three Tomoe Sharingan. Megan Narakumi no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion, Hell Viewing Technique. Sasuke saw red at this point, despite his Sharingan telling the truth, Naruto's technique sprung up the seal from Orochimaru. Itachi. And with Sasuke's lack of will power to hold the seal's influence at bay, Naruto was surprised when the seal spread from Sasuke's neck and advanced towards his entire body. Such a use of fuenjutsu, he wasn't even aware of. His genjutsu was released immediately and Naruto parried Sasuke's kunai and he could feel the strength of Sasuke now doubled as well as his speed. Up from the stands, Anko was visibly arguing with the Hokage to stop this fight immediately, but the Hokage had not given the order thus far. Kakashi could see that the Hokage was interested in what Naruto would do next. Kurenai and Asuma were worried as well, as they could feel the malevolent energy from Sasuke just now. Naruto, for his chance, realized that right now facing a deranged Sasuke meant that he needed to add chakra into his limbs for added agility. As soon as he did so, aided by the half-ram sign, those in attendance's eyes widened at the sudden spike, before Naruto became a mere blur. Hiruzen became surprised on a positive note and right now only the Jounin managed to follow Naruto's movements. Sasuke snarled at the sudden agility and attempted a fire ninjutsu to stop his advance. His Sharingan could see where Naruto is going, but by the time he acts on it, the blonde is already gone and charging towards Sasuke. The Uchiha became surprised when Naruto appeared right in front of him and landed a fierce kick on Sasuke's chest, sending him flying towards the wall. The Uchiha slammed his back hard and coughed even more blood. His anger, though, was off the charts and wiped the blood from his mouth, before charging madly. Sakura, by this point, trembled remembering Sasuke like this in the forest of death. Kakashi Sensei, we need to stop this. Sasuke is. Sakura, though, was surprised when Kakashi made a HMPH an acknowledgement for what Naruto was planning. The Scarecrow Jounin already knew that Naruto had way more skills than he had shown thus far, but this truly shocked him beyond any doubt. And to believe that so far he had yet to use any elemental ninjutsu. Don't worry Sakura, Naruto can handle him. Trust your senpai. Sakura then looked as Naruto dashed backwards while Sasuke charged. Their movement then became only visible to Jounin and above. As soon as Naruto placed a hand on the ground, they saw it. Hiruzen's smirk was quite visible, Orochimaru couldn't help but lick his lips in anticipation. Kakashi, Kurenai, Asuma and Anko displayed surprising looks on their faces. Kurenai may have seen some astounding stuff from this blonde enigma, but not nearly this advanced and so soon. When Sasuke stepped on the place that Naruto placed his hand just seconds after, his body had frozen instantly as black lines spread all over his body as well, crawling up his chest. Try as he might, Sasuke couldn't rid himself as Naruto unleashed his ninjato with a superior smirk on his face. Well, attempting this against cage bunshines only goes so far, but I managed to time your footing and apply the binding seal on the ground. Sasuke snarled and attempted to break free, but he saw Naruto's ninjato placed inches from Sasuke's jugular, before Hayate called the match in Naruto's favor. Having secured the victory, Naruto then released the seal on Sasuke's body, though obviously Sasuke's enraged state cared very little about Hayate's word. As he was about to advance against Naruto once more, Kakashi appeared behind him and slammed the back of Sasuke's neck, sending the Uchiha into the sweet land of unconsciousness. Kakashi had only saluted Naruto with a smile, before vanishing with Sasuke towards somewhere else. Naruto, for his chance, merely walked back towards the upper platforms, before joining close to Shikamaru and Asuma, none the wiser that his display had attracted the eyes of the rest of the Janan still in attendance. Beforehand, no one bothered to look at him, but now everyone focused on him, namely one with a sand gourd on his back. I hope you understand how troublesome you are right now Naruto. The blonde Janan laughed at Shikamaru's eyebrow tick. Well, I didn't wish for Sasuke to steal my ninjutsu with his Sharingan, so I shifted strategies. Asuma and Kurenai were amused at the Nara's antics. Ha, huh, why do I get the feeling that you have yet to show half of everything you can do, you do work me you know that. Naruto could only laugh at the faux accusation. If only he knew, if only they knew. You think too much of me, 
Shika, Asuma chuckled as he knew Shikamaru's brain was functioning like crazy to try and gather the missing pieces of this puzzle. Good showing out there, Naruto. I guess I shouldn't be surprised anymore to see a different skill from you. I'm eager to see what will be revealed next. Naruto looked towards the smirking smoking Jounin next to Kurenai. Who knows, perhaps a ninjutsu or two. Kurenai frowned and Naruto corrected himself with a sweat drop. Of course, in between other skills, right. Only when she smiled at him did he realize that he was played. Relax Naruto-kun, I was just messing with you. It was a good display out there. The last two battles progressed as well with two of Kabuto's teammates facing each other until both admitted the lack of chakra and abandoned their match. The last match involved Sabaku no Gara from the sand and Rock Lee from the leaf. Though Lee was a taijutsu beast, going as far as to use a technique that involved the opening of chakra gates to increase his strength and speed, Gara's prowess with his sand proved to be fatal, going as far as to crush some of Lee's bones, much to his team's shock. The medic nins had taken him away and Guy followed suit. Naruto's eyes were firm on Gara as the Suna Janan simply walked back towards the upper platform as if nothing happened. With the last match done and done, Hayate announced the end of the preliminaries. As such, those who won stood in front of the Hokage as well as the proctors Iviki and Anko. Okay, now that the preliminaries are finished, I'd like to let you take your leave, but not before explaining about the third round, which will commence in about a month's time from now. First, though, each and every one of you will take a slip of paper from the box that Anko is holding. The Tokubatsu Jounin then walked forward to each one of the Janan and Maito guy acting in Neji's stead as they grabbed one piece of paper each. Iviki stood next to the Hokage with a chart in his hand and ordered everyone to tell the number that was on each of the papers. Naruto, 1. Shikamaru, 3. Tamari, 4. Sakura, 7. Neji, 2. Konkuro, 6. Gara, 9. Dosu, 8. Shino, 5. Iviki, show them the pairings. The head of the interrogation department then flipped the chart and showed the Janan whom they would be facing in one month's time. Naruto looked at his name next to Neji's and already began to think of his strategy. The chart shown as follows. First match, Naruto x Neji. Second match, Shikamaru x Tamari. Third match, Shino x Konkuro. Fourth match, Sakura x Dosu. Fifth match, winner of the first match x winner of the second match. Sixth match, winner of the third match x winner of the fourth match. Seventh match, winner of the fifth match x winner of the sixth match. Eighth match, winner of the seventh match x Gara. Gara went straight to the final fight against the best of the eight combatants. As you can see, the third round will be a tournament. As to why it will happen in one month's time. As of right now, we are sending invitations to many of feudal lords and high dignitaries to come. The organization will take time. Plus, since you now know your opponent, you will have one month's time to train and come up with a strategy against your opponents. I do have one question. Shikamaru raised his hand and the Hokage allowed it. It looks like there is only one victor in this tournament. Does that mean that only the victor will be promoted to Chunin? No, on the contrary. The judges of the final round, of which I am one of them, will analyze your skills, your strategy, your decision-making and judge whether or not you'd be worthy of the promotion. Unfortunately, Gara-kun here will only have one opportunity to display whereas the rest will have more, of course, if you are able to beat your opponent that is. Even if someone loses the first round, you can still be eligible for the promotion. Gara just stood there with his arms crossed, not saying anything and the Hokage just chuckled, finishing it. Now, we shall meet again in one month's time. Dismissed. After the tournament explanation and seeing who would be facing whom, the Janan had gathered around with their respective Jounin sensei, well at least those from Konoha did. Sakura looked around and found that her entire team had left her alone there, well, Kakashi had taken Sasuke away for something and Kibo was taken by the medic nin after his loss to Konkuro. She turned to look for Naruto and saw him talking to his teammates. Seeing him chatting amicably with Shikamaru and Asuma sensei brought about a smile on her face. The pink-haired Janan truly looked up to him, she reasoned. Ever since the wave mission, he had helped her in many ways, and she credited her win today to his guidance. His fight against Sasuke only proved how far ahead he was. It was like he was toying with Sasuke the entire time, hell Naruto had even won with Sasuke using the damn cursed seal of his. Still, instead of depressing her, it only served to inspire her into reaching bigger heights in her career. 
and her opponent was that Janan from Sound, Kinuta Dosu. She needed to devise a strategy against him and she needed to talk to Kakashi Sensei. She turned just as the scarecrow Jounin manifested behind her with a grin and a greeting. Kakashi Sensei, you're back. What about Sasuke kun? Kakashi released a sigh knowing that Sakura would question that. Truth be told, Kakashi wasn't counting on meeting with the snake Orochimaru when he was performing the sealing around Sasuke's cursed seal. It was actually the second time they met and the same thing happened. Him freezing on the spot and Orochimaru simply walking past him as if nothing happened. Whether that was due to Orochimaru's strong Kanashibari no Jutsu, temporary paralysis technique, or Kakashi being too weak to break free from the Sanin stare was irrelevant. The only truth that remained was that should the snake desired, Kakashi would be killed in less than a second. Truth be told, Sakura, it's up to Sasuke now. I've done all I can, but only he can fight against Orochimaru's seal. Sakura looked downtrodden, but Kakashi simply placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. Now now, we can't worry about him for now. As I heard, you'll be facing the Janan from Sound, Dosu. So, we shall focus on your training for this month and we'll come up with a suitable strategy against him. Is there something you wish to improve or learn throughout this month? As I recall, your opponent seems to be rather fond of that metal arm of his that emits sound waves. Also, we will need to focus on your possible opponents afterward, either Shino or Konkuro from the sand. Sakura was eyeing her sensei in awe as she didn't even look that far ahead. Wow sensei, slow down there, Kakashi chuckled at Sakura's groan. No time for that, my cute little Janan. We shall get you ready for the third part. And what about Sasuke-kun and Kiba, are you ditching them? Kakashi couldn't be prouder of her for this. If he were to offer this to Sasuke and Kiba, chances were that neither of them would bother thinking of his teammates. They can join us if they want to. Sasuke is advancing fine with his Sharingan already and Kiba has his family to train him. This month is about you, Sakura. I will warn you though, I shall up your training severely. Well then, bring it on Sensei. Meanwhile, Asuma was having his own chat with Naruto and Shikamaru. After Naruto asked about Hinata to which the bearded shinobi explained that she was duly taken care of and then taken to her family's house to rest, Asuma talked about his Janan's plans for the training month. So, now we have reached a kind of impasse. Two of my Janan have progressed to the third round and there is only one of me here. Plus, there is the possibility of you two facing each other, so training together wouldn't be ideal. Naruto and Shikamaru eyed each other, then turned back to their sensei. Sensei, not to sound like Shikan needs your help the most, but I believe it's better for me to train on my own for this month. True that Naruto's words ended up helping the impasse, but Asuma was slightly hurt that his Janan was already this dismissive of his help. Not that Asuma really took credit for almost everything that Naruto displayed so far. The truth was that Asuma only taught him how to fine-tune his wind techniques. Well, Shika has his family to help him, Naruto. You'll be facing Neji first, so we could devise a strategy together. Shikamaru had simply placed his hands behind his head in deep contemplation. Tosan has been rather busy these last few weeks with Hokage-sama for something, so I don't think he will have much time for me, Sensei. Asuma knew that to be true, considering Nara Shikaku's role in advising the Hokage. And Naruto had the perfect argument to help assuage Asuma into leaving him alone for what he was thinking of for this month. Asuma-sensei, since Shika will face Tamari first, he needs to train against her wind techniques. You'd be perfect to help him with that. Asuma though scratched his head as he observed his Janan. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you don't want my help, Naruto. Well, that could be true in a way saying it like that would be wrong. It's not that, I just figured that you would be torn, trying to help us both. Perhaps you can focus on Shika for the three weeks and then we can meet for the last week, then, how's that sound? Besides, I bet that Shika will take that week to sleep anyway. Shikamaru deadpanned at his teammate for criticizing one of his favorite hobbies. You say it like it's a bad thing, Asuma laughed and conceded to Naruto's plan. Okay Naruto, we shall meet again in three weeks then but if you wish to talk to me before, you know where to find me. Naruto nodded, before seeing Asuma and Shikamaru leaving the forest together. He then saw that Shino and Kurenai had finished their conversation as the Abarame heir had left as well. Kakashi and Sakura had left also and Kurenai was now talking to Anko. As soon as he approached the two, Anko turned to him. Hi there Gaki, that was a good fight. You mopped the floor with that Uchiha. Felt really good to see, I'll admit. 
Naruto and Kurenai chuckled at Anko's enthusiasm. Thank you, truth be told, it would have been a lot tougher if he was in full strength. Anko snorted at Naruto downplaying his own victory. It was surprising to Kurenai that Naruto was still down to earth despite his display just now. That's the Chunin exams for you, tough luck, these situations happen. Well, not meeting that snake fuck and getting a hickey, but out there on missions, you won't get the chance to face a fight, fully rested. Naruto accepted it and then turned to Kurenai. I take it you will be focusing on Shino, right Kurenai-sensei? She nodded with her arms crossed. Yes, though I bet that Shino will also favor some tutoring from his clan as well. Why do you ask, isn't Asuma helping you? Oh, just curious. Asuma-sensei will be training me for the last week. I actually wanted to train on my own for a while. He has to focus on Shikamaru as well. Kurenai smirked at him knowingly, already guessing he would prefer it this way, though she couldn't help but want to tease him some. Another of your side projects, I see, and here I thought you'd come here and ask for my help. Naruto smiled at his second sensei's faux disappointed face. Anko looked at her friend with a lifted eyebrow, surprised to see her at ease with him. Nothing like that, I don't plan on learning anything new, just improve on the skills I already know. Come to think about it, do you happen to know anyone willing to give me some pointers in Kenjutsu? Anko and Kurenai looked surprised as he elaborated. Against the Byakugan, Genjutsu is pointless, so if I am to face him at close range, I would need to use Kenjutsu from close range and Ninjutsu from long range. Seeing that Naruto is constantly training with Hinata, it was no surprise that he didn't take long to devise a strategy. I may have someone willing to help you, but she is quite busy this time around. I'll ask her. Anko smirked, knowing whom Kurenai was talking about. Excellent. Now I guess it's high time for some celebratory ramen. See ya Anko san, Kurenai sensei. The two women looked at his back, leaving the tower, before Kurenai noticed Anko looking at her with a knowing smirk. What? Anko couldn't help but grin. Her friend looked quite cozy when the blonde gaki was nearby, but for now, the snake charmer jowned and opted to wait and see, but it was quite entertaining to see where this is heading. Oh nothing. Think that she will accept helping him? Kurenai shrugged it off. I bet she will. Not many favor swords these days, it's a blessing to see a young man favoring different branches of the shinobi arts. Anko nodded in acceptance. Well, how about some sake and dango, my place? You can call her to join our little pajama party. Sure, let's get out of this place. I still don't know why you like coming here so much. Anko smirked as she followed Kurenai out of the tower. It was already night time outside as the training ground's usual inhabitants appeared before them. Snakes, spiders, tigers, bears, and vicious plants, amongst others. What's not to like Kurenai-chan, this is paradise, Kurenai chuckled as both left via sunshine. 